Chapter 76, Playing with the Protagonist's Childhood Friend Feeling the protagonist take the bait and actually following them. A.G. laughed. A.G. San, why are you suddenly laughing? The former exorcist asked in confusion while engrossed in the game beside him. She seemed to be having fun playing a shooting game with him to get the chicken dinner in the game. This game rental, was actually like an internet cafe with many PCs lined up. But unlike ordinary internet cafes, this shop also provides VIP rooms for people to play with their friends or groups. They booked VIP room number 11 on the fourth floor. It was a closed room of course. Although there were five gaming PCs in the room, only the two of them were playing there. It's okay, Irina, how about we try another game? The white-haired boy asked the pretty girl next to him. Currently, Irina was not wearing her exorcist outfit. Although she still looked tomboyish, she also looked more feminine in the white hot pants that hugged her slender, athletic thighs. For her top, she wore a short-sleeved white crop t-shirt that also revealed a bit of her belly. The girl's stomach also looked athletic, yet slender which did not detract from her beauty. The girl looked even more beautiful and sexy, especially with her breasts not too big or small and her brown hair tied up in a twin tail style. As expected of the protagonist's childhood friend. Despite being a tomboy, her beauty was above average, just like the other heroines. Another game? Sure. But what games? Irina was feeling very happy today. The feeling of playing games like when she was a child made her almost forget all her problems. She was really enjoying herself, and she knew it was all because A.G. had invited her to play today. Although the boy had many girls in his house such as Lala, Asia, Kurika, and even her friend, Zenobia. The latter was just like her, she also decided to quit being an exorcist and chose to follow A.G. who was offering them a job. Precisely after the problem with Kakabile and the leader of the fallen angels named Azazel was over. And there was also a little debate with Mu named Sertsk Lucifer from the underworld. A.G. who had slapped the three people above extended his hand to them. Irina, Zenobia. What are you guys planning to do after this? Hearing this question, she and Zenobia looked at each other with confusion on their faces. I. Don't know. God is dead, even if I return to the church and work as an exorcist as usual. Without God, I have no motivation and purpose anymore. I'm. Confused, I don't know. A.G. San, sorry. She bowed her head slightly with an almost blank mind at that moment. However, the white-haired boy patted her head. It felt very warm, cozy, and she felt that the world that looked gloomy after learning of her god's death, just then she saw the world return to a luminous state that astonished her. How about you, Zenobia? Zenobia was asked softly and she was patted on the head as well. Usually, if it was someone else, the blue-haired girl did not like someone touching her head. However, she also seemed to feel a pleasant feeling when A.G. patted their heads. It felt like God came back to life which made them a little excited. I don't know either. Just like Irina, I have no purpose after finding out God is dead. In that case, how about you two come with me? She and Zenobia raised their heads and looked at the white-haired boy in surprise. The gentle smile on his handsome face looked as warm as the sun shining on a world without God. His pats are also very tasty. I have an organization whose job is actually almost the same as an exorcist. But unlike the church, I'm not stingy with my people and the two of you will be given shelter, food, and this much salary per month. A.G. raised his hand and mentioned numbers with his finger which made exorcists like her and Zenobia unable to resist being tempted. Their monthly salary as exorcists was even just enough to buy daily food. But what A.G. offered could make them never worry about money. Somehow this became a tempting job offer that was hard to refuse. However, although I would like to accept your offer, A.G. Sam. But I'm worried that Zenobia and I will trouble you with our existence. As exorcists who have been active for many years. There are actually not a few people who are hostile to us, especially people from certain devil groups other than the devil's grammary and citri out there that we have disturbed when they committed crimes. The church also probably won't let go of two exorcists capable of using the holy sword just like that. Zenobia added which made her even more worried. A.G. San, we're afraid, if we come with you, you'll. To her surprise, the white-haired boy laughed. With the light that shone through his snow-white hair and his figure that was taller than them. He looked at them with his beautiful red eyes without fear of anything. If you two are worried about inconveniencing others because of your existence and are too afraid to walk with others. Don't worry, I will stay by both of your sides. As for the people who are hostile to you guys. Or the church who might one day come to me and ask me to return their two beautiful exorcists. They can try, and I will defeat everyone who wants to take whatever is mine. I'm quite possessive. So think carefully if you guys really want to come with me. They blushed at being called beautiful exorcists even though they realized they were tomboys, but what A.G. said moved them deeply. 
Although it sounded arrogant to say defeating anyone, but after seeing the white-haired boy kill Cockabile easily and slap the two faction leaders as if they were nothing. As for his possessiveness. It made them feel more valued and that way they weren't easily discarded like old things that would be replaced with new things, right? They didn't doubt what he said and they trusted him. At that time they nodded. They were willing to follow him. When Irina recalled what happened yesterday, she did not regret it, instead she felt lucky to choose to go along with Eiji who was even so considerate as to comfort her, even though she was only his subordinate now. He invited her to play to make her no longer depressed thinking about the dead god. The god she believed in before never even did this. But Eiji, her boss and leader was now very caring and gentle with her. He seemed to spoil her, even all the girls in the house. Thinking of those girls, she now felt envious of them for being Eiji's women. She wondered, if she too could. She blushed. Not because of what she was thinking, but because of the sitting position of her and Eiji which was currently somehow rather perverted. Eiji san, are you sure we should sit in this position? The two of them were now sitting inside a sophisticated looking white capsule. AG said this was an MMORPG virtual game device that allowed them to play virtual games that made their consciousness enter the game. She was honestly surprised that gaming technology had come this far. When she was still an exorcist, she did not know this and she felt a little sorry for herself. Well, there are also other more convenient ways to play this virtual game with others. For example like the two of us using two different virtual capsules, but this shop only has one per one VIP room. To be able to play with others, two people are exactly in our current situation. Those two people must enter into one capsule together. And because of the limited space in here, you know we can only do it like this. That must be because the price of this machine is quite expensive. So this shop also couldn't buy too many virtual capsules and only bought a few while dividing them evenly in each VIP room. It looks like I have to lower the price of this kind of machine in the market. Well, I'll ask the people in my company to do it later. The heroines, especially Irina who was currently sitting in front of Eiji with her back pressed against his chest. Is there anything like that? Wait a moment. I feel like this person is speaking as if he is the creator or the person behind the company that launched the virtual capsule that has been very popular in Japan and even other countries lately. They only knew this person was busy dealing with the protagonist all this time, and never knew where this time traveler actually got the money from. So all this time he was secretly the boss of a company. Other than running a company, I don't know what else this person does to earn a lot of money. Irina's eyes lit up, she did not expect the white-haired boy to be so humble to hide his other identity as the boss of a company. Somehow it made him look cooler. So handsome, so powerful, and so rich. Her childhood friend who was a protagonist couldn't even compare to her. Thinking of Issei, she immediately put the boy who disappointed her out of her mind. Actually the protagonists so far were small children compared to Eiji who secretly might be a billionaire. It was just that the latter was so humble, he never even talked about his other identity unless accidentally revealing it in his inner voice. Eiji. No one knew what exactly the boy was thinking as Irina became more and more mesmerized by him. As expected of my host. Very good at feigning innocence to gain the hearts of heroines. Miss System praised. Miss System, you put me to shame. Eiji said that without blushing, he was clearly not embarrassed at all. Miss System put away the little pile of documents on her desk, she was watching her host while snacking. I can't wait to see the protagonist having a mental attack soon. I see. Then let's start the game. Irina was excited, she was also actually enjoying leaning her body on Eiji's chest and her cheeks were slightly flushed at the moment. Before that, put on this helmet. Pop. Eiji put the helmet inside the machine on the head of the girl sitting in front of him and he put it on as well. What helmet is this? It's the most important tool to make our consciousness enter the game. It will affect the nerves in our brain, but don't worry it's safe. Irina nodded at this, she believed what Eiji said and somehow she was sure the boy wouldn't hurt her. The former exorcist didn't know, but Harem Halo made it very easy to trust the white-haired boy. Then what's next? Next. Eiji smiled. Say Link Start. Link Start. The moment Irina said that, the vision that was originally the inside of the virtual capsule suddenly changed. Everything became white and many colorful lines passed through it as if she was being taken flying somewhere. It wasn't long before she saw a whole new world. A blue sky with clouds. The warm sun. Medieval-style buildings with many people wearing armor and carrying various weapons passing by. This scene. The feeling of one's own body moving and one's nose breathing and smelling the environment. This. Is this still a virtual game? The former exorcist felt that she was truly transported to another world. What do you think, Irina? A familiar voice sounded beside her. When Irina turned her head, she was surprised that Eiji looked different. 
although his handsome face, white hair, and beautiful red eyes were still the same. He was now wearing a sleek black suit under a black coat with blue and silver striped details. Gloves, trousers, and boots were all black. This guy really likes the color black, right? Yet it looks cool, especially with the silver sword hanging from his waist. This. This is amazing. A.G. San, I feel less like I'm playing a game and more like I've been transported to another world with my body and consciousness. I feel like it's the real world. Irina checked her own appearance. She pouted slightly. Perhaps because she was a new player, her clothes looked simple. A long-sleeved white t-shirt. A dark red leather tunic with a light copper chest protector. Leather pants with knee-high boots and hooded cape. And a simple long sword attached to her leather belt. It was like a beginner player without any extraordinary equipment. Unlike A.G. or the people passing by who also seemed to be a player who at least looked cool. But put that aside, glancing again at the level 1 beginner's sword at her waist. She couldn't help but miss her Excalibur mimic in the real world. If she at least had that sword in this game, she could probably level up her character faster, right? Looking at Irina who sighed and pouted slightly at her own equipment. A.G. knew this girl must feel the feeling of a beginner player who was jealous of seeing other players who had better equipment than her. He rubbed his chin. Although he could have given Irina the best equipment or even weapons in this game as a game creator or GM who was now pretending to be a player. He had other ideas and this was also one of the tricks to get the girl's heart. You know there's actually another easier way to get that girl's heart, right? Miss System could also still be online in the game. A.G. wasn't surprised, and it actually wasn't the first time he had logged into this game. Before this, he had certainly tried it a few times, okay. Miss System, I'm doing this just because Irina and I happen to be in this situation, okay. There's protagonist Issei waiting to get a surprise. Because the game world and the real world have a wide time difference. I can use this to win that girl's heart by giving her a bittersweet and suspenseful shared adventure between two people. You understand. Sorry, I don't understand. Okay. You don't need to understand and look how I made the protagonist Issei have a mental attack from seeing his childhood friend doing this and that with me. With Aurora and Delta guarding outside. Issei must be confused right now. And it's true. Issei is currently confused. He had entered the game store which was basically a building with 11 floors. There were many gaming computers and other gaming devices here that many people were playing with. In search of his childhood friend and Eiji. He searched every floor and even the VIP room. But after almost two hours of searching, he never found the two people. Even though he clearly saw the two people talking about playing games in this place, but where exactly are they now? Also, was it just his feeling that he was actually spinning around on floors 1 through 3? A-H-H. A-H-H. Irina. Where are you? I'm Issei, your childhood friend come to save you from that bastard. The protagonist shouted in the corridor of the second floor which made the people in the VIP room of that floor hide inside. Peeking out slightly and wondering if it was a madman? Hey, hey, you guys. Did you guys see the brown-haired girl and the white-haired boy in? Before he could finish his sentence, the residents in the VIP room went back inside. He could even hear one of them calling security and saying there was a madman on the third floor. Bastard. Who are you calling crazy? Protagonist in a red t-shirt, black shorts, and flip-flops started running again in the hallway because he was worried that the security guards would find him and kick him out. If it was him normally, he would definitely not be afraid. But now. His power was sealed by Eiji. Damn it. That bastard is sneaky. He always plays me like this. A-H-H. Irina. Where are you? As he kept running and even sweating. Unlike before where he felt like he was spinning around on the first, second, and third floors. Now he seemed to have made it up to the fourth floor. He was happy, thinking Irina and that bastard might be on this floor. So he searched and kept calling his childhood friend's name. Until in front of the door of VIP room number 11 on the fourth floor that somehow he heard a familiar voice. It was the voice of a woman who resembled his childhood friend. Irina. He knew his childhood friend was with that bastard right now. So he planned to break down the VIP room's door, but. His body suddenly froze. He couldn't move as if there was an invisible rope binding him. There was also a piece of tape that gagged him and he stumbled which left him sprawled in front of the door. Then, the voices of the two women who had kidnapped him a few hours ago were heard. Delta, try sliding her a little to the right so that she doesn't block the way of passersby. Like this. Issei felt his stomach hurt as he was kicked by someone and made his body hit the wall in front of the door. Although he didn't see anyone in front of his eyes. He knew there were two women nearby now who somehow made themselves invisible. Bitch. Bitch. How dare you guys treat the Red Dragon Emperor like this. 
Since his mouth was silenced, he naturally couldn't speak. The other people only saw his face turn red with anger and growl like a dog. Like that. He he now we just need to let him listen to what Eiji Sama did to his childhood friend. Hearing what the women's who were basically Eiji subordinates said. Issei knew that. He was very angry. He felt humiliated to be treated like this, but heard the last sentence. His face froze, his body began to tremble, and he began to guess what exactly Eiji wanted to do to him. Shit. That bastard did it again. He did it. And this time on my childhood friend. At this moment, his ears began to hear clearly what was behind the door of VIP room number 11. It was. It was the sound of slapping flesh and Irina's moans that sounded pleasurable. Issei felt his body start to get excited. No. No. What was I thinking? She, Irina did it with that bastard. How could I get excited? However, even though he said that. He fell silent and his gaze continued to stare ahead. Precisely at the two shadows of people that were seen moving in the gap under the door that happened to be a little wide and he could see them. They were doing it in front of the door. Right in front of him, behind the closed door. A-G-C-E-A. -E you bastard. Dash. A slash N, if you want to read 7 advanced chapters with a faster update frequency than the web novel, you can read it on my Patreon whose link is below. HTTPS slash slash www.patreon.com slash doglicker. Replace A with A and search in your browser. By the way, don't forget to throw power stones and leave a review to motivate me, smiley face, comment. 41 comment. Vote. 0 left. Chapter 77, Protagonist Who Eavesdrops. A-H-H. A-H-H. sama harder. With her clothes scattered on the floor, the former exorcist was now completely naked. She is in her birthday suit as she puts both hands on the door, raising her round, elastic ass to be slapped by his cock. His cock that currently keeps banging her nursery. The girl's ass muscles keep twitching and it feels so good to squeeze his cock inside her. The sound of rapid flesh slapping continues to echo in the room along with the moans of the former exorcist who now looks very lewd. A-H-H. A-H-H-A-G Sama. Yes. Slap. Ah. Slap. Oh. He slapped her ass, making her moan louder with red slap marks on her ass. Her small pussy hole keeps getting filled with his cock and makes the hole wider. The girl's breasts also kept bouncing in the air with sweat dripping down her athletic body which looked very erotic. She even kept calling him Eiji Sama which made him even more excited to fuck her. The time difference in the game they played earlier was very effective in making the girl completely fall in love with him. Although in the real world time had only passed two thirds hours since they played the virtual game. In the game, he and Irina had already spent almost a week. What had he been doing with Irina in the game for that long? At first he helped her to level up by climbing floor after floor of bosses. There were 100 floors in total, and they kept climbing. Slaughtering every monster on the way. Irina, there's a hobgoblin behind you. Go for the head. Slash. Wow. My level immediately went up two levels. Can we kill more of these hobgoblins, Eiji san? We can. There's a nest of them nearby, let's go there. If the goblins there are too many. Don't worry, I'll protect you. Eiji san. Yes. Let's go over there. Complete missions from the Adventure Guild together and increase their rank to Gold Rank Adventurer. Eiji san, are you sure a material called Shivata Jade can be found in this ice filled place? What kind of monster could bring down that S class material? The guild even paid a high price for this thing. It's called Cryo Hypostasis. It's an S class monster with ice attributes that looks like a cube and can shoot high level ice magic. Irina, to deal with this monster, your fire magic will be very effective. I'll distract the monster. You should attack the monster's core when its body splits. Roar. Now it's time Irina. Cryo Hypostasis's cube-like body split apart and its core that glowed with light blue light was clearly visible and completely unguarded. Leave it to me. Just then Irina ran into the monster's core with her sword on the slippery ice. Her shadow-like figure in brown, white, and red looked beautiful. Reduce all creation to ashes. Flames exploded on the girl's slender sword that was coated in flames that possessed extreme heat until it affected half the surrounding boss area. Cut. Boom. Eiji san, I did it. We also got the monster material drop we were looking for. Good. Let's hurry back to the guild and report it. Teamwork improves the hearts of a man and a woman. Then. A date on the 21st floor of what is basically a medieval city. Eiji. I feel a lot of people staring at us. Us? I'm sure they're staring at you because you look so pretty in that dress. If I wasn't with you, many male players would be trying to seduce you. 
S so pretty. Irina held her flushed cheeks with both hands. She smiled silly, feeling happy at his praise. After that their hands intertwined and they enjoyed a date until late afternoon. In the middle of the stone bridge. Their lips connected. The former exorcist looked very shy. Eiji. What's our relationship now? What is our relationship? Of course you're one of my women now. If you want, you don't even have to be my subordinate. The girl shook her head and looked at him with a gentle smile, but her eyes looked heroic. Her tomboyish side emerged. I'm happy to be your woman, but I also still want to be your subordinate. I want to be your sword, just like Abha and the others. Can't I be your girlfriend and your subordinate at the same time? Why not? I love having my own subordinate as my woman. It feels more exciting. Eiji sama What did you call me? Try repeating it, it sounds really good. Eiji sama The players passing by on the bridge stared at them sourly as if they were being fed dog food. The two of them didn't care. He hugged the former exorcist and kissed her again. He looked at her hotly. Irina, I really want to eat you now. E eating me? You mean? Be but we're in the game right now. If you want, we can. The two looked at each other with a look of love and lust. And here they are now. In the VIP room inside the game store. They used that room to make love. A-H-H. H-N-N-N-N. A-G Sama's penis. A-G Sama's penis. A-H-H. I'm so happy. I want you to keep fucking me like this. Give me more of your love. Slap. 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 Feeling the hand of the man she loves keep slapping her ass while continuing to fuck her small pussy. Irina was so happy. There was no pain, only love that made her forget everything including the god she used to believe in. God is dead? So what? Forget it. As long as Ag wanted herself like this. She felt so happy, even her childhood friend that she used to like was no longer in her head. She got rid of Issei in her heart and put Ag there. Feeling Ag's big and long penis inside her and continuing to knock on her womb. Her mind was filled with lust and filth that if she was still an exorcist, this act would have been a sin. But now. Now she would rather embrace that sin. She seemed to be addicted to the feeling of sex which made her mind think only of Eiji's penis and the man himself who was greedily licking her neck and playing with her breasts. Irina didn't realize, but her violet eyes currently seemed to have a heart shape, her pussy that kept getting hit from behind made her body even more limp. But she continued to stand there, in front of the door with both hands pressed against the door. Eiji wanted to do it in this position, so she did as he said. The sound of applause continued to be heard in the room. Oh. Oh. Eiji sama Irina. I'm going to come. Ag smiled sadistically, he pulled the twin pigtails of the girl he was sleeping with with both hands and continued to push his penis harder into her pussy. Come. Come. Inside me. Ag sama Ag sama Make me pregnant. Because her hair was pulled from behind, her head was raised and made her lewd expression visible to the man who was fucking her. She could also slightly see the man smile as he fucked her from behind. Saliva dripped from her mouth, her tongue stuck out which made the man even more excited to fuck her. You want to get pregnant? Let's see, I'll spill all my seed inside you and see if you get pregnant or not. Irina. Take it all. Many shots were fired into her womb. Irina widened her eyes, her eyes almost rolled back, and her mind was transported to heaven. Ah. She moaned loudly. The hot liquid continued to pour into her stomach, making her belly bulge. Irina wondered if she got pregnant right away like women who are a few months pregnant. But no, she knew it was Eiji's sperm that was so plentiful that it made her stomach bulge. She felt like passing out feeling the extreme pleasure coursing through her bones and pussy. However, just like an incubus who was not easily satisfied. One leg was lifted up, making her stand on one leg while holding onto the door. With an exhausted face and sweaty body, Irina stares at the white-haired boy who is staring at her greedily. She was happy to see that he wanted her so much, but... Eg sama can we take a break? Even though she asked that, she could feel Eiji's cock still hard inside her. It even continued to throb as if it wanted to feel more inside her. This is only the first round. We're still going to continue the next round. If you get tired of standing, don't worry. I'll help you and we'll keep making love until I'm satisfied, okay? Ah. Ahh. 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 Eiji sama The sound of flesh slapping continued. Irina was crying, but it was a cry of happiness and worry that she would die from too much fucking. Unlike before, Eiji fucked her even more brutally and tried various positions. And it was still on that front. She didn't know why, 
but she didn't think about it because right now she was letting the man she loved continue to use her former exorcist's well-trained body to satisfy his lust. She just needed to moan and enjoy. Hearing Irina's moans and the increasingly insane sound of clapping flesh behind the door of VIP room number 11. Issei's eyes turned red. MFFFF. 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 Although he wanted to scream to say stop. 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 Irina. Stop fucking with that bastard. However, it was a pity that his mouth was sealed with tape and he could only growl like an animal. Not only that. He knew she should be angry knowing his childhood friend was being fucked by that bastard in front of his eyes. Even so, he... He couldn't help the feeling of excitement in his heart that made him start to enjoy the situation. As proof, his shorts now had a dark stain that looked wet. You. Disgusting. Does this protagonist have a strange hobby? Delta, ignore him. And you better not stare at her because it will stain your eyes. Aurora, you're right. Ugh. Now I want to cleanse my eyes by looking ag sama Behind this door, Eiji-sama must be naked while fucking that girl, right? Damn, jealous. Hearing the conversation of the two women who seemed to still be around from earlier. Issei vomited blood, but he swallowed the blood back because his mouth was gagged. Why? Why is he being subjected to such insane humiliation? Oh right, it's because of Eiji. Why did that boy take so much pleasure in mentally torturing him like this? Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, Eiji-sama. Your seed. Your seed. My stomach is full of your seed. I'm going to get pregnant. However, hearing the voice of his childhood friend who kept mentioning the bastard's name obscenely made him excited. Knowing A.G. was trying to impregnate his childhood friend made him. Very excited. What's wrong with him? He didn't know, but it must be the effect of the nightmares he had experienced a thousand times where he kept being forced to see Rias, Sana, Akeno, and the others making love to A.G. in the student council room. Even after successfully waking up from that nightmare, he still seemed to be suffering from its after-effects. Various emotions flashed through Issei's eyes as he stared at the shadows of the two behind the door. He could imagine Irina doing this and that with Eiji. A-H-H. A-H-H. My childhood friend. As much as he hated it and was excited, he also started to enjoy the situation. If Drake was already online. Seeing his host become like this. He might. He might abandon ship and find a new host. Several hours passed. After an hour of silence, Issei was suddenly kicked. It was still the fourth floor and still in the same hallway. A little further away from the room where Irina and A.G. were. But the ties that bound him and the tape that gagged his mouth had been removed. He was free. He was free which confused the boy. Why was I suddenly released? Click. At this moment, the door to VIP room number 11 suddenly opened. Issei was dumbfounded, especially when he saw his childhood friend and A.G. come out. He saw his childhood friend smiling happily while hugging the man's arm with her slightly limping legs. Although he already knew the why and wherefore, his expression became very ugly. His head was heavy as if a green hat was pressing on his head. Huh? I e say, why are you here? Dash. A slash N, if you want to read 7 advanced chapters with a faster update frequency than the web novel, you can read it on my Patreon whose link is below. HTTPS slash slash www.patreon.com slash doglicker. Replace A with A and search in your browser. By the way, don't forget to throw power stones and leave a review to motivate me, smiley face, dash. This chapter was shorter than usual because I wasn't feeling well at the time. Comment. 49 comment. Vote. 0 left. Chapter 78, Severing the Relationship of the Protagonist and His Childhood Friend. A.G. looked at Issei with a playful smile. Aurora and Delta did their job well. Even with his power, he didn't need subordinates or anything like that to defeat anyone. But this and that were different. Having subordinates is also in fact very useful for doing many things. For example, in this situation. He could harass the protagonist without having to do it with his own hands. Yesterday, after the matter with Kakabile, Azazel, and Sertsks was over. The latter can be explained later, but the point is that at that time everyone left Issei at the scene. However, to avoid suspicion. He ordered Aurora and Delta secretly to take Issei somewhere and set up this green hat plan. By having subordinates to do this and that, you don't have to fear being suspected by the heroines. Irina, and even the other heroines had no idea what he had done to Issei. Very good. Seeing Issei's ugly expression. A.G. was overjoyed. Especially after knowing the protagonist really became a kook who basically enjoyed the woman he liked doing perverted things with other men. Host, this kind of thing is your hobby now. 
although you could have tortured Issei in a quicker and easier way, you're doing things quite elaborately. This woman who pretends to be the system does not understand male romance. Miss System, male romance? You call making someone get a green hat a male romance? Come on. Don't you also enjoy watching the process of the protagonist getting the green hat? I'm not denying that. However, what are you going to do next? What did I do? Of course make the heroine even more disgusted with the protagonist. Huh? I say, why are you here? Irina frowned, she was surprised to see her childhood friend also inside this game rental. Was this just a coincidence, or? Irina. You, you. I'm here because. Issei originally wanted to tell the truth, but wouldn't that be embarrassing? I saw you and that bastard come into this shop and I even heard what you did with her in VIP room number 11. If he said that. He feels like he'll lose face and make himself even greener. Glancing at Eiji who was smiling at him while holding his childhood friend's slender waist. Issei clenched his fists with an increasingly ugly expression. However, he was also excited. Shit. Shit. Bastard, Eiji. How dare you touch Irina with your dirty hands. You've even defiled her. A-H-H. My Irina. And damn, can I stop getting excited seeing Irina so close to that bastard. The heroines were used to hearing the protagonist whine. However, they wondered if Issei had started having strange hobbies. Irina looked at her childhood friend warily. The current her hardly cared about how unreasonable Issei was as a protagonist. However, she was wary because it seemed Issei knew what she had done with Eiji. He, he, is he. Irina, I happen to be playing a game here. Playing games. Fart. That doesn't look convincing at all. Especially judging by the sweaty expression on your face as if you've been working out and your pants that somehow look wet. Irina looked at her childhood friend with disgust. How could she like this boy and defend him so much before? Compared to Issei. Eiji was more fragrant. Ha 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 ha. You bastard. What are you laughing at? Issei's face was like a dog that had its tail stepped on. He felt that all of this. All of this was again that bastard's plan. He must have deliberately made his subordinates suddenly let go so that he could make them look bad in front of Irina. Agceia, why do you always torture me like this? Ag, what's wrong? You suddenly laughed, so I'm curious. Irina asked and thought. Irina, you want to know. Ag smiled gently at the brown-haired girl, but the corners of his eyes looked at Issei with an evil gaze as if I'm going to tell your disgrace to your childhood friend and see if he likes it? No. Ag, damn it, stop it. If his power had not been sealed, Issei would have long ago slammed into the hairy boy with his dragon fist. Whether it worked or not was a matter for later. He just wanted to stop that bastard from telling his childhood friend the truth. However, stupid Issei didn't think his panic would only make his childhood friend look at him even more suspiciously. I want to know. Irina said. No. Irina, don't listen to what that bastard says. Issei pointed at Eiji, which made Irina even more unhappy. The brown-haired girl was not happy that someone was pointing at her boyfriend and calling him a bastard. Even if it was her childhood friend, she wouldn't hold back. Boom. A-H-H. Irina. Why? I'm your childhood friend. The protagonist knelt down while holding his stomach. His tomboyish childhood friend had just punched him in the stomach. Since he is now almost the same as an ordinary person, he is definitely not as strong as he was when he conspired with Cockabile and he is actually in pain from receiving fists from his childhood friend who used to be exorcist. Oof. Blame yourself for daring to speak ill of my boyfriend. Be boyfriend. Despite already knowing his childhood friend had been tainted by Eiji, he hardly thought about what relationship they were thinking about now. Issei's heart ached. Not only Rias, Sana, and Akeno. Even his childhood friend, Irina left him because of that bastard. Irina nodded indifferently at her childhood friend. No, Issei who was currently looking pale as if he had a mental attack found out she was dating Eiji. She looked at Eiji with a smile and hugged him tighter in front of Issei who was kneeling in front of them. Crazy. I didn't expect Irina to be this cruel to her childhood friend. She even hit the protagonist and gave him a mental attack. Irina looked at Eiji a little nervously. Could it be that he didn't like the cruelty she showed? On second thought. Didn't most men prefer women who were gentle, sweet, and didn't hit people in front of their boyfriends? I like it. Good job Irina. Not only do you last a long time while exercising as you showed earlier. You also know how to make my enemies not feel good. Heard this. Irina blushed. She could not help but remember what they did before. Due to her physical fitness as a former exorcist, 
she managed to endure exercising in various poses for almost four hours. She was also glad that instead of disliking the violence she inflicted on Issei. A.G. actually liked it? A.G. whispered something in the brown-haired girl's ear. The brown-haired girl widened her eyes and looked at Issei with great disgust. Issei was dumbfounded to see that his childhood friend seemed to have learned something from that bastard. It's over. Irina must have known that I had followed her and A.G. before entering this shop. Also, Irina probably already knows that I secretly eavesdropped on what she was doing with that bastard inside VIP room number 11. But what could I do? Before. Even so, I was excited to hear the sound of Irina's moans and unknowingly I had been eavesdropping for almost four hours. That bastard. How can he last for so many hours? Damn, I'm jealous. A.G. closed his mouth, his lips trembling with laughter. Honestly what he whispered to Irina was something like he suspected Issei was stalking her and followed her all the way here. He simply did not tell the girl that he knew Issei had been eavesdropping on them having sex for hours. If he told Irina this. Wouldn't that make her wonder why he didn't tell her about Issei's existence and continued to have sex with her? He might even suspect that he was deliberately making Issei be there which made the girl feel a little uncomfortable. After all, not everyone likes knowing someone is eavesdropping on them during sex. By the way what was that miss system? You censored something from Issei's inner voice. If Issei is babbling about your two subordinates tying him up in front of the door of the room you're exercising in with Irina. Wouldn't that be a bit bad? I must say that you are very clever miss system. I almost even forgot this detail. A.G. could hear the sound of a woman's laughter in his head as he praised Miss System. Well the woman seemed to be pleased. Issei. Although I already knew you were very perverted when you attacked us yesterday. I didn't expect you to be so perverted to this point. Irina stared at Issei who was kneeling in front of her as if he was trash. She was really disappointed with her childhood friend who had now become like this. Aren't you the protagonist? Looking at your actions so far. I feel like the author is a cerebral palsy sufferer for making such a perverted person the protagonist of his book. She knew it was a harem franchise. But can't the author create a protagonist that at least looks good? Pervert is fine, but you also have to be good at hiding it and only doing it at the right moments so that women don't get disgusted or feel harassed. To eavesdrop on her while having sex with A.G. for hours outdoors. Even felt excited listening to her moans as she did it with A.G. Irina's face was red with shame and anger. She even clenched her slender fists that could easily kill a chicken. I Irina? Let me explain, I. The protagonist wanted to give his childhood friend an explanation, but the girl did not give him a chance. A palm that moved like a shadow floated to his face. Slap. It was so hard that it sent Issei flying backwards while spinning beautifully in the air. Issei. From today on, don't ever think of me as your childhood friend again. I will also do the same to you and from now on we have no relationship whatsoever. So, don't come near me again. I don't want my boyfriend, A.G. to misunderstand because of you. A.G. No, A.G. Sama. Let's go. Leave this guy. Issei saw his childhood friend hugging A.G.'s arm, even called the man as if he were her master and giving him a gentle smile. That man, A.G., that bastard nodded and silently gave him a smile. It was a mocking smile as his hands wrapped around his childhood friend's slender waist and he could see the girl blushing. Watching their backs grow farther apart and disappear. The protagonist that his childhood friend left behind touched his right cheek which was very sore. Ouch. If Issei looked at the mirror now, he would see that his face had a slap mark and it looked swollen like a pig. But putting that aside, his eyes were flushed. Ah. Irina. Why, you trust that bastard more than your own childhood friend. You don't know AGCE's true face. If you knew. AHH. AHH. Remembering that man's mocking smile, I really want to kill him. The humiliation of today and before. I, Issei Hayato will definitely avenge it one day. Rias, Sana, Akeno, and Irina. You're all bitches. Eiji, you bastard. You're worse than those universe people. Issei roared loudly. The people on the fourth floor who were playing games were disturbed. Just wait. After my strength returns and I grow as strong as my previous life. I will take revenge. I will. Before he could finish his sentence, two store security guards hit him with iron batons. What are you guys doing? Shut up. You're very noisy and disturbing the customers. Please come with us and get out of this shop. Issei felt humiliated for who knows how many times today. He certainly couldn't fight the power of those two muscular security guards unless his power could be used. Unfortunately, no. A.G. was crazy. Even after he left. I feel like he keeps bullying me when the protagonist was dragged away by two security guards. 
The armor plot or anything related to the protagonist is so stupid. At this time, there was a reincarnated devil figure who had actually seen everything that Issei had experienced. At least after A.G. and Irina left the room and saw Issei. He was watching what was happening there. It's time to return to the underworld. I must report this to Sertsk Sama. Time flies, time flies. A blonde girl in black clothes was seen floating down, landing on a pole and observing the scenery on the planet called Earth. If A.G. saw this girl. Instead of being surprised, he would be excited. This planet is so peaceful. It's more peaceful than all the planets I've been to. So my target this time is here. The blonde girl observed the people called humans passing by on the street. With her abilities, she could sense that all those people were much weaker than the people on other planets. There seemed to be a reason why this planet called Earth was so peaceful. It must be because the people living here are so weak, right? There was no contempt or anything on her face even though she thought that. Her face was just expressionless. It looks like my target this time will be very easy. That was all she said before her body flickered and disappeared from the top of the pole. On the other side. At Eiji's house. Eiji was sitting opposite Zistan who gave him a thick envelope. Zistan, what is this? Eiji Sama, it's Lala's allowance for this month. Zistan respectfully handed over his monthly salary after working on Earth to Lala's fiancé. After observing the princess fiancé so far. He began to develop respect for humans as powerful as Eiji. He had even seen that Eiji treated the princess very well. Although he had many women. But polygamy or harems were normal for men who had strong power or status. On the planet Deviluk it was like that. And there was no problem as long as the princess did not mind her various fiancés with other women. So far, he saw that the princess even had a good relationship with those women. So it seemed to be fine. Eiji looked at Zistan who was now wearing construction worker clothes and a thick envelope that seemed to contain several hundred yen in confusion. I didn't expect that this supporting character could make me confused. Zistan. Actually, you don't need to give Lala a monthly allowance. I'm not short of money, I can take care of Lala's needs. No. Eiji Sama, you are not married to Lala Sama yet. So it's a bit unkind if you pay for Lala Sama's every need. Please take the money. Zistan. Eiji Sama. Please take the money. This man is so stubborn. He looked at his pink haired fiance and called out to her. Lala. Zistan gave you this month's allowance. At first I thought the girl would be a little reluctant, but she took the thick envelope filled with money and smiled at Zistan. Thank you, Zistan. Yes, Lala Sama. If you're short of money, don't hesitate to contact me. Your father also ordered me for this. On. I'll do it. Then. That's all. Lala Sama. Eiji Sama, I'm leaving now and won't disturb your time anymore. I still have to go to work. The two saw Zistan who had a yellow hat on his head leave. That man seems to be working hard in the construction area around here. Eiji said. Un, Zistan is hard working. His pink haired fiance nodded. That man is also very loyal to your father. Un, Zistan is very loyal to Odusama. So why doesn't your father give him a large sum of money or anything that can make it easier for him on earth while watching over you, Lala? With his status, wouldn't it be easy for your father to do so? Lala tilted her head in confusion. Eh I don't know. Although Zistan could have asked Otusama on every mission. I remember he always rushed into the mission before Otusama gave him anything. Hearing this, Eiji nodded. I have to say that the people in this franchise are indeed a bit silly. But apart from that, many of the people are good. Even the villains in this franchise will always end up being ridiculous every time they face Rito in the original work who actually has no self-defense ability other than his perverted luck. Eiji. What are we having for lunch today? Someone was hungry. But looking at the time, it was indeed time for lunch. Let's take a look. Aren't there plenty of groceries in the fridge? Eiji san, there are only a few leeks and carrots left in the fridge. It's time to restock. Asia. The girl came with a grocery basket in her hand. She seemed to be preparing to go to the market. He looked around to see what the other girls living in his house were doing. If you're looking for Kurika, she said she was going somewhere to train her little sister. So that's it? What about Irina and Zenovia? Oh, I know where they are. Putting aside Irina who had become his woman, but still wanted to be his sword. He had given that girl and Zenovia a small mission with the other girls in his organization to expand the organization's reach by recruiting more worthy people on the condition that all of them must be female. What about men? Other than him, there was no way she would include other men in his organization. Some of the shadows had also been told to build their own companies. However, the main goal was to obtain information about the protagonists in this world. 
he had even given all his knowledge about the characteristics of protagonists. For example, people who look ordinary, but are somehow favored by women whose beauty is above average. There were also people who liked to pretend to be weak, but were actually strong but liked to be so humble, until a beautiful woman needed his help and that person would explode with a power that could slap away the woman's threats. Someone who is a genius, but wants to be normal and pretends to be stupid until the situation calls for him to show off. A person, for example a teenager suddenly becomes rich by writing novels, making manga, movies, or other things that make him rich quickly. And etc. There are many examples, he's just too lazy to think about it anymore. Asia, just let me go shopping for today. The blonde girl looked a little confused, but she nodded. She held out her shopping bag. Aji smiled. No need. I'll bring car. Do I need to bring a woman's grocery bag to go shopping? Asia, honey, that's a bit embarrassing. Oh oh. Then be careful on the road, Aji said. The girl blushed, but there was a smile on her face at being called honey. Aji, Aji, I want to come. His pink-haired fiancé was as excited as ever. He looked at the clock and saw that it was half past twelve noon. Are you sure you want to come? The anime with the herbivorous protagonist you're following usually airs at this hour. A-H-H. You're right, I can't miss it. A-G, sorry I'm not coming. Lala immediately turned on the TV and Peek immediately gave the girl a snack. The two have very good relationship. Should I have a robot companion for myself? Well. If it's for that kind of thing, I have many beautiful subordinates. Dash. A slash N, if you want to read 7 advanced chapters with a faster update frequency than the web novel, you can read it on my Patreon whose link is below. HTTPS slash slash www.patreon.com slash doglicker. Replace A with A and search in your browser. By the way, don't forget to throw power stones and leave a review to motivate me, smiley face, comment. 50 comment. Vote. 0 left. Chapter 79, Heroin in the Supermarket. Inside the supermarket. While pushing a grocery trolley. A.G. was a little unfocused. Because in addition to paying attention to the road, he also paid attention to the system interface that displayed his status for the first time after all this time. Blame someone for never reminding him to check the most cliched thing for system users. Hey. Hey there Miss System. I didn't say hello. I was yelling. I mean don't blame me, okay. After all, shouldn't something like this be mentioned by a system host in a novel less than 10 chapters after he receives he first reward? What is this woman talking about? As a system. Can't you remind your host to check the status early? Seeing no response. I know I'm right. Host, don't you feel you're wrong too? Seeing no response. I know I'm right. Okay. Stop this stupid conversation. I want to read my status properly. Ag stared at the system's fairly long interface and he raised his eyebrows. Why? Because. Ag see ya. Race, human slash. Affiliation, shadow garden. Occupation, leader, shadow garden. Supernatural skill slash item. Rightward arrow 3 Tomo Sherry Non, B+. Rightward arrow Excalibur, S+. Rightward arrow X. Rightward arrow Massage, X. Rightward arrow Full Counter, S+. Rightward arrow Doku Doku no Mi, S. Rightward arrow Strawberry Flavored Sperm, A. Rightward arrow Heart Crying Echoing, A+. Rightward arrow Padding, S. Rightward arrow Eternal Couple, X. Rightward arrow Harem Halo, SSS. Rightward arrow mysterious pendant key, item quest, A. Rightward arrow fragment of light, item quest, S. Rightward arrow world tree, SSS rightward arrow X. Rightward arrow driving, X. Character card. Rightward arrow boboy boy thunderstorm, S 100%. Rightward arrow demon king Barbados, SS plus 100%. Rightward arrow inos voldigod, SSS 12%. Influenced franchise plot. Rightward arrow to love are you. 14%. Rightward Arrow High School DXD, 23%. Rightward Arrow Bunny Girl Senpai, 71%. Other than the question mark of his race, which seemed to have a mysterious background other than humans that made his lips twitch. Damn, he would have to ask Miss System about this later. Everything else just reminded him what rewards he had gotten so far and the extent of the franchise plots he had influenced. Putting the latter aside, but about the rewards. The last two were the rewards he had gotten in the past few days. For example world tree. As the name suggests. This was indeed a world tree, a small world in the secondary dimension that was automatically created for him. He, or those who are granted access, 
can enter the world tree in the secondary dimension. Actually right now, apart from him, he had allowed the people in his organization to make the world tree the headquarters of Shadow Garden. At first he was quite confused thinking about where he would build his own organization's headquarters when he first got this organization. Because there was no way it would be forever in his house, right? Please, that's not cool. But he did not expect after working so hard on the Excalibur arc yesterday where he had to manipulate this and that. He got this item. A growth type item that solved the problem of his organization's headquarters and also gave him the safest place in the universe. If anything happened in the future, he could bring his girls to live inside the world tree. When he first saw the description of this item, Ag couldn't help but remember the people called cultivators in that novels. They also had something similar to him. But unlike those cultivators who expanded the small world within themselves with the increase of their cultivation base, his world tree or small world could grow just by feeding on the planets scattered in this universe. One might be confused when hearing this description. Even he was also confused when he first heard it. But after asking Miss System, he understood. World trees could grow on their own and increase in size by spreading their roots through the secondary dimension to the primary dimension where they silently thrust their roots into the core of every planet in the universe. In other words, unlike a cultivator, he doesn't need to do anything and his personal small world will grow by itself. This sounded terrifying. But since it was a growth item, there was naturally a limit to how efficiently the process of eating planets could be done. Currently, his world tree was even absorbing the core of a certain planet far out in space. Unfortunately, it was only one planet and the process itself took quite a bit of time. Fortunately, he could control which planets were allowed to be eaten and which were not. He certainly wouldn't let the world tree eat the planet Earth or even the home planet of his first fiancée, Lala who lived on the planet Devi Luke. In fact, he had asked Sistan for information about the people from any planets out there who were hostile to the people on Devi Luke and opposed to Lala's father. As a good son-in-law, wouldn't it be natural to help exterminate people who might be a threat to his fiancée's family? There's also his latest reward that he got after making Irina break her friendship with Issei yesterday. Giving the protagonist a mental attack for the umpteenth time. He get God level driving, which was written as X level inside his status panel. As the name suggests. It's literally a driving skill that makes him able to definitely beat the protagonist in a racing movie like in a Fast and Furious movie or something. Thinking of that movie. Ag wondered if the protagonist also existed in this world. The other party is an ordinary person who is good at racing and that's it so it must be easy to deal with him. He was actually only slightly interested in the heroine in the movie. Just a little. A.G. shook his head while putting fresh wage Iowa meat into his shopping trolley. Forget about the heroine in those movies. They're honestly not my taste and I'm worried about getting a green hat for including those girls in my harem. That reminds me of a certain fanfic I once read where the author made the protagonist not mind having an open relationship. Gosh I remember that time I had a mental attack. He shuddered. Even with his current power, he still would not remember the poisonous things he accidentally read in his previous life correctly. Host. There's a heroine near you. A.G. who was putting a box of chili peppers into his grocery cart made an ugly expression when he heard what his system said. Oh please. Miss System, I swear, if it happens to be some heroine I'm referring to. I'd better pretend I didn't see her and finish my grocery shopping quickly. Miss System did not expect one day to hear her host look so reluctantly at the heroine. I mean, I thought as long as it was a heroine. No matter what type it is, her host will always be greedy. But what did she see now? She clearly sensed that her host was feeling very disgusted. It's almost the same when he feels disgusted with a certain protagonist that he often complains about. Even so. No, host. You misunderstand. This is not what you had in mind. It's the heroine of a 2D franchise. Exactly an anime. Ag immediately looked around. Where is she? Just now you were disgusted with the heroine. Now you suddenly change your emotions. Is it because it's an anime heroine? So you're not so reluctant? Don't misunderstand me. I just wanted to check how pretty it is. Cough, I mean which franchise the heroine is from. If it catches my eye, I'll make my move. If not, forget it. You said that but now you're moving. You push your grocery cart faster while looking for the heroine I'm talking about. Miss System sighed. Straight to the right and turn to the left. She seems to be having trouble picking up something on a shelf that's much taller than her body. Host this is your chance. Ag. This woman was actually more excited than him, right? Although he was curious how Miss System could know what the heroine was doing. Maybe she hacked into the CCTV cameras inside the supermarket? But whatever. What was more important now was to see how pretty the heroine was. Don't think just because of heroine, you can get into my eyes. 
Miss System wanted to complain about the last one, but it was too late as her host was surprised to see who the heroine was. Dash. A girl with a pink hoodie, white hat, sunglasses, black hot pants and long purple hair stood on tiptoes and jumped. She was trying to grab a box of sanitary napkins placed at the very top of the shelf. But due to her height of only 151 centimeters, she was having trouble reaching the items she wanted. The sanitary napkins are placed too high. Should I call an attendant to help me pick it up? However, she shook her head. She didn't want to risk her identity being discovered by others who might know her. She just wanted to buy a box of sanitary pads and didn't want to accidentally bump into her fans because it would be troublesome. Girl, do you need help? A masculine voice sounded not far beside her. Her body stiffened, but she quickly won herself over and looked at the kind man offering her help. Before she could answer, he had already grabbed the box of pads she wanted and handed it to her. He was much taller than her and he could take what she wanted easily. Here, take it. T thank you. You're welcome. The man smiled. Of all the men she had ever seen. This man now standing in front of her was probably the most handsome. He had snow white hair and red eyes that were no less unique than the six pointed star eyes behind her glasses. She thanked him for helping her and that was it. She honestly wanted to rush home as she felt that her body could not last much longer but before she wanted to walk towards the cashier to pay for her sanitary napkins. She suddenly heard a voice in her head. That hair, those eyes, that face. Although this girl is hiding her identity. I know she's a heroine. Exactly an idol who's recently on the rise. Ai Hashino. I didn't expect to meet her at the supermarket. Her identity is known. Who is it? Where? The girl, Ai Hashino looked around and wondered who had just spoken. Surprisingly there was no one except the man who had just helped her not far behind her. Wait. Could it be that man? She looked back and saw the man looking surprised when she looked back at him. What's with this girl? Didn't you decide to leave immediately after thanking me? Don't tell me you just realized my good looks and wanted to ask for my contact number? Yatter yatter. Who wants to ask for your number? AI was again surprised. She realized that other than the man, it was indeed the owner of the voice. She saw that the man did not open his mouth while speaking and it seemed that what she heard was his inner voice. Besides, what does it mean for her to be called a heroine? For her idol identity she could understand. But heroine? She doesn't understand. What's wrong, girl? Are you forgetting something? It's okay. Sorry to bother you, mister. You're not disturbing. Hey you, be careful. Although what had just happened was shocking. Hey, I didn't want to stay longer at the supermarket, she wanted to go home immediately. Her legs were getting weak because she was actually having her period. However, it was also because of this that she would fall when she wanted to run. She could hear the man's screams when he saw her about to fall. They were quite far away. So there was no way the other party would have time to save her. She could only prepare to feel the pain, especially at her menstrual site after she fell. It must be painful. Eh. But instead of feeling pain, her body was floating in the air. Or rather she was now being carried like a princess by that man. You suddenly turned to me again and suddenly ran away. Do I look scary? Luckily I was able to catch this girl. Hmm. It seems like her body is not well. Let me check using my magic. Magic. Is this man suffering from a disease called 8th syndrome? She remembered reading about the signs of people who have this disease on the internet. For example, the person would imagine too much or something like that. Oh. So this girl... Ai Hashino is having her monthly cycle. H how did you know? Ai couldn't help but ask with a surprised look. Knew? Know what? By the way, can you walk? Your legs seem to be very weak. Of course I know. If I said I used magic to figure it out. Would this girl believe me? No, she'll definitely think I'm suffering from 8th grade syndrome. Ah. T that. Right. She did think this man had 8th grade syndrome. But that was before because she now somewhat believed that this man could actually use magic. But putting that aside, this man didn't seem to know his inner voice could be heard. And about his question. I can, please put me down. Sure, but you have to walk slowly after this, okay. On. This man was very considerate of her. Although he knew her identity, he also seemed to pretend not to know. After being lowered from the man's arms, AI stood up on both feet. However, it was not long before she frowned and lost her balance. Fortunately, that man hugged her and her face bumped into his muscular, hard, yet somehow very comfortable chest. AI blushed. Her glasses and the box of pads in her hand almost fell off. Gosh, 
I told you to be careful. It looks like you can't walk properly with your current condition. Why yes mister. Sorry to trouble you. Hey don't apologize. Why are you apologizing? I. This had become her habit. Because of her inferiority complex and worry that people would hate her. She would immediately apologize if she felt she did something wrong to others. This girl is the same as in the original work. It seems like the plot hasn't started yet and AI Hashino is just rising in her career as an idol. Because of that, she is still not completely good at pretending to hide her original low-key personality except on stage. How? How did this man know about her so far? AI Hashino was confused. It was the most exciting and confusing day for her to meet a man whom she could hear his inner voice. Surprisingly not like with other people. Because she could hear his inner voice, she felt less nervous and worried that the other party would hate her. After all, from his inner voice, she knew he didn't even feel offended after she had inconvenienced him by helping her this far. Tell you what. How about I help you pay for this at the cashier and drive you home? I happen to have my own car. The man was very kind. He was even willing to help her this far. But she hesitated, and felt unwilling to trouble others. I see that this girl is hiding her identity for fear of someone finding out about her identity and affecting her reputation as an idol. If people who know her know she's in her current monthly cycle and has trouble walking. Putting aside my disinterest, but what if someone else at the supermarket finds out and posts this news on the internet? I can imagine this girl would get into a bit of trouble. Mister, I'm going to trouble you. But please help me and I will definitely repay your kindness later. There was no other choice. It was better to agree to accept this man's help than risk getting caught by her fans or something. The man smiled and carried her as if she were a princess which made her blush. Don't worry about repaying my kindness. Even without that. I'm actually happy to help a pretty girl in distress. Dash. After Ag managed to persuade Ai Hashino to be escorted home. With the persuasion of an inner voice and an absurd halo harem. Leaving aside the latter, but the former might make one wonder why Ai Hashino seems to be hearing his inner voice for the first time. She's not like the other heroines who have been hearing his inner voice for a long time. Why? Blame someone for that. Don't blame me, host. The inner voice has its limits too, okay. Just like a game server can't accommodate everyone. If the server is full, you have to create a new server. So there you have it. It's basically the second server's inner voice that makes her want to laugh. In this server too. The heroines such as Lala, Rias, Sana, and the heroine before AI Hashino will not be able to hear his inner voice. As Miss System said, this is a different server and the range of the server is also more limited than server 1. Miss System said that she needs time to optimize server 2. Please give her time which he answered is not necessary because it is actually more interesting. Do as you please, host. Although it is a little troublesome to start from the beginning to explain how mysterious and how great you are to the new heroine. But no matter. Ag wanted to say that he was a master of the inner voice. Starting from scratch. Do it. They really did. I mean he got the idol into his supercar after paying for their groceries at the supermarket. Mister, are you sure it's okay to let me into your car? Stop looking down on yourself. Are you so nervous getting into a car like this Dodge Viper arc? Cough, looks like I need to boost your confidence, girl. You are very beautiful and have a good heart. Trust me, with just those two points you are 100% worthy of sitting in my car. Ai Hashino, that girl bowed her head in slight embarrassment. Why are you shouting and praising me so loudly in your heart? Although she should have started to get used to hearing people's praise as an idol. But hearing people's praise directly from that person's inner voice. She was a little embarrassed because it wasn't like the others who praised her with lies and a little exaggerated truth. This man's praise is really sincere, isn't it? It's fine. It's just like I said before. I'm just happy to help a pretty girl in distress. By the way. What's your name, girl? To woo the heroine who just heard your inner voice and you're meeting for the first time. First, you should pretend that you don't know her even though you do. That way, you'll eliminate the suspicion that you're manipulating your inner voice or something. And see? This will also encourage the heroine to be curious about you. Ag smiled as if he didn't know an idol was sitting with him in his car. By the way he also didn't forget to start the car engine which sounded like. Broom. Broom. Damn, this is good. He should drive his supercar more often instead of using boring teleportation magic. AI didn't know why this man was even pretending not to know her even though he seemed to know a lot about her. About her heroine and the original work also confused her. Was she a character or something that he knew from something? Although she did not have a hobby of watching anime, reading novels, or enjoying other works of fiction. In her spare time, 
she remembered idly watching anime on her phone while eating. And yes, she had heard the female characters there called heroine or something like that. Because of this, she couldn't help but be curious about this man. And since he had also been so kind to help her so far, she felt uncomfortable if she didn't even tell him her real name. My name, A.I. Hashino. Mister, what is your name? Dash. A slash N, if you want to read 7 advanced chapters with a faster update frequency than the web novel, you can read it on my Patreon whose link is below. HTTPS slash slash www.patreon.com slash doglicker. Replace A with A and search in your browser. By the way, don't forget to throw power stones and leave a review to motivate me, smiley face, comment. 51 comment. Vote. 0 left. Chapter 80, My AI Hashino must not give birth to a protagonist. See. The heroine is curious about him. This development is already good. Now of course you just need to get to know her before taking the next step. My name is AGCEA. Our ages don't seem to differ much. I'm actually still a second year high school student. But AI Hashino, huh? I feel like I've heard this name before. Ah, you must be the idol who recently made her debut. AI. If this boy said he was a movie actress, she would definitely believe him because he was good at pretending. If she could not hear his inner voice, she would never even know this man named AGCEA had already recognized her identity before they got acquainted. Not only that, he seemed to know a lot about her for some reason. So CEA Kun, you're a high school student? But this car. That's right. Aren't you still a high school student? And it's still the second year where one shouldn't be qualified to have a driving license yet, right? Don't tell me CEA Kun is a bad student who comes from a rich family for being able to drive a car like this. I know that look. You must think I'm a bad student and come from a rich family, right? Unfortunately you're wrong. Oh, I was wrong? I don't know since when, but there was a genuine smile on AI Hashino's pretty face that was because she was currently excited to hear Eiji's inner voice instead of what the boy was saying from his mouth. But what she heard next made her feel guilty. Although I can indeed be considered rich. But that's because of my own efforts. I have no parents in this world, not even in the other world where I was born. I'm an orphan. Don't worry. I have a driving license. See. We don't have to worry about getting pulled over by the police. AG smiled and showed his license while driving with one hand. He already knew the girl's address because she had mentioned it before they entered the car. And now he was driving there. Sorry. AI Hashino suddenly bowed her head several times. I'm really sorry, CEA Kun. The second step of an inner voice master. AG wanted to say that he was also a master of emotions. Why? Because he managed to make AI Hashino feel guilty for him and it was effective to leave an impression on her heart before they parted. Host, please stop bragging. You're making me a little embarrassed. If you're embarrassed stop watching. I'm trying to catch an idol type Pokemon here. AG complained. He chose to ignore the woman and focus on the heroine sitting beside him. Although AI was hiding her face, precisely with the hat and glasses that hid her beautiful eyes that looked like six-pointed stars. Gosh. How can anyone have such beautiful eyes? Although AI is just an ordinary human, she has very unique eyes. Why are you suddenly apologizing? By the way may I call you, AI? I'm not used to calling people by last name. If you want, you can also call me, AG. Step 3. Although this is a bit shameless. It is important to make the heroine and you call each other by first name so that the heroine distinguishes you from other people who are not too close to her. If this condition is not met, that's fine but you should at least make the heroine not hate you for calling her by her first name. In his case, it just so happened that he made AI feel a little guilty for making him think of his parents. The girl's chances of refusing are very low. Why yes. I don't mind. But I'll still call you, CEA Kun because it's more comfortable for me. As for why I'm sorry? I actually. AI blushed slightly as AG continued to praise her, especially her beautiful eyes. Who is the girl who doesn't like being complimented? Especially when she knows the compliment is sincere because it comes from the heart. She was even more curious about AG after hearing the boy also mention things as if he was not from this world. Gosh, why does this boy look so mysterious? However, just as she was about to say that she could hear his inner voice. Her voice was suddenly inaudible. She could not express anything about that inner voice to AG. It felt as if something told her that she was forbidden to do that as the price of being able to hear the boy's inner voice. AI, what's wrong with you? Do you have something to say? AG asked with an unknowing look on his face. Ah, I. AI thought hard, he seemed to have no other choice but to lie. No, see Iyakun. 
Actually, I apologize to you for being too much trouble for you. Although it's the first time we've met. Ah. The idle girl suddenly pointed at a building from inside the car to distract himself. My residence is over there, C.E. Yakun. I live on the fourth floor. Looking at the seven-story tall apartment-like building. A.G. nodded, he immediately turned his car and parked in front of the apartment. So you live here? Is it okay to let people you've known for less than a day know where you live in considerable detail? Your fans must be jealous of me. A.G. helped A.I. out of his car, he knew the girl even had trouble walking due to her monthly cycle. The girl giggled. It's okay. I believe C.E. Yakun is a good person. Good person? Didn't know if the idle girl was telling the truth or not. Besides, I still seem to have to trouble you a bit to actually get to my apartment room. Although reluctant to trouble A.G. further. A.I. knew with her current condition, she was not even able to walk up the elevator, especially with the things she had just bought from the supermarket. C.E. Yakun, can you? Sure, leave it to me. Dash. A.G. feels that today is very beautiful. Even if the weather in the sky looks a bit cloudy. But he would still say that today was beautiful. Originally he didn't plan to go too far since it was his first encounter with A.I. Hashino. However, the idle girl was completely helpless and so easily trusted him, even if he knew his inner voice and every step of his inner voice master brought him this far. In the original work, the beautiful girl he carried while riding the elevator. Feeling her body soft, fragrant, and so light as if she was a piece of time and not a person. Although he could have cured A.I.'s monthly cycle with his magic. He did not do so because he was too petty. He was a bastard, but don't worry. This bastard will definitely not let the girl in his arms suffer like in the original work. A.G. sighed. If the situation is like this. It didn't seem to matter if he started step 4 early. A.I. didn't know what she was feeling at the moment. Happy. Comfortable. A little nervous about letting a man touch her this much. Feeling A.G.'s strong arms carrying her easily with her groceries to her apartment room. She didn't know what she was feeling. Even when her heart was now beating faster than usual. She did not know. She did not know what love was, yet she knew that she found this situation rather embarrassing. Yet she realized that A.G. was different from everyone else. Besides that boy also turned out to be an orphan just like her and was trying to earn his own money just like her, which made her feel closer to him. She didn't know what kind of job A.G. had to be able to afford such a supercar, even though he was a high school student just like her. For the sake of her career as an idol, she even stopped continuing her school education and now she only focused on working. No longer going to school. Because the apartment room she rented was quite far away. And A.G. was carrying her slowly because he was probably worried about her feeling the pain of her monthly cycle. This boy is very caring and gentle. She wondered should she say something to keep the boy from getting bored? Um. A.I. was just about to say something with her slender arm still around A.G.'s neck. But. She heard something surprising. This apartment. This is exactly the same as in the original work. It's exactly similar to the one in the anime called Oshi no Keo, a franchise I watched in a previous life where I knew many things about AI. She was the heroine who survived less than two episodes in the anime. A franchise that tells the revenge story of AI's son and daughter who witnessed their mother being killed by her fans in this apartment. Leave aside the mention of the franchise where she is the heroine. She finally understood a little why AG seemed to know so much about her. No, he even seemed to know her future. Clearly AG was no ordinary person, especially after she could hear his inner voice. But what was it about her future self that sounded tragic for being killed by her own fans? What about her son and daughter who seem to be the main focus in this franchise? Who is the father? She hasn't even dated anyone and she doesn't have any children. Hikaru Kamaki, this lunatic had the nerve to report the address where AI and her children lived, allowing disgruntled fans to go to AI's place and kill her with a knife right in front of her children. After this incident, the revenge story of AI's son and daughter begins, which was actually planned by Hikaru Kamaki. This person has a strange hobby, and he is actually a killer who is good at disguising himself as a good person. Even though AI was his ex-girlfriend at the time and her children are his own. This crazy person. Looks like AI in my arms doesn't have that kind of relationship with him yet. That's good. Knowing the original work, even though it's selfish. I won't let AI go through the same suffering as in the original work because of that idiot who doesn't know how to take care of his own woman. AI stared blankly at the white-haired boy who was looking at her with a gentle smile, but in his heart she could feel the boy's anger at her ex-girlfriend in the original work. She felt touched knowing A.G. cared about her so much. But Hikaru Kamaki. She felt this name was familiar. Wait, isn't that the blonde boy who was in the theater club with her? When she was in the idol group Bikomaka with a number of other girls. 
that boy was in another idol group that was still in the same theater club, and he often treated her kindly. A few times, he even encouraged her while practicing dances for her debut and gave her a drink. She had a good impression of the blonde boy. That was before of course because now she doubted the boy. In her original work she somehow dated Hikaru Kamaki, somehow got pregnant with his child, he didn't want to take responsibility for her. And one day because Hikaru Kamaki was actually not a good person and had a strange hobby of killing people. That boy made her suffer in the original work and made her son and daughter work hard for revenge. She didn't know why, although her son and daughter only existed in the original work, but she felt a strong dissatisfaction in her heart. It felt like there was a fire in her heart. She was angry. Although she didn't know if what Eiji said was real or fake. It made her even more wary of Hikaru Kamaki. It was better not to get too close to him. After all, she and that boy were not dating like in the original work. As for Eiji. She felt more and more curious about what he knew about her. At least. At least she might be able to be friends with him. Dash. Has been at the doorstep of her apartment room with the white-haired boy who has helped her so far. Thank you C.E. Yakun. Can I ask for your contact number? Next time, after I recover. I want to repay your kindness. A.I. smiled, she had taken off her hat and glasses, revealing her beautiful face and beautiful six-pointed star eyes. Sure, though you don't have to bother. I'm happy to exchange contacts with an idol. I love looking at those eyes. A.I. deserves to be a heroine, she is so beautiful. Cough. The purple-haired idol pretended to cough with a slight blush on her cheeks. Could this boy stop praising her secretly in his heart? Unlike responding to praise from her fans, she felt overwhelmed by the waves of praise from Eiji's heart. I can't give you anything expensive, I. I can probably just take you out to eat somewhere? Is that all right? She was a little worried how to repay the boy's kindness and at the same time befriend him. Although she was an idol, she had just debuted and she certainly wasn't that rich. Even her current apartment, she only rented it for one month before she had to renew her contract again after receiving her salary as a budding idol. Eiji waved his hand. As I've said before. I'm happy to help a pretty girl in trouble. But if you feel bad about not returning my favor. I agree to eat with you later, AI. Step 4. Make the heroine know and be more curious about what she was like in the original work. And make her wary of people who are not in her favor in the future. That way, she will be more interested in you and wonder what you knows about her future, right? See. AI even took the initiative to invite him to eat together later. Even though he knew it was her way of thanking him for all his help. He could see the girl's starry eyes seemed to perk up as he agreed to exchange contact with him and admired him even more for not asking him for anything too much. In other words. Today's mission was a spectacular success. Next, there's no need to rush. Even if you have used the four steps of inner voice master and emotion master simultaneously with the harem halo buff. You still have to wait for the next encounter and use a few more tricks to truly capture the heroine's heart. After saying goodbye to AI and arriving at the parking lot. Before getting into his car and heading back home because Lala and the others would be waiting. Zeta. As her name was called, a sexy woman in a tight black bodysuit with a cape that displayed her snow white cleavage and belly appeared and immediately knelt respectfully in front of him. The woman's short hair was also almost as white as hers. But her violet colored eyes were sharp, cold, and she had cat ears like Kurika in her human form. Sixth seat of the seven shadows, Zeta. Yes, Eiji Sama. What you need and I will do it for you immediately. The woman's large breasts trembled from her fervor and loyalty to him, which made Eiji sigh mentally. Get rid of dirty thoughts. Get rid of dirty thoughts. Although I know Zeta definitely won't refuse me if I want to do it with her in the car. But. Host, calm down. Don't you want to maintain your image or whatever in front of your subordinates? Miss System meowed and said something unhelpful. Damn it. Not now. I know, I can do it later. For now. He looked at Zeta indifferently and the other party looked at him respectfully. Zeta, there are certain pests that I want you to clean up. However, I want you to make the dirty thing he did come to light before making it seem like an accident. Can you do it? At the same time, Eiji reached out his hand and touched the woman's head while transferring the pest information he was referring to to her with his magic. Zayden narrowed her eyes slightly, though her face was still cold and expressionless. Her cat ears seemed to twitch as he patted them. It was a sign that a cat enjoyed a pat on the head. Although Zeta had almost the same cat ears as Kurika except hers were larger. She was certainly not a Nico Shao. She was actually a beastkin who was a descendant of heroes in her home world. Every shadow in Shadow Garden has a unique background. Besides Zeta. Alpha, Aurora, Delta, and the others also had backgrounds that were no less than the descendants of a hero in their home world. Eiji-sama, 
I understand. Zeta had digested the information about the target of her mission while enjoying the pat on her head. If it was anyone other than Eiji Sama, she would have killed that person for daring to touch her head. Good. Eiji nodded. Then you can go now. Yes, Eiji Sama. With swoosh, Zeta's body flickered and she instantly disappeared from his sight. That woman didn't actually use magic to do that. Although she could also use magic. What she had just done was actually purely using her physical power as a beastkin who had a hero bloodline. Staring at the drizzling sky, which looked as gloomy as one's fate in the near future. Thinking of how much time had passed since he said he would go grocery shopping to Lala and Asia. Since he met a new heroine on the way, he spent too long and it was already past lunchtime. Broom. Broom. Shortly after, people on the road saw an orange and black Viper supercar overtaking and weaving on the highway. Many people were amazed, and some had pale faces because the person driving the car was crazy. Although he still stopped at red lights and stopped when there was a policeman which somehow made the policeman pause and not arrest him after seeing his driver's license. When the light turns green, the person driving the Viper instantly turns into a racing god that would make people who usually show off at Japan's famous racing event called Tokyo Drift embarrassed and run away with their money. God slash X level driving skills are amazing. Eiji can say with confidence. Even if he didn't use a supercar, even if he used an ordinary car, with his skills, the speed of any car wouldn't be worse than a supercar and he could drive it perfectly. Actually, his driving skills are not just limited to cars either. He can drive motorcycles, bicycles, planes, helicopters and whatnot. As long as it's a vehicle, he can use it perfectly and he will be the best at it unless someone also has driving skills on the same level as him. Squawk. Lala, Asia, I'm home. After arriving at his house, and putting his car into the garage, A.G. opened the door with two large plastic bags full of food in his hands. He felt a little guilty making the girls wait. The girls were starving, right? Oh my goodness. As a responsible man. He certainly shouldn't let his girls starve. However, as he passed by the living room. Ah. A.G., welcome back. You took too long, so we ordered food online. His pink-haired fiancé was eating a cheese pizza with a glass of milk in front of the TV that was showing a Netflix movie about aliens. What does this girl watch when she's an alien herself? Well as long as she's happy. Eiji san. Let me take care of the ingredients you bought. Oh sure, thanks Asia. On. The blonde girl who saw his arrival immediately got up from the sofa and helped him put the ingredients he bought into the refrigerator. It seemed that before he came, she was also enjoying watching a movie while eating with Lala. And Peek. Where's Peek? Peek. She's doing her daily checkup on Run. It looks like Run will wake up tomorrow at the latest. Lala said lightly. Yes, of course. It's not a problem or anything like that. It was just that Eiji widened his eyes slightly. I honestly almost forgot about that girl. Right, after all it's been over a week. She should wake up soon. Why does Run need to wake up soon? Of course to give you a surprise for the protagonist Rito. On the surface he was smiling to help Asia and eat the slice of pizza Lala gave him, inside he was smiling evilly. By the way does he get a reward after doing something with the heroine of Oshi no Keo? Of course, host. You get reward. Ding. It was a very familiar sound and Eiji silently glanced at his system interface just to see. Dash. A slash N, if you want to read 7 advanced chapters with a faster update frequency than the web novel, you can read it on my Patreon whose link is below. HTTPS slash slash www.patreon.com slash doglicker. Replace A with A and search in your browser. By the way, don't forget to throw power stones and leave a review to motivate me, smiley face, comment. 46 comment. Vote. 0 left. Chapter 81, light green haired girl who just woke up. Ding. It has been detected that the host has changed the plot in the Oshi no Keo franchise. Successfully changed the direction of the plot of Oshi no no by 78% by making AI Hashino wary of Hikaru Kamiki and the possibility of them establishing a relationship like in the original work is less than 10%. Dot. This percentage happened because you also told your subordinates to do something to Hikaru Kamiki. Ai Hashino had already received some things that made her even more convinced that Hikaru Kamiki was the same as in the original work. It's only a matter of time before you manage to change 100% of the plot of Oshi no Keo by preventing the birth of the protagonist in the original work. Trigger critical reward. Ding. Congratulations host, you got the Astral Express. Puffed. Eiji San. Are you okay? Eiji. You're choking, drink this milk. Seeing him suddenly choking while eating pizza and helping her, Asia said with concern. Seeing him suddenly choking, 
Lala was worried and gave him a bottle of milk. Ag took the bottle of milk Lala gave him and drank it. Don't worry, I'm fine. Thanks for the milk Lala. He returned the bottle of milk that still had a little content to his pink-haired fiancé. On. Lala drank the milk bottle down and made a refreshed expression before going back to watching her TV show. As for the indirect kiss? Oh please who cares after their relationship has come this far? There was no way he was blushing just because he saw Lala or even other girls drinking from the same bottle as him or something. But Lala. Don't you like milk too much? Morning, noon, night. No day without milk. Oh right. He remembered Lala mentioning that when she was a child and still living on planet Devi Luke. Lala said her mother always emphasized to drink milk five times every day. Lala's mother told Lala that she must drink milk diligently to grow up quickly. Even now, Lala is big, especially with her well-developed breasts. Lala's mom will always remind her daughters to drink milk. There is nothing wrong with that. Even many other housewives often do the same thing as Lala's mom. Just. Asia, let's continue. Since it's already half past three in the afternoon. Why don't we prepare something for dinner from now on? Okay Aji san Are you going to teach me a new dish today? Aji nodded. The blonde girl seemed excited because every time there was a cooking session with him. Usually he always taught her how to cook various dishes and she would be very happy then. Well it's good to keep increasing the affection points with some small actions like this. However, he couldn't help but think of Lala's mom. His future mother-in-law, she. Host, do you want to see your reward description? That's right. There was a reason why he was choking earlier. Actually, he was just a little surprised, but it was because he was eating pizza at the time. Even with his current power, it was still uncomfortable when his throat was blocked by food. Speaking of rewards. Looking at the description displayed on the system interface. He sighed. This was really something he knew. He even knew which franchise this reward came from. This was not an ability or even a magic item that would increase his power. It wasn't. But this is. AG couldn't help but smile widely as he prepared dinner with Asia. Astral Express. Not like a door that allows him to travel to another world. The Astral Express is an interstellar transportation device that allows not only itself, but others to be carried along. And not only does it travel to the galaxy, but it also has the ability to move to other universes. A train to be exact, a train that can travel the universe. To think he can even take his girls with him to other worlds. Eiji was so excited. Ai Hashino, from Oshinokyo, I didn't expect you to trigger the jackpot. And my system is also very generous. Oof. Of course. Miss System sounded proud as he praised her. But put that aside. A.G. remembered at the franchise where Astral Express originated. In a certain universe. There was a protagonist whose body was created from the core of a star. No, it wasn't actually a star core. But the core of a certain powerhouse entity that was up so that the protagonist could become the protagonist by growing step by step and joining a group filled with beautiful women. The leader of that group happens to be one of the heroine and owner of the Astral Express. Host. Do you have plans to travel to another universe? If you do. There are a lot of protagonists out there that you can cut the chance and you can get more rewards. Hearing his system's question, Eiji was silent for a moment. He silently glanced at Asia who was busy cutting the goose meat beside him. In the living room, he saw Lala watching a Netflix movie with Peek who seemed to have finished checking on Run. He also remembered his other girls such as Kurika, Rias, Sana, Yui, Mai, and Akeno. The latter was unclear even though he had already enjoyed the girl's perverted services, but he would have to do something about it later. Although he could take the girls with him to play in another universe. But, there were still many heroes and protagonists in this world that he had yet to cut. Not literally cut, but cut their chances of not contacting each other. Putting aside the protagonists that he had currently never met. But Issei and Rito. He had to finish with those two first. As for Sakuta's protagonist. There was no need to worry about that protagonist already being his subordinate. After becoming his puppet, Sakuta's protagonist is just a character pretending to be the protagonist. Most of his actions follow him wishes and he is very loyal to him unless someone somehow manages to take out his soul-controlling seed from the boy's body. But it's too bad for Sakuta because the plot has been cut by more than 70%. According to Miss System, Sakuta's plot armor as the protagonist has been severely weakened and there is no way someone from nowhere will come to save him. There is such a thing that protagonists have. A.G. wasn't surprised, even when he first heard it. Isn't it natural for the protagonist to have a protagonist halo that lowers the IQ of those around him and has plot armor that makes him survive any danger before the plot is completed? About traveling to another universe. 
he wasn't planning to do so anytime soon as there still seemed to be a lot of protagonists in this universe that he needed to cut down. If he were to just leave those fat meats behind. Wouldn't it be a pity? At least he would do it until he felt bored first before he went to seek entertainment in another universe. There was also the universe he came from. Well although he felt quite strong now. Just in case, it was good to grow really strong so that the final boss or whatever couldn't threaten him in the slightest. Host, you're too cautious. There's nothing wrong with being careful not to get slapped, right? Dash. Opening her eyes for the first time in a long time. She saw a bloated mirror before her eyes. Hmm. She saw herself lying inside a capsule that was familiar to her. This. I remember Lala showing off an invention like this when we played in the past. What was it called? Healing Healing Capsule Kun. His. The capsule suddenly opened automatically after she completely woke up from her sleep. She naturally came out from inside the capsule and saw that she was in an unknown room. There was sunlight coming in through the window. She felt the warmth of the sunlight which made her nose itch. Oh no. No, don't sneeze yet. I just woke up. She hurriedly covered her nose and restrained herself from sneezing. Because if not, her body would definitely swap again with her brother, Ren. This was an innate trait of her race that made her have two personalities slash people in one body. Every time they sneezed, she would swap with her other personality that she already considered as her own brother. The light green haired girl who was none other than Run. She was panicking. Achoo. It's over. No. She really sneezed. But. Blinked repeatedly and was silent for a few seconds while feeling her body well. She looked at her chest and it was still a pair of big breasts covered by a white nightgown. I don't know who gave her this outfit, but maybe it was Lala? After all she woke up at the girl's discovery. But put that aside. Run widened her eyes, the ahog on top of her head twitched, looking cute. It's still me. Where's Ren? That boy didn't swap bodies with me like usual. This is weird. The light green haired girl kept moving her body. She even tried to do whatever movements she could think of with her body. She thought it was just a matter of her body reacting late or something. But even after moving her body for a few minutes. She was still her. I'm still me. A beautiful light green haired girl. I'm run. The girl looked happy. She was as excited as a child who was given more time to play outside by her parents. Run still didn't realize that she was already separated from Ren. She thought this was just a rare opportunity for her that allowed her to see the world longer, even after she sneezed before. As she moved her body happily, she didn't know since when. But a blonde girl stood at the door with an awkward expression. Run San, are you awake? That's good. Does your body feel okay? Nothing hurts? My name is Asia Argento by the way. Run had no idea who the blonde girl was. She didn't know her at all, but she knew the other party must be a human living on earth. She remembered that Ren had once written something in a note that he had left in his pocket as a way to communicate with her as each time they swapped bodies. When she swapped bodies with Ren, she once read that note which told her that Ren wanted to find Lala to a planet called Earth. She looked at the other party in confusion. Asia Argento. Do we know each other? But yeah, I feel fine. No, I've actually never felt this good before. Every time she exchanged with Ren. At first she would always feel a slight discomfort in her body for a few minutes before feeling normal. But now, she felt no such thing and she felt very refreshed. So that's it? Asia nodded after hearing Run's answer. She smiled kindly and said, then please follow me downstairs. Lala-san and Aji san are waiting for you at the dining table for breakfast. The latter she didn't know who, but she knows the name of her childhood friend. Run was excited, yet she also frowned as if annoyed by something. That's right. It's Lala. She must be playing a prank on me and Ren as usual, right? I suddenly found myself in one of her inventions. Lala, I'll show you that the current me isn't so easy. Run's eyes looked determined, she was ready to take revenge on the pink-haired girl after all this time. She was no longer the shy and cowardly girl she had been in the past. The birthday cake that Lala threw in her face on her birthday as a child. Her favorite doll that was blown up by Lala's invention. Her candy that was often stolen by the girl. And there are many others. There were many mischiefs that Lala had thrown at her in the past that made her suffer. She didn't understand why Ren could even fall for the pink-haired girl who used to bully them as kids. Follows a girl named Asia Argento, and then meets her childhood friend and an unknown man. Whoever it is, nothing can prevent her from taking revenge on Lala. Arriving at a room with a table full of food. Run's eyes lit up. Her stomach rumbled involuntarily as she seemed to have not eaten for a long time. Ah. I. The light green-haired girl blushed. 
she felt embarrassed that her stomach was rumbling and was heard by the people in this room. Oh no, her resolve to get revenge on the pink-haired girl was wavering. Run San. It's okay. It's normal for you to feel very hungry after sleeping for over a week. Come have breakfast with us. The blonde girl named Asia Argento was very kind. Run had a very good impression of her, but what did it mean that she had been asleep for over a week? Although it was not unusual for Ren to take over her body for a long time. But it was at most two-thirds days because if not sneezing, the boy would deliberately make himself sneeze to give her time to play. Because of their multiple personality conditions since childhood. She and Ren have certainly shared with each other. In fact, they had often taken turns in who and when it was their turn to take over each other's bodies. However, what Asia Argento said confused her until her attention was drawn to the familiar pink-haired girl. Run. It's been so long. You finally woke up? Hee <laughs> hee. Lala, you. Me. Lala who was sitting at the dining table tilted her head in confusion. It's really you. Yes, I'm Lala. I don't know why Run suddenly yelled at Lala. I don't really remember the details. But the relationship between the two is very good, right? Un, my relationship with Run is very good. We've been friends since childhood. Huh? Who's on good terms with her? I'm not. Lala turned to her fiancé and said cheerfully, but Run turned to the white-haired man for the first time and said the opposite of Lala. Run suddenly heard a voice inside her head, and she thought it belonged to the white-haired man sitting at the dining table with Lala because the girl turned to him. She naturally thought it was the man who misunderstood that her relationship with the pink-haired girl was very good. Who are you? While asking this, she was actually dumbfounded at the man's appearance because he was the most handsome man she had ever seen. She wondered what relationship that man had with Lala. She was a little upset at the thought of Lala being in a relationship with that handsome man. As for that man? She saw him frowning as if something wrong had happened. Then she heard the voice again, but the voice seemed to come from his heart because he didn't even open his mouth. Something is wrong. Does Run not remember? Well. Run. Looking at Run who was staring at him in confusion and bewilderment as if she was even hearing his inner voice for the first time. A.G. groaned mentally. Miss System. It seems to be because you separated Run from Ren back then. It affected some of her memories, including the memories of her who should have long ago heard the inner voice of you and the protagonist. Hearing Miss System's words, although it was a little unfortunate that he had to start over to explain everything and tell Run how bad the protagonist was. This and that were troublesome. But as a veteran in this matter, A.G. thought this was no problem. So what if Run really didn't know who he was and who Rito was after he saved her from falling in love with the protagonist? He could think of it as a separate part just to prevent Run from falling in love with the protagonist. Now, the main part has just begun. He smiled at the light green-haired girl and said. Hello Run. I already know about you from Lala. My name is A.G.C. Iya. Lala's fiancé. Dash. A slash N, if you want to read 7 advanced chapters with a faster update frequency than the web novel, you can read it on my Patreon whose link is below. HTTPS slash slash www.patreon.com slash doglicker. Replace A with A and search in your browser. By the way, don't forget to throw power stones and leave a review to motivate me, smiley face, creator's thoughts. Dog liquor gods dog liquor gods. Can you suggest me some rewards for the future? Comment. 43 comment. Vote. 0 left. Chapter 82, The Confident Rito. This time he feels he can beat Eiji. Lala's fiancé. Run surprised. But recalling the reason why Ren wanted to come to this planet called Earth. She remembered that Ren was jealous and unwilling after learning the news that Lala was engaged to someone. That someone was a human from Earth. And if I'm not mistaken his name was A.G.C. Iya. The man in front of her, is Ren's love rival. Glancing at Lala, she saw that the girl seemed to like this man named A.G.C. Iya. Ren wasn't even a rival at all. That boy didn't stand a chance. Although a little sorry for her brother, but just that and smelling the food on the table. Her stomach rumbled again. We can chat later. For now, why don't you have breakfast with us, Run? Yes, Run. Hurry up and sit down and eat. The food on earth is really good. Although Asia didn't say anything this time. She kindly did the maid's duty by preparing the chairs and tableware for Run. I if you guys insist. Then what can I do, right? I'll eat too. Run blushed. Even so, she did not hesitate to eat with everyone. She even forgot about those things about revenge on Lala that she was so determined to do before. Even putting aside why she could hear Aji's inner voice. Because she was so hungry, she just wanted to eat right away. Looking at this. 
Ag thought the light green haired girl was childish which was almost similar to Lala. However unlike Lala who was completely innocent, although recently the girl had been tainted a lot by the perverted things they had done together. Cough, Run was not so innocent. She seemed to be more sensitive and alert to many things. For example now, although the girl was seen eating fried fish and rice with gusto. Her gaze often glanced at him with suspicion in her eyes. Even before eating the food on the table, she slightly smelled the food first as if to make sure if this food was not poisonous while glancing at Lala. I don't know what Lala did to that girl in the past that made her so wary. Although A.G. knew many things about the anime to love R.U., he didn't really remember details like Run and Lala's past when the two were together. But whatever it was didn't matter. After finishing breakfast. It's Monday. So he, Lala, and Asia had to go to school, of course. Run. Wear this bracelet. It's the change change clothes con. With this, your clothes can automatically become school uniforms like me and Asia. Because previously Ren and Run were basically two people in one body when enrolling in school. Run could also be considered a student at Kyuahgaku in which he himself didn't know how to work. A.G. remembered Ria saying that the principal had been replaced a few weeks ago since that fat man named Coco or whatever was found dead in a park not far from the school. If I'm not mistaken, Coco or whatever was killed by the alien who was pretending to be the principal at the time. And the current principal was an unusual person. Rias had told him that the man who became the new principal knew about the supernatural because he was a witch. If it was a random witch, Rias and Sana certainly wouldn't let him become the principal of the school that was their territory. But that man, who was called Master Biblia slash Mr. Biblia turned out to be one of the human witches who came under contract with the House of Grimory. Perhaps because of the murder of the previous headmaster, Rhea said her father decided to put one of his acquaintances to be the headmaster of Kuahgakuan. When he first heard this information, Ag smiled and felt that this world still had enough entertainment waiting for him. Lala, what are you planning? Don't think I don't know you. Ah. Uh, no, why is this bracelet suddenly attached to my hand? The change change clothes con has a sensor to instantly attach to its owner in a distance of less than 5 meters. I adjusted the possession to recognize run after I took a DNA sample through your hair a few days ago. Lala said innocently. So you secretly pulled out my hair while I was unconscious. Un. Lala, you. Don't pull out people's hair carelessly. Also, how do I get this thing off? Ah. Uh, it's starting to glow. Am I going to get blown up this time? Run looked very panicked and frightened seeing Lala's invention attached to her right hand. She even thought she was going to be blown up. Really, this girl seems to have a traumatized past with Lala's tools. However, what the girl feared did not happen and the bracelet glowed only to change her outfit into a school uniform. Run breathed a sigh of relief seeing this. He he run, you're still as timid as ever. Lala giggled which made the light green haired girl have a red face from embarrassment and annoyance. Run pointed at the pink haired girl and started making fun of her with her limited vocabulary. Shut up, Lala. I don't want to hear that from the girl who used to prank me with her inventions in the past. You. Yeah, I will definitely take revenge. Lala seemed to be confused. She did not take Run seriously and smiled brightly. It made the light green haired girl seem even more annoyed because she was like punching cotton. I knew that. The two of them have a good relationship. As expected of childhood friends. They must have done these things a lot when they were kids. Un. Lala naturally nodded. We're not. Ag, can you stop misunderstanding? Run pouted, she looked at Lala's fiancé dissatisfiedly. But I didn't say anything? Run, did you hear me say something? Ag pretended to be confused. Huh? Didn't you intentionally? Run wanted to say she could hear his inner voice. But she can't, such a thing was impossible to do which made the girl confused. Lala who understood what was going on giggled. Asia smiled as she also understood what was happening. However, neither of them had any intention of explaining anything to run. It's already over seven. We should leave for school soon so we won't be late. Ag said to the girls and everyone nodded. Even run, she followed him, Lala, and Asia walking to school. Although run wondered what was really going on. She of course agreed to go to school with them in her school uniform and school bag. These things were given to her by Lala. She was reluctant to admit, but she was secretly grateful to the pink-haired girl for her help. At least, this time Lala was not as wild as before where she would always make her suffer with her inventions. She knew the pink-haired girl did not do it on purpose, but it was hard to forget the things the girl and Ren had done to her in the past. Walking while glancing at the houses and pink leaf trees on the side of the road. Run had to admit that this planet called Earth was more beautiful than her home planet or even the other planets she had visited. Even so, 
At this time she also began to worry and wonder why Ren no longer took over her body. After breakfast earlier, she even sneezed. However, after that Ren didn't even take over her body. It made her dumbfounded and she certainly couldn't help but worry. At this moment, when she saw Eiji joking with Lala while walking. Again she heard the boy's inner voice which surprised her this time. Now Ren must be starting to worry about her brother, Ren. After breakfast this morning, she even deliberately tickled her own nose as if to make herself sneeze. As a time traveler, and one who knows the plot of the original work. I know what Ren did was to exchange bodies with Ren. But what a pity. She doesn't seem to know that Ren is already separated from her. I wanted to explain this earlier, but since the girl never asked what exactly happened. I didn't tell her and let her see Ren at school. I remember in the original work, Ren and even Ren wanted to be able to have each other's bodies. I had granted it a week ago. To save Ren from the protagonist Rito who deliberately wanted to kiss Ren to make her fall in love with him. Before Ren was kissed by Rito. I separated Ren from Ren using my magic. Although at that time Ren was unconscious and needed time to wake up. Now that she is awake, I wonder how she will react after knowing she now has her own body. Ren stopped walking. She looked at the back of Eiji who was walking with Lala and Asia with shock in her eyes. That's right. She did forget to ask why she was even in Eiji's house and woke up in Lala's discovery. So the reason was because of that. After what happened earlier. She was sure Eiji didn't even know his inner voice could be heard. It made her sure that Eiji was at least not a bad person. No, he was actually a good person who had granted wishes all this time. Want to have your own body. She didn't expect Eiji to have secretly separated herself and Ren using his magic. Although she didn't really understand about magic. But she knew that magic really existed. Her good impression of Eiji immediately increased sharply. She felt Eiji was a hero who had finally come for her. However, that hero already had a fiancé which now made her very uncomfortable. That was right. Eiji was Lala's fiancé. Lala again. Why did that girl always get what she wanted? Run wasn't sure, but she knew she was now very jealous of Lala. But put that aside for now because she wonders what Rito's protagonist is. Eiji says he separated herself from Ren because he wanted to save her from that guy named Rito. Rito seems to want to make her fall in love with him by kissing Ren which might have an effect on her or something. Run certainly didn't 100% believe what Eiji said. Although she had a good impression of the white-haired boy. She still had to confirm if what he said was true. First, she had to see if Ren was really at school and his body was completely separated from hers. Glancing at Ren silently and seeing the girl starting to catch up with them while looking at him in a different way than before. Eiji smiled. This girl caught his bait. Next. Rito, I'm counting on you. Host, you seem pretty sure Rito will slap himself. Hearing what Miss System said. Honestly if he could, Eiji wanted to stare at that woman flatly. Who are you doubting anyway? Miss System. Watch and see. Oh, and don't forget to make the protagonist's inner voice online. Dash. When the lunch break bell at school finally rang. Rito was excited, but he was also confused. Why? It was because this morning after he and Ren had their usual fight because the rumor about them spread and became a hot topic of conversation for more than a week at school. He had tried to explain many times to Ren that the person behind the rumors about them was Eiji. That sneaky bastard had somehow gotten a picture of him and Ren in the alley. Although Ren also seemed to have animosity towards Eiji, but she was also hostile towards him because of what he did to him a week ago. But this wasn't about that. What excited and confused him was that the young green-haired girl had finally appeared. My name is Ren Elsie Jewel Raya. I'm Ren's sister. Please take care of me everyone. Oh. Finally. Although I don't know why there are so many transfer students in our class. I'm glad the transfer student this time is a pretty girl. Hooray. I'm so happy to be in this class. Ignoring the other excited boys, especially his friend, Kenichi. At that time he was also happy that Ren had finally appeared. But that confused him. He glanced at Ren, the boy was in his seat and he was also looking at Ren with surprise and excitement on his face. But that wasn't it. That's not what's important here. Since when have Ren and Ren been separated and have their own bodies? This. Isn't this too soon? I remember Ren and Ren could only separate after they were adults. At over 18 years old to be exact. There are still a few months before they reach adulthood. But why them? It doesn't matter. Whatever it is, what matters now is that Ren has appeared and she's also still in the same class with me as in previous life. After I did that to Ren a week ago. Ren, come look at me with a loving gaze. Throw yourself at me and kiss me. I know you love me. Ren looked confused. 
she looked around and looked at him with a frown. Now it was his turn to be confused. Run. Run, don't you love me? Hmm. I see. Run in this life is definitely more shy than run in her previous life. Don't worry run. I can wait when we're in a quiet place later. We can kiss and make out there without anyone knowing. I won't reject you in this life like I did in the last one. At that moment, he felt Yui and Harana staring at him. Yui, Harana. Hi, did you guys do your homework? I. Humph. Yui snorted in disgust. Harana just gave him a flat look and stared ahead again while ignoring him. Putting Yui aside because he knew that bitch was already Aji's woman. But Harana. Damn. Lately Harana is getting colder to me. Even though I've been trying to please her all week. That girl has become very difficult to persuade. Harana, I won't give up on you. You are mine, but right now I will focus on catching Run first hehe. He. Not knowing why. Harana turned to him again and this time looked at him more coldly and there was a strong disgust in her eyes. Why? I didn't do anything. Why is that girl suddenly looking at him worse than before? Also. Run, he also saw her giving him a disgusted look. That bastard, Eiji was even looking at him while laughing as if he was a clown. Eiji. You bastard. Do you also want to snatch Run from me? Too bad you won't be able to do it this time. Run is already in love with me. Ha ha ha. Finally at least I can beat you for the first time. A.G. stopped laughing and just looked at him amusedly at that moment. He was confused. He clenched his fists under the table with anger welling up in his heart. He felt like A.G. was planning something bad again. No, it shouldn't be, right? Considering what happened this morning in class. Although Rito felt that the situation was somewhat wrong and not what he expected. But he shook his head. No, no. I'm sure it will go the way I want. After all... I'm the only one who knows the mechanism to make Run instantly fall in love with someone. Rito muttered. He was currently walking in the school hallway. Because it was school break time where students usually went to the cafeteria or ate their lunch at the beautiful places in the school. He did so with a bento in hand that his younger sister had prepared for him. Mikan's attitude towards him had also been a bit strange lately. Although she still looked the same, Mikan often kept her distance from him which confused him. He arrived at the school garden area where there was a large green lawn. Some trees were planted randomly with tables and chairs underneath. Many students were eating and chatting there. They were with their respective groups of course. The reason he came here was of course because of Run. He saw that Run and Ren seemed to want to talk about something while having lunch here. So he was here to find them. Oh. There they are. Run, Ren, hello. Walking over. Right under one of the trees. He saw Ren and Run who seemed to be having a nice chat. Yuaki Rito. Why are you here? Get away from me and run. Ren looked at Rito who suddenly came with an unfriendly look. Rito smiled confidently and inexplicably glanced at Run who was eating melon bread. Run. Look at your brother, he's not very friendly to his classmate. I just wanted to say hello and maybe join you for lunch. Shouldn't you say something? Because Run is in love with me just like in the previous life. I know Run is a very obsessive girl and she is very crazy about me. Seeing her brother scolding me. She will definitely scold Ren and kick him out so she can be alone with me. Rito was already laughing in his heart, but he was stunned that the girl who loved him so much and was crazy about him in his previous life said. You're Yuaki Rito, our classmate. Run asked. Just kidding. There's nothing wrong. Run must be deeply in love with him. Yes. Run, you can call me Rito. No need to be so polite. Rito was very happy and patted his chest with one hand. He looked proud which made Ren even more upset. Don't talk to him Run. This boy is not a good person. Looking at Ren. His future brother-in-law pointed at his face. Rito didn't get angry. He smiled kindly at the boy. To make Run even more crazy about him. You must have a good relationship with her family members. Past grudges. Forget it. At least on the surface, he must have a good relationship with Ren in front of Run, right? Ren frowned at the friendly smile on Rito's face as he looked at him while stealing a glance at Run. Pretend. Yuaki Rito pretends to be friendly to her to get close to Run. What an asshole. He won't let that boy succeed. Run stared at the boy with brown hair and brown eyes in front of her. Her expression was neutral, but her gaze contained confusion. Was this the protagonist Rito that Eiji was referring to? She could hear his inner voice just like Eiji. She also certainly heard what Rito said from the morning in his inner voice and before. Although she was not a genius like Lala, she could deduce from the inner voices of Eiji and even Rito that she heard. Eiji was a time traveler. 
he was a person from another world who seemed to know many things about the future because he knew the original work. Rito is the protagonist of the original work who seems to have come from the future or something because he keeps mentioning his previous life. In his previous life, she seemed to be in love with Rito and was crazy about him after that boy kissed Ren. As for her? She is unsure of who she is in the original work to the point that protagonist pursues her and wants to make her fall in love with him. She was confused, she wanted to say something, but at this moment Eiji's voice was heard. What is this girl doing? She looked dazed and confused as she stared at Rito. Are you affected protagonist's halo? Surprising. This is the first time I've seen a heroine actually affected by protagonist's halo. Run is over. She will definitely become a brainless heroine like in the original work who was infatuated with and fawning over protagonist. Heroine. Okay, so she's a heroine. But, Eiji. Who are you calling brainless and will suck up to the protagonist? Although she had a good impression of Eiji. It didn't mean she wouldn't take offense to hearing someone mock her. Run got up from the lawn chair and looked around for the boy with white hair and red eyes. The boy seemed to be watching her somewhere and she would find him. Run, what's wrong? Run, do you want to move to a quieter place? Come on. Ren's question was fine. However, Rito. This is it. The shy Run in this life must have wanted to take me to a quiet place to talk about love. Ah ha ha As expected of Run. She's still as crazy about me as she was in previous life. Disgusting. Who's crazy about you? Run was annoyed. She of course knew this boy named Yuaki Rito was targeting her. She was even willing to kiss her brother just to make her suddenly fall in love with him. Using such methods to make a girl fall in love. That's disgusting. Run did not have a good impression on this so-called protagonist. How can this boy be the protagonist? Sure enough. Run was completely affected by protagonist Rito's halo. Eiji, can you stop misunderstanding? This guy keeps misunderstanding her. But hearing Eiji's misunderstanding, Run somehow panicked. She walked forward as if looking for the boy's figure in this vast park filled with students. She heard Ren and Rito chasing her and kept asking where she was going. These people were starting to get really annoying. Found him. Run's eyes lit up. She finally found Eiji who was apparently sitting on a certain park bench. But she frowned at the beautiful red-haired girl sitting next to him. The two of them seemed to be having lunch together. Eiji whose location was discovered by Run. He pretended to be surprised, even to the point of making Rias who was sitting next to him almost drop her omelet. Why is Run suddenly coming to me? Crazy, aren't you affected by the protagonist's halo? His. I don't want anything to do with the heroine being mesmerized by the protagonist. Huss. Huss. Don't come here, don't disturb my lunch with my girlfriend. Dash. A slash N. If you want to read 7 advanced chapters with a faster update frequency than the web novel, you can read it on my Patreon whose link is below. HTTPS slash slash www.patreon.com slash doglicker. Replace A with A and search in your browser. By the way, don't forget to throw power stones and leave a review to motivate me, smiley face, comment. 43 comment. Vote. 0 left. Chapter 83, Conquest in less than a day thanks to the protagonist. This man. Did he chase her away with his inner voice? Run stopped her steps for a moment, she hesitated. But when she heard that the red-haired girl was his girlfriend. Snort. The more she thought about it, the more angry she felt. She didn't know where that anger came from. But whatever it was. Isn't A.G. Lala's fiancé? Then why is he dating another girl? Arriving in front of the two. A.G. Run? What's wrong? Have you had lunch yet? If you want, let's eat together. Inside he sounded reluctant, but on the surface he didn't seem to mind. If Run could not hear his inner voice, she would definitely be fooled by his acting skills. A.G. immediately patted the left side of his seat with a friendly smile. Because the seat was a long chair type with one table in front of it. Three people should be able to sit there. By the way sitting to his right was of course Rias who happened to have lunch with him today. The crimson haired girl made a bento for him which certainly made him happy. Uh, that. Run hesitated. Actually the reason she went to A.G. was only because she didn't want the boy to misunderstand her relationship with the protagonist. Rito kept trying to get close to her which annoyed her and she wanted to run away from him. And there was also Ren, she was fine with the boy because previously she was also quite happy to be able to confirm that the two of them really had each other's bodies. Knowing this, she naturally felt even more grateful to A.G. and wondered how she could repay his kindness. Your A.G.'s classmate called Run, right? I'm Rias Gremory. Let's eat together. Incidentally, the bento I made is enough for three people. 
as a young lady of the extremely wealthy house of Gremory in the underworld. Rias's daily bento slash lunch boxes were very luxurious and the portions were always generous. Although she was not a footy, and she often shared her bento with her peerage. Today was special, she did not allow the servants in her house to make the bento as usual as she was the one cooking all the western dishes mixed with Japanese on the table for her boyfriend. Her cooking skills were arguably good and Aji a few minutes ago had also praised the dishes she made which made her happy of course. As for Run's arrival? It didn't bother her. She knew who the light green haired girl was from Aji's inner voice and she welcomed her. She was a little touched that Aji even wanted to chase away the heroine named Run so as not to disturb their lunch time together. She decided to help Aji by persuading Run to join them. After all, wasn't it bad to let one of the heroine fall into the hands of the protagonist? Besides, Run didn't seem to be completely mesmerized by the protagonist's halo. If Aji knew what Rias was thinking right now, he would have to say that the girl's brain circuitry was amazing. Although he deliberately feigned reluctance to play hardball in Run's conquest plan, he didn't expect the girl to make help him without him asking. Run did not expect the girl named Rias Gremory to take the initiative to invite her to eat together. She hesitated, she. See? She must be reluctant to eat with me who is basically another man. She's already mesmerized by the protagonist's halo anyway. Heroine who is already mesmerized by the protagonist's halo tends to find other men unworthy and extremely disgusting as if they are unable to rival the protagonist's toenails. Rias Gremory. Okay, Rias. You seem to already know me from Aji. Since you invited me, I won't hesitate. Run immediately sat on the other side of Aji and snorted at the boy who pretended to be friendly, but inside kept making fun of her that she was fascinated by the protagonist's halo. Who's reluctant to eat with you? Who's mesmerized by protagonist? Here are the chopsticks, Run. You're free to eat any of them. Rias took out new chopsticks out of nowhere and gave them to the light green haired girl. Thank you. You're welcome. Seeing the crimson haired girl smiling and being so kind. Run felt that this girl was very kind. Wait, she felt she was forgetting something. A.G. said that girl was his girlfriend, she remembered she was planning to ask about. Run. Run. What are you doing? Stay away from that boy. Ren and Rito who were originally chasing Run naturally caught up. Seeing Run suddenly join to eat with the other group, they were dumbfounded. But not because of that, they were stunned because in that group there was also Eiji. This was certainly not the first time Ren had met Eiji. Since a few days ago, he had met Lala's fiancé and he had certainly challenged him many times to get the other party to break his engagement with Lala. Details later, because right now. When Rito saw Run sitting next to Eiji, he was angry. And when he saw the crimson-haired girl who was actually the most beautiful girl in the third year. He was so jealous. Why does this bastard have so many beautiful girls around him? It's not fair. And more importantly, why did Run suddenly join to eat with that bastard? Although he felt everything was starting to go wrong. He tried not to think about it because he was sure Run loved him. After all, he had activated her hidden mechanism. It had to be Eiji. That bastard must be trying to trick Run or threaten her into sitting next to him. Yo, Rito, Ren. Eiji looked around as if searching for something and looked at the two with a funny look. There are no more seats available here. So you guys can sit somewhere else. You. Rito wanted to say something, but someone interrupted him. Eiji Ceea. Not only do you have Lala as your fiancé, but you're also fooling around with other girls. Even with my sister too. Damn it, you're not worthy of Lala. Lala must have been cheated by you. Ren, the boy who fell in love with Lala started raving about this kind of thing and it wasn't the first time. Rito who heard Ren nodded. As expected of his future brother-in-law. He looked at Eiji, especially Ren and if I'm not mistaken Rias Gremory arrogantly as if to say look, Eiji Ceea is a bastard. Leave him and go with me. Rias frowned, she wondered should she blow up the two boys who said bad things to her boyfriend. But feeling the arm that held her under the table, she remained silent and watched. Cheating Lala? Ren, I think you misunderstood. Lala herself allowed me to get a lot of sisters for her. She wanted a big family, so I granted her request. The meaning was clear. The sisters in question are women who are his lovers and will become part of his harem. And also. Ren, as a man, you should be manly. Lala likes men like me. You're the one who kept blabbing about childhood promises that Lala doesn't even remember. How can a man like you make a girl fall in love? Hearing this, Ren widened his eyes. He felt an arrow being thrown and directly pierced his chest making him clutch his chest. He took a few steps back and looked at Eiji with doubt for all his actions so far. Are oh, really? I'm not man enough? If I become manly. K. 
Can Lala fall in love with me? Ren? You seriously believe what Eiji said? Just now Rito felt that he had found his partner to face an evil devil like Eiji. But in just a few seconds after that, he lost his partner. He certainly wanted to say something to prevent Ren from being tricked by Eiji, but his body was frozen and he couldn't move his mouth. This familiar power. He glared at Eiji because he knew that bastard did it. Eiji ignored Rito who was glaring at him. He dealt with Ren first with Tok no Jutsu. After all, he was practically his future brother-in-law and of course he had compassion. Especially when this situation happened in front of Run. Forget Lala. But if you want to be so manly, you should be able to make many girls fall in love with you easily. How? How? Easy. Take this. Out of nowhere, he took out a book with a muscular man on the cover and handed it to Ren. Rias and Run. Putting Run aside since she was new to Earth, but Rias who knew what the book was was dumbfounded. Her boyfriend had a unique way of dealing with people. His way was gentle, yet at the same time malicious. She liked it. Rito who saw the book in Ren's hand looked at the boy as if he wanted to say Ren, you're being tricked. That book. That book. Too bad in the end it was just a stare. Ren didn't even notice his gaze and stared at the book in his hand with sparkling eyes as if seeing a treasure. He looked at Eiji who was supposed to be his rival, but he helped him. He was a little touched, especially when he saw the boy giving him a thumbs up. His eyes were a little wet. Maybe Eiji CEO wasn't that bad. Ren. Study the contents of this book and try to be manly. That way, you'll have no trouble making a girl fall in love with you. A.G. Ceea, why are you so nice to me? Aren't we rivals? A.G. refrained from rolling his eyes. Rival. Love rival. Fart. He didn't even consider the other party a threat. Lala already loved him so much, there was no way she would be moved by a boy like Ren. If not for Ren being Ren's brother. He would have dealt with Ren in a faster way. So he smiled and said, Rivals. Maybe. But aren't we also classmates? It's natural for classmates to help each other. Ren clenched his fists. Feeling very moved. Agcea, he's such a good person. He's. He's not that bad for Lala. Even so, he also wouldn't give up and held the book in his hand tightly. Agcea. No, Ag. I understand. I will study the contents of this book and practice it. I won't give up on Lala and I will be a worthy rival for you. Saying that, he immediately turned around to read the book in his hand somewhere. Looking at Ren's back that gradually disappeared, A.G. already didn't care about that boy anymore. Rias. Run. The latter felt complicated. She seemed to understand Ren was tricked by A.G., especially after hearing what Rito's inner voice said. That book, I don't know what it contains. Is it something dangerous? That book contains how to build bodybuilder muscles and what exercises people should do to gain those muscles within one month. It contained high-level muscle training. Ren wouldn't die, at most he would be exhausted. It depends on how determined he is to train. There was also vomiting of blood, but he didn't mention it. Hearing this, Run let out a sigh of relief. If that's all, it should be fine. At first she was a little worried that Eiji would do cruel things to her brother. If that happened, she didn't know what to do because after all, it was Ren who provoked Eiji first by trying to pursue his fiancée, Lala. Besides, Eiji was also the one who had helped her. The three of them continued eating after Ren's departure. Eiji, also try the courage that I made. Rias behaved like a kind and considerate girlfriend. She raised her chopsticks to feed Eiji. Um, this is really good. Rias, I think you can become a chef at a five-star restaurant with this level of cooking skills. Fufu really? Yes. Anno. Run wanted to say something. I mean, can't these people stop teasing each other? She who was sitting right next to them felt that the delicious food she was eating was bitter. She was jealous. She certainly now understood why Eiji was dating Rias without worrying about Lala. After all, the pink-haired girl seemed to have given Eiji permission to have many women. In that case, wasn't she also? Eiji. Eiji. Have you tried Rias fried fish? It's also very good. Rias smiled. Not like a jealous girlfriend seeing another girl wanting to feed her boyfriend. She didn't, she nodded slightly at Run as if she was supporting her. Run who received approval from Rias was very happy. Rias, she's so good. However. Is this girl crazy? Don't you see the protagonist is still standing right in front of us and glaring at us? Of course I'm not afraid of Rito. Even if there are 1000 Rito in front of me. But Run. What's wrong with you? Aren't you already the protagonist Rito's dog licker? How can you feed another man in front of Rito? 
you'll make Rito angry and green. Even though she doesn't understand what green is. But making Rito angry because she fed Eiji. Who cares? She has nothing to do with the protagonist. This was a good opportunity to make Eiji understand that she wasn't fascinated by anything the protagonist had. Here. Run, I guess I don't. Before Eiji finished his words, Run moved her chopsticks and put the fried fish meat into his mouth. Rito who had been ignored all this time. Of course he was angry. But that was nothing compared to seeing Run with a bright smile feeding Eiji using her chopsticks. Because Eiji was still holding back his movements using his power. Only his expression became ugly and his face had a green illusion. Run. No. What are you doing? Don't you love me? I've activated the hidden mechanism to make you fall in love with me. So why? The heroines on server 1. Ah. This. It's the old song of the protagonist who sees things not going the way he thought. In addition, this protagonist is never tired of continuing to provoke Eiji again and again and ending in failure. These protagonists never learn from experience, do they? Run looked at Rito whose eyes were reddened with an ugly expression, yet his body continued to stand there. She didn't know why the boy didn't even move and continued to stand still there. But whatever it was, she would prove to Eiji that she had nothing to do with Rito. Eiji. Try this. This. Try this. This, this, and this. Eiji who continued to be fed various dishes by Run. He made a helpless expression and chewed while looking at Rito with a smile in his eyes. Rito who noticed his gaze roared again in his heart. Damn it. Damn it. Eiji. You. Ah ha ha ha. Although I don't know why Run isn't affected by protagonist's halo. Well, it seems I misunderstood before. Run is not mesmerized by protagonist. As proof, right now she's feeding me vigorously. Yes. Yes. I'm not mesmerized by protagonist. Do you finally understand? Run was happy and satisfied to hear that this guy finally stopped misunderstanding. She wondered if this was enough. However, I will not let my guard down. Why? This man is too wary of her. I won't let my guard down. Who knows Run is actually pretending to approach me because Rito told her to and when I let my guard down she might stab me in the back with knife. Rias wondered if last night Eiji had just watched a movie where a woman stabbed a man in the back. Looking at Run who looked confused. She knew the girl also seemed to hear an inner voice. She decided to help the girl by giving her a clue. Muak. Eiji who was secretly laughing in his heart, he was dumbfounded that his crimson-haired girlfriend suddenly understood him so much and suddenly kissed him in front of Run and Rito. A-H-H. Why is a girl as beautiful as Rhea Senpai also crazy about Eiji? I don't understand. But Run, you wouldn't do the same thing with that girl, right? You love me. You wouldn't be willing to kiss a bastard like Eiji. Very good. Eiji silently gave a thumbs up to Rias in his heart. And Rito, you fool. Run was probably confused at first and was just jealous to see me being kissed by Rias. But you happened to ask that question. Isn't that the same as giving Run an idea? Run clenched her slender fists under the table. Her cheeks were flushed, but there was a determination in her gaze to enter the fire pit. That's what Rito saw and he panicked. No. No. Run, please. Don't do that. You can't kiss. Muak. A-H-H. Why run? I've activated the hidden mechanism. Why is it not effective at all? Why didn't Run fall in love with me over in previous life? Why did she kiss Eiji just because she saw another girl do it? Rito's heart hurt like a needle and he felt like he had lost something again for the umpteenth time. He felt his head become heavier than before as if a weight had been added on top of his head. The girl who in his previous life loved him so much and was so crazy about him, even more than Lala. Why? Why just like Lala and Yui? Why did Run also fall into Eiji's hands? Looking at Run who had finished giving her first kiss to that bastard and that bastard pretending to be confused. Run? Why did you suddenly kiss me? Although it was only on the cheek because Rias also did it on his cheek. Run's face turned red. She lowered her head slightly. I. That. That's my thank you for helping me by getting me separated from Ren. A week ago, I know you separated me from Ren before Ren was kissed by you Akirito. That's it? No. I I. I might like you too. The voice of the last part was small. But people like Eiji, Rias, and even Rito could certainly hear the girl's confession clearly. Protagonist Rito had a mental attack hearing what the girl said. Ah. He didn't understand and finally understood. How could Run not fall in love with him after he activated his hidden mechanism? It turned out to be because. Eiji. You again. You again. Why do you keep thwarting my every good deed? 
good deeds? Rico, you're so shameless. Making a girl fall in love with you in such a despicable way. You say that's a good deed? Not only Run and Rias. The other heroines who heard this also couldn't help but feel disgusted. Why are protagonists always like this? In certain junior high schools. It was in a classroom where a teacher was teaching math. Mikan who was sitting in her chair sighed at the voices in her head. Rito. What stupid thing are you doing? I told you to stop provoking Eiji, but you didn't listen to me at all. She muttered. Right, actually after finding out Eiji was the one she hit that time and Rito who warned her not to get in touch with that boy. She obeyed what Rito said like a good little sister who listened to her older brother's words. Rito was certainly happy at that time. However, she also warned Rito to stop looking for trouble with Eiji. Rito who heard this looked a little unhappy at the time. Although he agreed to her words, he didn't seem to take what she said seriously. And look. Not long after that. Exactly today, he was slapped again by Eiji and had a mental attack. Mikan, Mikan. While thinking about her older brother, suddenly her friend sitting next to her whispered to her. Can we play at your house after school? Besides playing, you said you have an older brother who is already in high school. We're interested in seeing him. What we meant were the classmates sitting to her left, right, and in front of her. To be precise, three girls who could be considered her friends. Um. Mikan hesitated to answer. But when she imagined what Rito would look like when he came home from school today, she shook her head at her friends. Sorry, maybe next time. My brother is not that cool and handsome. You better not be too excited to meet him. Otherwise, you'll be disappointed. Eh. Times three. The three girls who were Mikan's friends were confused. After all, they remembered a week ago. At that time Mikan often talked about her older brother. Although this week she had stopped talking about her older brother. They couldn't help but be curious about Mikan's older brother. If Mikan knew what her three friends were thinking. She would have sighed. Because why not? If it had been Rito a few weeks ago it would have been fine, but Rito now seemed more and more strange. He seemed more and more perverted which made her worry if she brought friends to play at her house. She was worried that Rito would do something crazy. She was just worried, okay. Better to prevent than to regret. Dash. A slash N, if you want to read 7 advanced chapters with a faster update frequency than the web novel, you can read it on my Patreon whose link is below. HTTPS slash slash www.patreon.com slash doglicker. Replace A with A and search in your browser. By the way, don't forget to throw power stones and leave a review to motivate me, smiley face, comment. 46 comment. Vote. 0 left. Chapter 84, Race Promotion. This was the first time Ron confessed to a man. She's very nervous and worried right now, especially when the guy she likes is her childhood friend's fiancé. Just because she knew he was actually building a harem, she had the courage to confess to him in front of the other women he had. Ron felt herself to be too impulsive, she regretted, even though she had only known the guy for a few hours since she woke up. Isn't this too soon? But. But, she really liked that guy after finding out he was her hero who had given her the thing she wanted the most. She ignored Rito who made a growling sound, and just stared at the white-haired boy nervously. A.G. didn't expect the Run Conquest plan to succeed this quickly. He thought he needed to do a few more tricks to get Run's heart, but it worked this fast. You forgot Run in the original work was also Easy Girl. Even so. And you have a cheating Halo harem. Sometimes A.G. always wondered if the harem Halo was really above his head. He couldn't see it but right now it must be shining brightly, right? The proof was in Run's gaze, she looked at him with 20 points of nervousness, 70 points of love, and 10 points of embarrassment. But suddenly her shyness increased and the girl said, Verwa. A.G., forget what I said before. I. I. Sure, if Run wants to. Why don't you become my girlfriend? Run is very pretty, she has cute light green hair, and beautiful violet eyes. If such a beautiful girl likes me, how could I refuse? It's just that I'm worried I'm not a good guy for having so many women. Yes, I want to. Run didn't finish what she said before, right now her brain was filled with love again and shame was thrown away somewhere. Especially after hearing Aji's inner voice praising how beautiful she was and he wanted her. He <laughs> he. As for his worries about having many women? From the beginning she already knew Aji had a harem, especially after seeing Rias. Huh, are you sure? You might regret it. I have a lot of women. Besides Lala and Rias, I also still have a few other women. That many? Run blinked her eyes. Don't. Run. You can't be one of his women. Ajceia is definitely a bastard. 
instead of him, why don't you choose me? I haven't had a woman in this life, although I also plan to have more women, but... Protagonist Rita. Aren't you just the same? The heroines, even Run and Rias rolled their eyes at the boy. So far A.G. was indeed not a good guy because he had many women. But if you have to choose between A.G. and the protagonists. Many of them prefer A.G. Why? Putting aside the appearance issue because not all heroin know what A.G. and the protagonists look like. But from the inner voice of those people, they could tell who was better. The protagonists are always thinking of disgusting things and are not like protagonists at all. Whereas A.G. Although he was also a pervert at times, his inner voice revealed the good things he did to help the heroines. The heroines who had been helped by A.G.'s inner voice, how could they not be interested in A.G.? Even though the boy didn't ask for it, many of them were trying to get close to him with various reasons to get close to him. This was just like Run, the girl fell in love with A.G. just because she knew the boy had helped solve her problems. Run was a little hesitant at first, but heard Rito's inner voice comparing himself to A.G. She was even more encouraged and felt that A.G. was at least better than the protagonist she liked in the original work. So the answer was clear. She looked at A.G. gently in front of Rito who looked on the verge of having a mental attack. No. No. Don't run. Don't tell me you're going to. I won't regret it. A.G., I like you, I want to be one of your women. But are Lala and the other women okay with me? Instead of answering, A.G. took out an object that Run knew was one of Lala's inventions called D-Dial. He saw the man calling Lala and immediately asked if it was okay to include her in his harem. Sure. It would be great if Ron joins our family and becomes my sister. Lala on the other side of the phone sounded excited. A.G. closed the D-dial, put it back in his pocket and looked at her. See? No problem. Rias, you don't mind either, right? He turned to the crimson-haired girl and she nodded lightly while smiling at her. I don't mind. I welcome Ron to be one of my sisters. Hearing this, what else could Ron doubt? She smiled brightly which made Rito who was watching from the side keep growling like crazy. His inner voice was very noisy, but Ron ignored it. S so. Am I now one of your girlfriends? Yes, you're my girlfriend now. A.G. pulled her onto his lap and kissed her in front of everyone, including Rito. The other students who were also eating in the school garden, many of them certainly saw this and they seemed quite noisy. Some felt sour, envious, clapped their hands as if congratulating, and there were also those who gossiped. Rumors about them were bound to spread throughout the school soon. A.G., Run, and Rias didn't care about that kind of thing. But Rito? As Run was mesmerized by the feel of her lips being kissed by A.G., she glanced at Rito in the corner of her eye and she saw the boy vomiting blood and fainting with a roar-like inner voice. Run. Run. Why? Why you, how could you let A.G. see Ia kiss you? How dare you kiss that bastard in front of my eyes? You bitch. Damn it. Damn it. A.G. see Ia. You. Cough, cough ugh. Everyone saw Rito vomiting blood and he collapsed on the grass. The grass was the same green color as the person himself. A.G. asked the other students who were there to take Rito to the school medical room before pulling Run and Rias away to return to their respective classes. No one talked about Rito after that. On the way, Rias said she wanted to stay at A.G.'s house and Run who heard this certainly didn't want to lose. A.G. I want to come too. Now that you mention it. Run, do you live with your brother? Uh, that's. Run now remembered. Since she and Ren were now separated, she wasn't sure if under normal circumstances she would live with Ren. For some reason, she felt a little uncomfortable living with a man who was the same age as her. Even though Ren was her brother, she and Ren were actually talking to each other normally for the first time today since they had their own bodies now. And actually it was a bit awkward, she felt that living with Ren would also make her uncomfortable. I don't know. A.G., do you think I should buy a new house? Instead of buying a new house, why don't you live in my house? There are many empty rooms there. A.G. proposed this and he saw Run's eyes light up. Dash. In a bedroom. After coming home from school where he woke up in the school medical room. Rito who was healing himself because of the mental attack he received at school. Again he. Puffed. He suddenly vomited blood. Sitting cross-legged on his bed, his already gloomy expression grew grimmer and his face turned pale. He suddenly clutched his chest as he felt his heart ache for no reason. This pain was familiar as it was the same feeling every time he saw the woman who should have loved him like in his previous life loving another man. Lala, you eat, run. Why? What's so good about AGCEA? Ugh. Damn, why do I feel like something is going on with those girls? He didn't even understand why he was vomiting blood. Gritting his teeth, 
he tried to focus on meditating again. What was he meditating for? It was to stimulate and cultivate his void dragon bloodline to make it thicker and stronger. Fortunately, he still remembered this method from his previous life and he could use it in this life as well. Although the process was much slower unless he could do it in that place. His void dragon bloodline needed more evolution for him to become as strong as he was in his previous life as the galactic king. In this universe, there was such a thing as the void system. The void system was a rare evolutionary chain that was difficult to obtain, even for the powerhouse beings out there. If it wasn't for the fact that in his previous life he was lucky enough to connect with Lala, he would not have been able to grow into the strongest galactic king in history in just one year. That was why compared to other women. Lala was very important to him. Even if she was with another man now, he would not give up. The many green hats on his head would not make him give up. Rito clenched his fists with determination in his eyes. The protagonist mentality was starting to rise again. For now. I'd better focus on increasing my strength first. At least until it's enough to defeat Eiji. It doesn't matter if Lala, Yui, Run, or even the others are with Eiji. When I have recovered my power, I will definitely snatch them from that bastard. Thinking of this, Rito giggled, he began to fantasize about the beautiful future before focusing again on meditating. He did not even notice the presence of his younger sister standing outside the door of his room. It was Mikan who heard her brother's shout when she was about to get something on the second floor. She sighed. Rito still wants to provoke Eiji. Gosh, what kind of mental steel. Honestly if she could he wanted to stop Rito, but how? She didn't know. On the other side. Just like the protagonist Rito who was trying to increase his power. Protagonist Issei was also doing the same thing. But unlike Rito, he is increasing his power in the underworld, in a place recommended by someone. That someone, to the surprise of Rhea's older brother, Sertsk's Lucifer. Although he did not know why Sertsk was helping him, he would not refuse another party that was at least on his side. With Sertsk's help, Issei had regained his confidence to get Rhea's and the others. Cough, cough. But he did not know why. While he was busy fantasizing about getting Rias and the others and stepped on Eiji's face. He suddenly coughed up blood. His heart felt like it was pierced by something and he felt this pain was familiar. A-H-H. A-H-H. What happened? Calm down partner. I see your body condition is fine. Said the red dragon who had not long ago finally returned online. The seal that Eiji had previously installed had disappeared by itself. His guess was right. He was somehow able to regain his power. The protagonist's intuition was never wrong. Issei mocked Eiji when it happened of course. But while he was busy increasing his power with the things Sertsk gave him. Cough, his future brother-in-law and Druag. Besides he suddenly vomited blood. There was also a feeling as if something was missing from him. This feeling was very uncomfortable and disrupted his concentration on improving his power. Even so, he tried to ignore the uncomfortable feelings and focus on training. The two protagonists were completely unaware of Eiji having fun with their heroines. If they had known, they definitely wouldn't have been able to train that night. That was why a certain philosopher once said that ignorance sometimes works in one's favor. It doesn't matter if you know it or not. It depends on what you are missing. One can be temporarily happy and regret it later. In the morning, Eiji woke up in the arms of the fragrant women, and he stretched his body comfortably. Good morning world. Good morning Miss System. Good morning my host. Did you have a good night? Don't talk so politely to me. I feel a little horrible. Hey you're the one who suddenly started talking in that style. Here it is, my system that shouts sounds more fun. Miss System decided to ignore this person. Looking around, AG smiled as if seeing a very beautiful scenery. This view, this would definitely make many men out there envious, especially the protagonists like Issei and Rito. Rias hugged his waist and pressed her voluptuous breasts against his chest, Run hugged his arm, Lala lay on his stomach, Asia hugged his leg, and Kurika hugged his other leg. He was hugged as if he was a big teddy bear, all five girls had disheveled hair, and they had the image of a goddess sleeping soundly after doing battle. A long battle from night to morning. Very tired. Just kidding. They were all actually just watching a Netflix movie in his room last night. Although he wanted to do this and that with the girls, especially Rias who seemed to want to stay over at his house to do perverted things. But there was Run and he felt it was too soon to do it with the light green-haired girl. Rias reluctantly gave in, and Lala proposed to watch a movie together. Everyone. Why don't we watch a movie in Eiji's room? A movie? Lala, I agree. Let's do it. Run was excited, she was wearing the same light green pajamas as her hair. Rias rubbed her chin and proposed a movie at that time. 
by the way she and even all the other ladies at that time were wearing pajamas according to their respective hair colors. Which made him want to laugh because it looked a little funny. If it's a movie, how about we watch a horror movie? Arius, why don't we watch an alien movie? Lala seemed to want to watch an alien movie. Alien. Rius didn't seem to like that genre much, she preferred watching horror movies. Yeah, why don't we watch both? It's a long night, we can watch a lot of movies together. The one who said that was Kurika who had just come home and taken a bath after spending time at her younger sister's house. That woman must have told him that she had recently been teaching Konako how to use senjutsu and other things that she was capable of. She seemed excited for that. That was good, he was happy to see his woman happy. Gosh, I'm too soft. I agree with Kurika. Let's just watch all the movies you want. All the girls nodded and were excited at that moment. By the way I also want to watch the latest Godzilla. So let's watch that first before watching anything else. Although everyone did not seem to like Godzilla very much, they followed him, some of them giving him funny looks. Which he ignored because what was wrong? There was nothing wrong for a boy to like Godzilla, right? That city destroying lizard monster looks cool. And they actually watched the movie all night that time without doing anything raunchy. While it's unfortunate, it's also fun. But if they really did, A.G. could already imagine that night would be so brutal that it made this room a mess, the blankets were torn, the curtains were torn, it had a lot of liquid marks, and the smell of love fluids wafted quite strongly, especially on the girls' bodies which had a lot of hickeys, bite marks, and his own body even had them. Not only did he become a wolf last night, even these girls became female wolves who wanted to eat meat. What a beautiful morning. It's a pity Sana didn't join last night as she seemed to be busy doing something in the underworld. He certainly hadn't forgotten one of his fiancés with glasses, okay. She had invited the girl to stay at his house with the others which meant obviously. The girl was originally excited to come stay at his house, but he suddenly received a call from her parents and reluctantly couldn't come. But that's okay, A.G. wouldn't force a girl to come with him if she really couldn't. Besides, judging from the voice of the person who called Sana. It seemed like there was quite a serious problem in the underworld that required Citri's heir to return to the underworld. Speaking of the underworld, A.G. just remembered he seemed to have some things he needed to do there. Just like in the human world, in the underworld there should also be some uncaptured heroine. You're talking about heroine? I thought you remembered to meet your future in-laws. What Miss System said was right. Being too busy slapping the protagonists and capturing the heroines, I forgot to meet my future in-laws. What's that sound? He suddenly heard the sound of something downstairs. Looking at the wall clock, he saw that it was only 5 a.m. Maybe it was the newspaper delivery man? No, how could it be? It was coming from inside the house after all. To be precise, it sounded like E-I-E-I-E-I 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 So it's you. Picking up a small object on the table in the living room. It turned out to be an action figure with an alarm feature that looked like a little girl with golden eyes and silver hair in a ponytail in a plain white dress. She seemed to be holding a white pokeball-like ball in her hand. Very cute. A.G. wondered who bought this. Oh wait, he remembered that Lala ordered something online yesterday and she seemed to have bought this thing just for fun. By the way he teleported to the living room from his bedroom. He did not forget to put the five women who were hugging him like an octopus into a sleeping position, then covered them with a blanket. Seeing her host's gentle actions. Very considerate, but host. Aren't you planning to take a shower first? Snap. Snapping his fingers, she was now instantly seen wearing a black t-shirt, and new black Adidas trousers. He really liked the color black even though he could change it into other colors. Don't ask why, he also used the magic clean on himself and made him clean from any dirt as if he had taken a shower. AG activated the system interface and used it to look in the mirror. Good. As always, I'm very handsome. Miss System couldn't stand hearing her host's narcissism, she hurriedly changed the topic. Host, you have a lot of rewards this time. A lot? You mean to? No, it's more than three. Why so many? I'm sure yesterday was just. Have you forgotten what you did last night? You ate five heroines. Although some of them were eaten before, but this reward only triggered now. And why is it only triggering now? AG was confused, he was a little curious. But Miss System's answer was not convincing. Maybe it's because you slept with five heroines simultaneously last night. It was just a normal sleep. But whatever, check all my rewards quickly. When he said quickly, Miss System really did it quickly and matter-of-factly. Ding. Congratulations host, you get the eternal motion machine. Ding. Congratulations host, 
you get plot change spoilers in the next one month about all the franchises you have influenced. Ding. Congratulations host, you get the X-level disguise skill. Ding. Congratulations host, you get the ring of gluttony. Ding. Congratulations host, you gain evolution on your race. Since the ordinary human race began to be unable to bear all your power, an evolution was needed. Your human race evolved into the Saint Galaxy human race. What the? Crazy. AG would like to say, that his rewards this time is really amazing and surprising. If I knew this, maybe I should do sleep with more heroin. Who knows after that I'll become invincible faster and comparable to TOAA from the Marvel Universe. Although he wanted to read the reward descriptions one by one. Unfortunately at this moment, changes were happening to his body. AG's pupils shrank, even after he was this strong. Not that he was immune from pain as his body was being destroyed and remade. Host, I suggest teleporting to the bathroom. F asterisk CK. He couldn't help but curse. You should have said it earlier. Seeing a lot of his body began to bleed profusely. AG gritted his teeth, enduring the pain so as not to scream, fortunately he could still use magic to instantly drown himself in the bathtub. When the heroines are still fast asleep in his bedroom. The bathtub in AG's house that Lala had remodeled to be as spacious as a public bath. Now, the water was dyed red like blood and there were many bubbles as if the water was boiling due to the extreme increase in temperature inside. Soon after all the water in the bathtub evaporated, a male figure rose from within, he stepped out of the bathtub with a slight lift of his leg and a snap of his fingers. Instantly the bathroom that was previously dirty with red liquid immediately returned to its original state as if time had gone back in time, and the bathtub was filled with clear water again. The man, A.G. was already dressed and clean again. Looking at himself in the bathroom mirror, he couldn't help saying, Human Saint Galaxy. If Lala, Rias, and the others saw this. They must be drooling and begging to exercise with me more. That's what you first thought after seeing the evolution of your race, host. A.G. smiled. Of course not. I also feel my body feel very light as if the gravity on this planet won't hold me if I want it to. Even with just the pure power of the Human Saint Galaxy. Although it is not as strong as my other powers combined. Now I feel like I no longer have to worry about breathing in space. I'm more energetic than usual, and more handsome. Pretty good. If the people far out there in space heard this. They would definitely scold AG for reaching the peak of his race's evolution so easily without any hard work. If only that, a little was fine because not everyone was as lucky as him to have a cheating plug-in. A certain protagonist even needed hundreds of chapters to be able to promote his race to a level comparable to the Saint Galaxy human race. But this guy, he didn't seem to be so happy and was only slightly pleased before shrugging his shoulders as if that was all and saying good enough. Indeed. At least it makes you not need to use magic or other powers to breathe in space. This tone. Miss System was also not too excited about the evolution of her host race. She was not even surprised that her host's other races blended well with the Saint Galaxy human race. Back in the living room with a sandwich and a cup of coffee. AG sat on the sofa leisurely while crossing one leg and reading the descriptions of all the rewards he got this time. Saint Galaxy Human Race. Actually, humans were the most common species in the galaxy. This race was famous for its rapid adaptation to new environments with the unique characteristics of adaptive herd. Debuff resistance, physical resistance, and mental resistance were all increased by 10%. All of these characteristics can be further improved by making the race evolve. There are seven evolutionary chains that a human can achieve. Starting from the beginning, there were carbon-based human, type I space humans, type II space human, cosmos humanity, type B galaxy human, type X galaxy human and finally the Saint Galaxy human race. The latter is said to have a 200% increase in normal human stats with some other innate abilities such as space breathing and it is also said that at this stage the gene limiter in humans is removed. AG didn't really understand about his gene limiter being removed because the system description didn't explain further on that topic. He also didn't really care because with his powers now being a Saint Galaxy man only made him feel more comfortable using his powers. At most his overall power now only increased by about 5%. It proved that his character card combinations were much more up than his racial evolution. Of course, whose character cards does he have anyway? Putting the others aside, but Anos character cards that were far from 100% alone had increased his power like crazy. Then. There was a reward called Eternal Motion Machine. Eiji's lips twitched at the description of this thing because it turned out that it wasn't a literal machine, but it was actually an ability that increased his kidneys to be able to swing his hips and release his seat as much as he wanted. What a hentai ability. But it would definitely come in handy. X-level disguise skill. From the name alone, 
you should already know what its function is and of course it allows him to disguise himself as anyone without being suspected. Actually with some of his magic spells, he could also do something similar, but this skill only made him more comfortable. Ring of Gluttony Taking out the item from the system inventory, he held it and observed it. The main part of the ring was made of an unknown dark silver metal, and on the face of the ring was a dark black gemstone that seemed to absorb the surrounding light. Pretty cool. What about its function? He read the description of the item and his expression could not help but change. This ring's abilities were too underhanded. He even felt that Excalibur was nothing compared to this ring in terms of usefulness. So here's the thing, with the ring. For example, after he kills Issei, he can use the ring to devour his abilities, which are like boosted gear, and other abilities like the golden fingers that the protagonists have. In addition to abilities, luck, systems, talents, etc., everything can be swallowed. What about the plot related to the protagonist? Unfortunately not. After all, it's the world that throws every plot at the protagonist, and not the protagonist himself who has that plot. I just found that out, so killing the protagonist will still prevent me from getting more rewards from the franchise related to the protagonist. Yes, unless you feel like you've gotten enough rewards from the franchise, deciding to kill the protagonist and devour him using the ring's abilities. I understand. But what are the plot spoilers in the next one month about all the franchises I've influenced? Don't tell me there are changes to the plot that I don't know about and these spoilers tell me. Miss System rolled her eyes somewhere, she wasn't surprised her host had guessed this far since it wasn't the first time. It's just that. Are you seriously still asking? That plot spoiler has naturally been transferred to your brain since earlier. AG laughed, actually he asked just because he wanted to. After finishing his sandwich and drinking his coffee. Checking the information about the plot changes in the original work in his head. He sighed. Things were becoming more troublesome, but... Smile, no. Grin appeared on his face that was now more handsome than ever. If Lala, Rias, and the others were to wake up and see his appearance now, they would definitely be surprised. Ding dong. Unfortunately, they might not be the first to see HLS appearance. Ag raised his eyebrows, he walked towards the front door of the house and opened it. Welcome to the humble CEO family residence. How can I help you? Pretty girl. At the sight of his face, the other party looked dazed for a few seconds. Hello, girl. Is this really Ag CEO's house? On, right. Ag nodded. Is Ag CEO home? On, he's here. Can I see him? Meet? He he, haven't you met him now? The girl looked around and gave him a confused look. Where? He's right in front of your eyes. Agceia, that's me. There was silence after that. With the sound of birds chirping in the trees near the house. The two stared at each other in silence until... Dash. A slash N, if you want to read 8 advanced chapters with a faster update frequency than the web novel, you can read it on my Patreon whose link is below. HTTPS slash slash www.patreon.com slash doglicker. Replace A with A and search in your browser. By the way, don't forget to throw power stones and leave a review to motivate me, smiley face, comment. 38 comment. Vote. 0 left. Chapter 85, Golden Darkness. Run opened her eyes, she was in a familiar room that she remembered this was the same room where she, Ag, and the others watched a movie together. Recalling what they did last night, she was happy because it was the first time she watched a movie with many people. It felt good. Lala. Rias, and, Kurika. There were three who were also asleep on the same bed as her, since the bed was large, they could sleep without rubbing against each other. Putting aside the other two women, she had also gotten to know Kurika back home from school yesterday because she met her at Eiji's house. The cat-like woman also turned out to be one of Eiji's women and she was quite friendly, but... Where's Asia? As she searched for Asia, she got out of bed and put on the clothes made automatically by the Change Change Clothes Con that Lala had given her. Surprisingly when she stood up and walked out of the room. She wondered where Ag was. When she woke up, he was gone. Maybe Ag healed me with his magic before leaving. Although when she woke up she didn't see the man, a little disappointed, but she felt sweet that the other party was so considerate to take care of her first before leaving. Asia. What are you doing? Run saw the blonde girl cutting something on the first floor. Cooking. Oh, Run San, are you awake? Do you want breakfast? Wait a minute. I'm making it. Asia wakes up earlier than others, she is currently making breakfast for everyone. Uh, you don't need to rush Asia. Just continue quietly Run was in a very good mood, she looked around as if looking for someone while watching Asia cook. By the way Asia, where's Aji? 
I don't see him. Ah. If you're looking for A.G. San. I haven't seen him since waking up earlier either, he probably went somewhere to do something. Doing what? Run asked with curiosity. Asia turned to the light green haired girl with a smile. I don't know. But if it's not about buying something or taking care of his work, he's probably dealing with another heroine out there. Run was confused, even though she knew she was a heroine. Honestly if it was about other heroines, plots, and other things related to the protagonist, she didn't know much yet. Seeing the confusion on Run's face, Asia thought the girl must not have really understood the situation. Looks like she had to tell her about a few things. So all the girls in this house are heroine. Run was surprised. Asia nodded. Yes, I'm a heroine just like you, Run San. You. Does that mean you're also from the same franchise as me, Asia? No. I'm from another franchise that Aji San calls High School DXD. There I'm one of the heroine who is said to be picked up by the protagonist named Issei Hayadu. Unfortunately that protagonist was bad. I didn't want to follow him and chose to stay with Aji San. Remembering when she was first picked up by Aji and suddenly Issei came to force her to come with him, Asia raised her original as if remembering bad memories. Fortunately, everything was fine because at that time she chose to go with Aji which was a decision she did not regret. High School DXD the protagonist is say hi to me me what about me although i know i'm the heroine and the boy named yuaki rito is the protagonist i don't know my franchise name yet for the inner voice run already knew the other girls like rias lala asia and kurika could also hear it actually she knew this from rias who told her before in school but that's it she didn't know any other details because she and rias immediately separated to their respective classes yesterday hearing what asia said about the franchise she was curious and eager to know more. If it's about your franchise, Run San. I remember it's called To Love Are You. It's the same harem franchise as mine with a perverted protagonist who makes the heroines fall in love with him in a despicable way. Not knowing if Asia had intentionally added salt and pepper, there was a hint of disgust on her usually innocent and kind face. But that reassured Run, she wondered how crazy a plot Asia had with the protagonist Issei Hayato that made a girl like her show that expression. At the sound of footsteps coming down the stairs, she and Asia turned their heads to see Lala, Rias, and Kurika already awake. For the first time, the heroine from different franchises were gathered without the presence of Aji and the protagonist. On the other side. Bang. 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 Explosion after explosion was heard. Several thick concrete pillars were neatly cut by yellow-colored incisions. The ground and walls were hollowed out by pure fists and kicks. Inside a certain empty factory, a silver-haired male figure was fighting with a blonde girl. His figures were both moving so fast, ordinary humans, and most supernatural beings would also find it difficult to see their figures properly at this time. But in Aji's view, even without the help of his Sherry Nan, he could dodge any attack from the other party that was many times faster than a bullet easily and calmly. Because from his perspective, he saw everything in slow motion. He felt like Superman who saw Flash running to kick him, but he saw him clearly and of course he had plenty of time to choose how he would dodge or attack. The girl who was attacking him was also not actually weak. At least if it was him before maximizing Barbato's character fusion and hadn't gotten Anos character cards, etc., he would have had a little trouble following the other party's movements because it was so fast. How fast? Well if protagonist Rito didn't have his plot armor, his head would have been decapitated hundreds of times in two seconds. Eiji himself was actually a little surprised, because he felt that the heroine he was fighting was stronger than the original work. No, Actually he himself did not know for sure how strong the girl was because in the original work every character battle would always end with the protagonist's perverted accident or other perverted things. Well after all it was a franchise that wasn't too serious. But that was it. If the other party wasn't the heroine, he would have finished this fight in seconds with his current power. Unfortunately he didn't, he had been dodging every attack of the beautiful girl in the all black outfit. It was the same girl who came to his house early in the morning and said that she wanted to meet him. After he said he was Agceia, the girl immediately attacked him and he teleported them both to an uninhabited factory that was actually located in Kyoto. It was far from his home, but put that aside. Long blonde hair that flies in the air and can turn into a sharp weapon so far. Emotionless deep red eyes. A slender figure that was somewhat childish, yet not exaggerated as if it was a golden ratio that made her comfortable fighting. It was time to capture this girl. He knew the girl was one of To Love Ryu's heroine in the original work who became a famous assassin in the galaxy. In the original work, she was supposed to be given a mission by one of Lala's suitors to kill the protagonist Rito because he was engaged to Lala. But due to a plot change, she was now targeting him and wanted to kill him to complete her mission. 
This was one of the plots that Eiji knew after receiving plot spoilers from his system this morning and actually he was not at all surprised that Yami suddenly came to his house this morning because he already knew it would happen. He even knew what he himself would do in the plot which turned out to be in favor of the protagonist Rito. It turned out that in the fight that happened this time, he would injure Yami quite severely and let her escape after knowing how strong he was. He of course still planned to get the heroine, but the trick he used turned out to be detrimental to himself because on the way to escape, the injured Yami met the protagonist Rito and happened to faint in front of him. Rito certainly took advantage of this opportunity to get Yami on his side, he brought Yami back to his house and asked his younger sister, Mikan to treat Yami's injuries. After that, the development will be Yami who feels the warmth of the family during her stay at the protagonist's house and slowly she will fall in love with Rito. Recalling this plot, Eiji wanted to curse whoever made this stupid script. I don't know what he was thinking in that plot, but the current him was definitely not planning to follow the script. Although he and Yami were still fighting, he certainly had a different strategy to capture this heroine. The assassin, Golden Darkness. Even if she uses the name Yami on Earth, I know her real name is Eve, she has come to Earth earlier than the original work. In the original work, one of Lala's suitors whose name I forgot hired Yami to kill Lala's fiancé because of his ugly jealousy and incompetence. Who is Lala's fiancé? Of course it's me. Yami really came to kill me. Dozens of flying knives made of the girl's blonde hair seemed to freeze in the air as they were about to hit his body, the girl who had been attacking like a machine also immediately froze and seemed a little confused by the voice that suddenly appeared in her head. Girl, you let your guard down. Bang. The girl, Yami was thrown and her body crashed into several thick walls behind her after her stomach was punched by Eiji who suddenly appeared in front of her as if he teleported. Her body was stuck on the wall and the wall itself cracked like a spider web. If there were people watching this, they would definitely think Eiji was cruel to punch a beautiful girl that hard. Looking at the heroine he hit, even though the other party was heroine, it didn't mean he wouldn't fight someone who kept attacking him and wanted to kill him. But because the other party was heroine, Eiji naturally refrained from killing the other party. To distract me in this way, Eiji see ya cough, cough dash, you are despicable, so cunning. Yami flatly said as she wiped a bit of blood on her lips, her voice sounded cute, albeit monotonous, her eyebrows raised as she felt pain in her stomach. But as a body transformation, this pain was certainly not enough to defeat her and she quickly patted her dust-covered clothes. She stood up, staring at her target, or rather the target of her mission that she had to kill in confusion. From the voice that suddenly sounded in her head, she knew it was Eiji Ceea's voice and it seemed like the other party knew her identity, even her real name. He even knew who hired her and what she was looking for. In addition, she also seemed to have underestimated the target of her mission this time which made her a little regretful. Distracting. But I didn't say anything to catch you off guard. Girl, you suddenly froze and it's only natural that I attacked you while we were fighting, right? Liar. You clearly distracted me, you just said. What? I said what? Eiji's face looked confused and innocent. You. Don't you already know my identity? Yami didn't know why, but she couldn't tell what she heard, although she also did see Eiji Ceea not open his mouth when the voice was heard, but she was sure it was his voice. What made her curious was how the other party knew her real name that only she and a certain woman should know. Actually, she felt that Eiji Ceea knew many things about her which made her confused and her intention to kill that man even higher. As an assassin, she certainly couldn't let the person who knew so many things about her live to avoid trouble in the future. Even so, before she was about to attack again, she almost stumbled hearing what Eiji Ceea said. Girl. If you use the trick that we actually know each other to seduce me. Sorry, that won't work. You need to know, I'm a man who already has a fiancé. So if you're looking for a guy to date, you'll have to find another guy. Yami knew Ceea who was the target of her mission this time was the fiancé of Lala Sadal and Devi Luke, the princess of the planet Devi Luke. And actually the reason she targeted the other party was because a prince named Lacaspo hired her services to kill that man. So far, as a professional assassin, she had never failed in her mission to kill someone. Although she did not know much about the relationship between men and women, she certainly knew the seduction tricks that some female assassins other than herself usually used out there. Although she had never tried it, she had a rough idea of how a female assassin seduced her target. It made her face feel hot, and she looked at Eiji Ceea warily while hugging herself. Who wants to seduce you? Eiji Ceea, you pervert. Eka. You eka. Ahahohaha. Yami seems to have learned Japanese well. She even knows what Eki is. Eiji Ceea. Are you laughing at me? What? Who's laughing? Do I look like I'm laughing right now? Eiji pointed at his own face while looking at her strangely. Yami knew the man was not laughing, but that voice. 
Could it be his inner voice? Somehow, she came to this conclusion and AGCE himself didn't seem to realize that she could hear his inner voice. This pervert. On the surface he wasn't laughing, in his heart, he was actually laughing at her. Yami was annoyed, she decided to be more serious, her blonde hair turned into several dragon heads and all of them shot out many fireballs that were enough to blow up several buildings. Even if AGCE was strong, she must not be that strong to survive this attack, right? She would burn AGCE to ashes. And with that, the mission would be complete. However. No way. Yami was dumbfounded, she saw AGCE casually waving his hand and instantly all his fire attacks were extinguished as if blown away by his waving hand. The wind was blowing strongly in the factory right now just because AG slapped away all of Yami's attacks with a wave of his hand. He didn't use magic or anything, he just used his physical strength as a Saint Galaxy man. Actually, since the fight started, he deliberately limited himself to not using his powers except for his human Saint Galaxy powers. He did this because he was worried about accidentally killing the heroine, especially with Anos' physical power which was even more outrageous than the human Saint Galaxy. Looking at Yami who was still staring at him in disbelief and seemed to be planning to pull out more of his cards that he knew the girl was actually capable of destroying the entire city, Eiji suddenly appeared behind the girl and... Slap! 1. For impolite girl who suddenly visited my house without introducing herself. A-H-H. Why you, Eiji Ceea? What are you? Slap! 2. For naughty girl who suddenly attacked me and wanted to kill me without telling me why. A-H-H. Naughty girl? I'm a assassin. AGCE, you're my target, I. Slap. 3, for gullible foolish girl. AHH. Who is gullible? Who's a fool? A pervert. Eka. Eka. Let go of me, how dare you. Slap. 4 your ass is very good, girl. I think I'm addicted to slapping you, so let's do more. AHH. AGCE, I'll kill you. I'll kill you. Tears appeared at the corner of Yami's eyes, as a professional and famous assassin in the galaxy, this was the first time she was humiliated to this extent by someone. And that person was her target. That man, AGCE suddenly embraced her body with one hand, lifted her into the air, and his other hand slapped her ass hard. There is no sense of restraint in a girl. He slapped her so hard that she knew her ass had red handprints. He, how dare he? Yami would rather be killed for failing her mission than humiliated like this. Of course, as a body transformation, all her limbs could be manipulated into any material, and she had thought of attacking AGCE many times since he first slapped her. But somehow, her body became limp, and she was unable to even manipulate her body as if she lost her power which made her feel a sense of horror for the first time. Her emotionless face had been replaced by the expression of a little girl being bullied and filled with panic. This was probably a face that she had not shown for many years and only that woman had ever seen her show this kind of expression. AG smirked. He had used his massage technique to make Yami unable to manipulate her body into a weapon for a while. He didn't expect it to actually work, and he could take this opportunity to slap the girl's ass to his heart's content. It felt so good. You're sadistic. Ignoring the system that praised him, he in the script was probably thinking of using the trick of hitting hard to instill a strong impression in Yami's heart. Since she was an assassin, it was difficult if he chose a soft method to get the girl's heart without losing his face. He's not like the protagonist Rito in the original work who was fine being beaten up by Yami many times until one day the girl fell in love with him. Eiji certainly had no intention of allowing himself to be beaten up because he was not a masochist, unlike him in the script, the current him still used the same method. However, he hits Yami in a different way and he certainly won't let this girl escape in order to accidentally meet protagonist on the street. How could he give the protagonist a chance to steal his leaks outside? Glancing at Yami who was rebelling in his arms while looking at him with watery eyes that held contempt and disgust. Slap. A-H-H. A-G-C-E. You are despicable. You are indeed a bad person as said. Bad person? I don't know who told you that, but isn't an assassin also a bad person? Yami was silent. Indeed, she herself knew she was not a good person as she had killed many people during her mission, yet all those people were said to be bad people who deserved to be killed. For example, on a certain planet, there was a man who made all the women in one country as slaves who had to serve men. Including the women who were members of the royal family there, the man made them all his slaves. Hearing this information, she certainly did not hesitate to accept the mission from her client and came to the planet to kill the man. In the case of AGCE it was the same, she heard from her client that this man actually blackmailed and forced Lala Sadal and Devi Luke to get engaged to him. 
There was also additional information such as AGC Eo was a very perverted man and many women's had become his victims which was enough to make her accept the mission to kill him. Basically, she would only accept missions to kill those evil people, she never accepted missions to kill good people. Which was a bit of tenderness in her heart, but she also knew she was not a good person, after all she was created as a killing machine. Seeing Yami silent with a cloudy and sad look, Eiji guessed that the girl must be thinking about her past. He felt this was a good opportunity to throw the bait. Seeing that this girl fell silent because of my question, I knew I was right. And actually the reason why I called this girl gullible is because she is gullible. This voice again. Yami tried to ignore this voice from earlier because she felt it was just an evil trick A.G. was using on her. However, the man seemed to be completely unaware that she was hearing his inner voice. Even so, she didn't understand why A.G. C.E.A. kept taunting her, even taunting her in his heart that she was gullible. She continued to rebel in the man's arms and tried to remove his perverted hands from her body, but what she heard next. In the original work Yami believed almost everything her clients said about her target in every mission. She never doubted anything after finding out her target was a bad guy and went straight to take the guy's head. Hmm. This guy knows. Yami froze, and she wondered what the heck was the original work, the original work, that this guy kept mentioning that made him know so much about her? As a time traveler from another universe who has watched To Love Are You, I know in this world every character from To Love Are You is real. For example Yami or Eve, she's one of the heroines in this franchise. I know a lot about her, including her past and future. Originally Yami was supposed to have a mission to kill the protagonist who was engaged to Lala, but my existence in this world, Lala got engaged to me, and Yami's mission target changed to me. I don't know what that guy named. Lacaspo said to Yami, but he must have said I forced Lala to get engaged and blah blah blah, I'm a very bad pervert, the enemy of all women and must be killed for the greater good. AGCE you really knows. And the original work he was referring to turned out to be something like a movie. In the past, Yami must have watched a few movies with her and one of them was a cartoon. Although she didn't quite understand what Eiji was saying in his heart, she at least understood that the man knew her past and future because he watched her original works. In the original work, she was a heroine, and there was also a protagonist. But the important point in this situation was. Was she really deceived by the man named Lacaspo who said Eiji Ceea was that evil? And Eiji Ceea, he was actually a time traveler from another universe? Although he could have killed her or even humiliated her in a worse way, he only hit her once, restrained her body and slapped her ass a few times. Was this man really that evil? At this moment, Eiji's harem halo certainly shone brightly and made the scales in Yami's heart lean more towards him. Eiji saw Yami's gaze on him change slightly, he smiled and made the girl's heart more shaken. This guy. Why does he have such a handsome face? He doesn't look evil at all like the people I've killed. Maybe. Maybe I misunderstood him all this time and Lacaspo deceived me. Because she was too busy thinking, Yami completely ignored Eiji's mischievous hand that stopped slapping her ass, but kept his hand on her ass. If she had realized this, the scales in her heart would have been thrown out the window. Eiji was certainly just taking advantage of the opportunity to feel how soft and firm Yami's ass was for a while. It was only a few seconds before he lowered the girl from his arms and said. Listen, girl. I don't know who told you to kill me, but I'm sure there's a misunderstanding here. Can we talk nicely instead of fighting? I don't want to hurt a beautiful girl like you. Is this man seriously saying that after what he did to her earlier? But she also knew it was her fault because she kept trying to attack him. Yami looked at Eiji Ceo flatly, she was moved by the smile on the man's face that had actually made her dazed since the first time they met at his house. Although she wasn't interested in the romance of men and women because she didn't really understand it herself, but what was with her heart beating faster than usual. She must be sick. To Eiji Ceo's offer, she thought for a moment, she certainly did not fully trust the man, even after hearing his inner voice. What should she do? She was now hesitant to kill the man in front of her. In the original work, I remember Yami's mission to kill the protagonist of course failed. How could the author let the heroine actually succeed in killing the protagonist when there are still many episodes to air? Hearing this, Yami raised her ears. Right, exactly how did she in the original work fail her mission? Looking at Yami's twitching ears, Eiji mentally sighed. This assassin is cute. He should put her in his pocket. The answer is clear, the author makes Yami have doubts about killing the protagonist because the protagonist is not as evil as she thinks. So Yami chose the long-term option to monitor the protagonist. She went to the same school as the protagonist, and even bought a house near the protagonist's house so that she could monitor and confirm whether the protagonist should be killed or not. Eiji honestly wanted to say to stay in the same house as the protagonist, but he felt that it would make Yami suspect something was wrong. 
but this alone seemed to be enough as he saw the girl's eyes light up slightly as if she had an idea. Yami looked at him and said. I understand, AGC Iya. Understand, understand what? You agree to stop fighting. AG pretended to be confused. Yami was increasingly convinced the man in front of her really didn't know his inner voice was heard. She nodded. It seems I misunderstood you, but it's not 100% yet. For the time being, we'll have a truce and I'll monitor you from now on. Dash. A slash N, if you want to read 8 advanced chapters with a faster update frequency than the web novel, you can read it on my Patreon whose link is below. HTTPS slash slash www.patreon.com slash doglicker. Replace A with A and search in your browser. By the way, don't forget to throw power stones and leave a review to motivate me, smiley face, comment. 42 comment. Vote. 0 left. Chapter 86, Meeting of the Heroines. Miss System, maybe I shouldn't hold back on making Yami live in my house, right? Host, I think it's good not to rush things. But. In her room, the golden-haired woman rolled her eyes at her host who was staring at his own hands. It was the hand that was previously used to slap Yami's ass. Pervert. A.G. sighed. I'm not, okay. It's actually natural for a man to be a pervert as long as he's good at restraining himself. Except for protagonist. Host, you have double standards. A.G. pretended not to hear what his system was saying. He didn't hear it, he didn't hear it and saw an empty factory that had many explosion marks. There was no one but him here. Where is Yami? She had already left after saying that she wanted to monitor him. By the way she also asked him where he school before she left. I go to Kuahgakuan. What's wrong? You're suddenly wondering where I go to school, Yami. He and the girl were already acquainted before he left, even though both of them already knew each other. Both knew how to pretend and they did. This kind of inner voice routine. AGC Iya, didn't I say that I would monitor you? Yami said with flatly at that time. Wait, don't say you're going to. Without waiting for him to finish his words, the girl immediately disappeared as if she teleported. Let him guess, that girl would definitely enroll in the same school as him, right? A.G. scratched his head before snapping his fingers and instantly all the damage at the scene was immediately repaired by his magic. Thinking of Yami, he was actually a little worried that the girl was somehow connected to the protagonist in the original work. But fortunately he had also asked his subordinates to monitor the protagonist's every move, so if anything went wrong, he could also move quickly. After that what else should he do? Of course go home and actually he wondered what the heroines did in his house when he wasn't around. Unlike before, he felt that something might be going on. At Eiji's house. Five heroine gathered in the living room. Three DXD heroines. Two heroine of to love are you. After eating the breakfast that Asia made this morning and each of them dressed up in their school uniforms except Kurika. Unlike the girls in the room who were still in school, Kurika was a grown woman who was certainly not in school. Kurika was wearing her favorite black kimono while yawning lazily on the sofa, she still seemed to want to sleep a little more because she had watched too many movies last night. However, these people pulled her together to talk about something. The one who took the lead in this situation was the crimson-haired devil girl, Rias Gremory who suddenly proposed to create something like a group of heroines. The girl said that in the future, Eiji would get more heroine in his harem. So to guard each other from protagonists or other problems that might arise in the future because not all heroin might be easy to manage and some of them might rebel. A group of heroines is needed and of course all these heroines should be affiliated in Eiji's harem and not connected to the protagonist. All the heroine in the room understood this. The light green haired girl raised her hand. Yes, run. Any questions? Rhea sat on one of the sofas with the posture of a hostess. Her gentle smile and expression seemed to indicate that she was in charge of the situation and that she would definitely be the leader of this group. Anno. I'm fine joining the group of heroines you mentioned. Rias nodded gently, her gaze saying continue. Run's lips twitched. But Rias. Who is the leader of this group? Don't tell me it's you. Hearing this, the crimson-haired girl chuckled. Her gaze said something like isn't it obvious? Of course. As the first heroine and main heroine, doesn't it make sense for me to be the leader of this group? Huh. Run, you're overreacting. How could I not? Since when is the group leader decided by the order in which the heroine is displayed first? I disagree. Oh. Run, I thought we had a good relationship. Rhea sounded sad and a little disappointed. Do you remember me helping you to become one of Aegis women? If I hadn't given you some hints, would you still be here sooner? Although the crimson-haired girl didn't say it, she seemed to allude to this which made Run groan. Ugh. B but. Being a leader is. 
Being a leader is. Right? How about we decide by voting? And who do you vote for, run? Rias was curious. Was it the pink-haired girl who was tinkering with something while being assisted by her little robot? If it was her. She felt this would be difficult. Who do I choose? Hee <laughs> hee. Of course it's me. Lala, Asia, Kurika, you guys don't mind, right? Run pointed at herself. Times three heroin. Rias. Hey why are you guys being so quiet? Lala, you're my childhood friend. And we're from the same franchise here. Can you support me? Lala, whose name was called, tilted her head innocently. Run, don't ask me. Hey. Hey. What do you mean, Lala, don't tell me you also want to compete for the leader's seed. The pink-haired girl did not answer, but just smiled and continued what she was doing. She didn't seem to care at all about the competition to become the leader of this group. At least that's what the people in this room saw. Seeing her childhood friend ignoring her, Run was annoyed and stopped her feet on the floor. Run, you're overreacting. Run looked at Rias in annoyance. Can you stop saying that? The other party looked at her with a gentle smile, but the hostess's posture irritated her. It stimulated the competitive spirit within her to compete. But she looked at the other heroine who remained silent and did not support her, she looked at them sadly. Woo. No one is supporting me. Even if she wanted to continue competing, she had already lost because no one was supporting her ship. Is it because she's a new heroine and a newcomer here? People looked down on her. Even the girl she knew to be the most kind and gentle here, she did not dare to look at her as if she pretended to have nothing to do with this situation. No, wait. That girl didn't support him, but she raised her hand and nominated someone else. Yes, Asia. Any questions? Rhea still asked in a hostess tone, but her hostess expression was a little ugly because the blonde girl actually nominated the pink-haired girl as the leader. I think the most suitable person as the leader of this group is Lala Sen. Asia nominated Lala, she herself was not interested in being the leader, but was more in favor of Lala than Rias, even if the crimson-haired girl was the main heroine in the same franchise as her. Rias felt betrayed by the former nun. We. Aren't we from the same franchise? In the original work. We had a good relationship, right? Can't you support me instead of supporting the heroine of another franchise? Traitor. Although Run's ship had sunk, the girl was not too sad and was happy to see that Rhea's ship also seemed unable to sail. If she herself could not, then she would just have to let another heroine from her own franchise be the leader. Although that person was Lala, she felt it was better than letting Rhea's win. Me. Me. I support Lala too. Tisk. Rhea's clicked her tongue in annoyance. Sure enough, the light green haired girl didn't know how to thank her. You prefer your childhood friend over the one who helped you with some clues to become one of Aji's women. Rias, you're overreacting. Run even took revenge on her. Run, you. Rias sighed, her breasts that occupied the number one position in this room shaking just from her slight movement. Run and Asia who were in the lowest position looked at the girl's breasts with envy. The crimson haired girl looked proud at this, but still. She turned to the only one who might be able to help her. Kurika. Yeah. The catwoman had been sitting with her head resting on the arm of the sofa lazily. What's wrong Rias? Kurika, you heard everything. So who are you rooting for? It's me, right? I'm the king of your little sister. Rias even threw down her king and peerage cards. With this, can't you give me a little face? However. Yeah, I actually don't care about this kind of thing. But if it's the leader, I'll choose Lala because she's Aji's first fiancé. Doesn't it make sense for the first fiancé to be the hostess to also be the leader of this group? Rias felt an imaginary arrow fly into her chest. She, she just remembered she was still Aji's girlfriend. Unlike Lala and Sana who were already Aji's fiancé. She's just a girlfriend. Damn it. Aji, where is Aji? After she returned to the underworld, she would ask her family to get her engaged to Aji. Also, she actually regretted not inviting Akeno and Konako to stay here yesterday. If she did, at least she wouldn't be so miserable in this situation. It was obviously she who proposed to create a heroine group, but it was someone else who became the leader of this group. Rias was very reluctant. Now she, and everyone else was staring at the pink-haired girl who managed to become the leader easily without even trying. The girl herself was smiling at everyone with some slender white bracelet-like tools in her hands. Peek, share this with everyone. Yes. Lalasama. Peek was also there, and she distributed the items to everyone. What are these? Rias was confused, but she didn't expect that Lala who was so innocent seemed to already know she would win and she made special membership tools from scratch. 
This confidence. She felt that the pink-haired girl was not so innocent as she thought. Isn't this change change clothes con? Eh no, this seems a little different. Run was familiar with many of Lala's inventions as he had seen many in the past, but this thing in her hand seems to be different. Lala nodded and explained to everyone with her bright smile that lit up the whole room. You're right, Run. The shape is somewhat similar to the change change clothes con, but it has different functions. It's called an e-linker. Its function is almost the same as an ordinary cell phone on Earth, but it is more advanced and has special features such as. The pink-haired girl explained some of the special functions in the e-linker which from the name alone girls knew e stood for aging. In addition to functions that were almost the same as a cell phone which could basically be used to communicate remotely and connect to the internet with a holographic interface, there were also other additional functions such as a special feature for creating group chats where users could send their consciousness to a virtual space. In that virtual space, each user's avatar can meet and interact like people meeting in person. So it's not just a regular group chat. It's an enhanced group chat. If they want to communicate with each other or for example have a group meeting of heroines in secret. They can use the e-linker to do these things. In addition, the virtual space in this bracelet also has its own virtual world like a game world that the heroines can explore when they are bored. There are also other advanced functions such as hacking computers, cell phones etc. Hearing so many things that the little thing in their hands can do. Everyone in the room was mesmerized and felt that this was the real hostess. Although she usually looked childish, she was undoubtedly a genius scientist to be able to make them things like this. It was hard for them not to recognize that woman as their leader. Even Rias, who actually likes otaku and gaming stuff, was fascinated by the functions of the e-linker which is actually more like a virtual gaming device. She knows that the virtual games that have been popular lately are also capable of transporting the user's consciousness to the game world, she actually used to play these games at home. But unlike those virtual games that could only be played using a sizable capsule-like device. The e-linker Lala made was more convenient as it could be carried anywhere and had more functions. Right now, she couldn't help but think, isn't that just the leader's seat? Being the deputy leader is actually not bad either. The meaning is clear, she was conquered by Lala. Outside Aji's house, precisely in the side yard of the house where there were chairs and tables that were usually used for sunbathing. Aji had actually returned to his house from earlier, but he did not enter and secretly eavesdropped on what the heroines were discussing in the living room from the hidden CCTV footage. From his laptop, he watched and listened to all their conversations. Including things about making a special heroine group in her harem, and the part of Lala who was easily able to make the other heroines submit and recognize her as the leader of the heroine group. He was naturally surprised to see that, especially when he saw Rias who was originally eager to become the group leader give up after being given a toy. His first fiancé was really amazing. Lala is crazy. By crazy he means how incredible she is, okay. I mean there's this thing called an e-linker. He was glad Lala had named it after the first letter of his name. But. Lala, you can even make something similar in that franchise called Excel World. It's even better than the virtual game I made. Host, are you jealous? Of course not. I'm glad to have a woman like Lala who can make things like this. Ag was serious, he was not the type to be jealous of his own wife because she was capable of doing things better than him. He was just surprised that Lala was able to make something almost similar like in that franchise called Excel World. Initially, he himself wanted to make something similar to that instead of a virtual game capsule that resembles a game in a particular franchise. Unfortunately, he was unable to do so, even with his knowledge from the previous world where there was a lot of advanced technology. By the way, what time is it? Putting school aside because I know it's already an hour late and those girls also seem to have teleported to school by now. With Rias, they don't even have to worry about being punished for coming to school late. But that's not the point. That's right, not the point. Host, you didn't forget today's plot, did you? Ag pretended to cough, he closed his laptop and stored it in the system inventory before saying. I know, I didn't forget. Oh my. Isn't this about that plot change? It's a little troublesome, but it's a good chance to catch the heroine I've been ignoring all this time. Her liking for the protagonist seems to have dropped so low, so it's time to strike while the iron is hot. Yes. Time to strike. Protagonist is also absent from school today. It's a good opportunity. It's a good opportunity. Come on host, do it. Time to trick a girl. Miss System was very excited. Her host was also very excited and very motivated. From the smile on her host's face, Miss System knew a protagonist would be green again. Aji's lips twitched. Who tricks a girl? I'm just helping a girl who's in distress. Saying that, he also went to school and of course he did so by teleporting. Lala, Rias, and the others had already left first. 
Damn, those girls must have thought he would skip school because he was busy catching the heroin outside. Dash. A slash N, if you want to read 8 advanced chapters with a faster update frequency than the web novel, you can read it on my Patreon whose link is below. HTTPS slash slash www.patreon.com slash doglicker. Replace A with A and search in your browser. By the way, don't forget to throw power stones and leave a review to motivate me, smiley face, A slash N2, hmm. What did I want to say? Gosh, I forgot. Alright, it's about the next few chapters. I'm saying this just to prepare so that you don't misunderstand. Basically I'm going to add a few things, but don't worry it'll only be the focus for a few chapters. Even in the latest chapter of my Patreon, AG has already gotten to the arc where he will kill the protagonist and someone you find annoying in the next chapter. But like I said, it's only for a few chapters and the future will still focus on DXD and to love RU, especially with some heroin that AG has only interacted with a little bit. Comment. 44 Comment. Vote. 0 Left. Chapter 87, AG begins his plan to conquer a girl. AG smiled, this morning, although he was late, the teacher did not punish him, nor did the other girls who were late. Why? It was because they had a relationship with Rias and Sana who were the leaders of the school behind the scenes. Gosh. He felt bad taking advantage of this kind of thing so as not to get scolded by the teacher, but it couldn't be helped, okay. Early in the morning Yami came to his door to try to kill him and he slapped the girl's ass until she cried. Then, there's also the heroines having a discussion to form a heroine group at his house which makes him come to school even later. But still, even though the teacher didn't scold him, Yui did. Eiji Kun. You're more than an hour late. At that time, when he just came to class and sat down in his seat, Yui with a pretend angry expression reprimanded him. However, if you took a better look at her face, the girl blushed and looked at his face in a daze. What about Lala, Asia, and Run? I'm sure they're late too. Did you scold them, Yui? The girls in question pretended not to hear what he said, but their gazes were fixed on his appearance with Nipmho eyes, as were the other girls and the female teacher in the class. If he had to give an example of what he looked like now, he almost resembled a character from a certain franchise called Gojo Satoru. He now almost resembled him, especially with his red eyes that had returned to blue, yet seemed to have flecks like galactic dust in them. Unfortunately it wasn't those eyes, it was just a special effect of being a Saint Galaxy man. Also, unlike Gojo's snow white hair, he had silver hair. His height had also increased by 4 centimeters which made him no shorter than Sertsk who was slightly taller than him at the time. At that moment, the people in the class looked at him in a daze. A.G. They at least came earlier than you, A.G. Kun. You were late longer than them. Next time, don't repeat it, okay. Yui looked like a mother scolding her child. Yui, isn't just scolding me unfair? Even Sensei didn't scold me and tell me to sit down. Oof. Of course, how could Sensei dare to scold you? Yui rolled her eyes, she seemed to understand why the teacher did not reprimand him, Lala, Asia, and even Run. Don't blame me. Blame Rias, she must have told these teachers to give us special treatment. Rias? That girl must be dumbfounded. That was the case until school went on as usual, and the school hours ended. But instead of going home with Lala, Asia, and Run. He told the girl to go home first because she had something to do. I had to save a girl. Hearing this, the three girls understood. They even seemed to support him for it and Lala looked forward to the new sister. He gave the girl a thumbs up. But still, A.G. actually felt a little bad, even though he didn't care about school because he was a time traveler and in his previous life he had graduated from university. If he didn't have a system that made him have to hunt down the protagonist and the heroines for rewards, he definitely wouldn't have bothered attending school here. Putting that aside host, what are you doing right now? Me? I'm starting my heroine conquest plan. I understand, but... What exactly this woman wanted to say, he did not understand. But host. You, you. You've been standing on the sidelines and just looking at Harina from there. 34 minutes. You've been doing this for 34 minutes. Miss System, calm down. Did you forget the plot? Speaking of Harina. Right, it was time to attack the purple-haired girl. Not attack her literally, but attack her heart and make her fall in love with him. Right now, after school hours ended, and extracurricular school hours began. Under the orange afternoon sky. A.G. stood with one hand on his chin while watching Harina who was practicing tennis with the other girls. Because of his attractive appearance, of course many people there glanced at him, especially the girls at the tennis club. One of them was Harina, although the girl looked nervous and pretended not to see him. That girl was a member of the tennis club. 
it was the same as in the original work. From tens of meters away, he could clearly see Harina wearing a light blue and white tennis uniform. Her slender figure looked agile as she moved to hit the tennis balls coming towards her. With his vision, he could even see the girl's sweat dripping down her white neck. Host. For God's sake, Miss System. I'm doing it right now. Doing what? You haven't even made a move to Wu Harina or anything like that yet. Hearing this, Aji rolled his eyes and said, Are you crazy? You forgot what my relationship with Harina is like. Calling her crazy is too much. But Miss System remembered all this time that her host was not very close to Harina, even if he was in the same class as the girl. Actually except for speaking a few words like. Aji Kun, have you done your homework? Sensei, told me to collect everyone's homework. Homework? Sure, here it is. Done. Then another time. Aji Kun, here's your exam question sheet. Oh. Okay, thank you Harina. On. Done. Then another time. Aji Kun, today is your picket schedule. Don't worry, I'll do it. Etc. Etc. All the conversations her host and Harina ever had were basically just that. Neither of them tried to get close to the other which made both of them very awkward. Put aside her host who didn't want to curry favor with heroine who still liked protagonist at that time. But even Harina herself, although she often peeked at her host in class, especially glancing at his pants made her wonder if that girl was a pervert. Just that. The girl did not try to contact her host at all, although her expression often looked dreamy while staring at her host. Cough, whether the girl was shy or too quiet, she didn't know. The girl was obviously at least interested in her host, but she was filled with doubts like those girls in rom-com novels. Do you understand now? It's not good if I suddenly go up to her to seduce her. Oh come on, isn't it just because you don't want to take the initiative to curry favor? Indeed. Ag did not deny, unlike some protagonists who also hunted heroine like him. He did not like to take the initiative to woo the heroine obviously. It was fine if there was a situation that allowed him to take the initiative without losing face. But if not. For example like this. Harina, good job. Here's a drink for you. Eh? Aji Kun. Why are you suddenly? At that time, the girl must have seen that he was trying to approach her and tried to seduce her which made the girl secretly must be proud, right? Although he knew Harina might not be that type of girl, but he himself disliked suddenly approaching a girl with such obvious intentions. It made him feel disgusted with himself. It wasn't the same as him trying to approach AI who happened to need his help to take a sanitary napkin and he could utilize this to approach her. But to approach Harina? If there was no good opportunity, he wouldn't make a move. Then what was he standing here for almost an hour for? Well that's a plot. Fortunately today there was a plot that allowed him to approach the girl without losing face. Seeing the purple haired girl occasionally glance at him awkwardly. Okay, it's time. Miss System thought her host would move, but no, he was still standing there. It's just that his inner voice sounded. Harina didn't know what happened to her today. She felt her mood was worse than usual. She was sad. Depressed often absent-minded. Even when doing her usual tennis club activities, she now can't focus and often can't hit the balls coming towards her. It's been almost a week since she felt like this. Today is worse. Put aside the matter of Rito, the boy she used to like. Yes, she used to. Now she no longer liked Rito so much, especially after the boy disappointed her so many times with his bad actions. The things that happened yesterday where Rito tried to make Run fall in love with him in that way was the final blow to her heart that made Rito no longer there. Well, maybe she still thinks about that boy sometimes. But that was it, it shouldn't have put her in such a bad mood like now. Even though the interschool tennis tournament will start the day after tomorrow and she as a member of the tennis club was also selected as a representative to participate in the tournament. But her current condition makes her worried. And actually she also wondered what Ag was doing on the sidelines of the tennis club. The boy was just standing there watching the people at the tennis club. No, was he watching herself? What is he doing there? I bet none of his girls are here. Wait, could he be after me after all this time? Harina felt a little excited at this thought, but she also became wary. Although she didn't hate Aji so far, she was even a little interested in him, especially when she kept thinking about his cock that she accidentally saw. Harina. You lost the ball again. Ah. Uh, sorry. Her face flushed, she felt embarrassed thinking of lewd things while playing tennis. She was a little upset as to why Aji was even there. What was he up to? Honestly, she was not in the mood, and now she was even more unfocused. She didn't blame Aji for that, it was just that she felt something was wrong with her. Harina, you played really badly today. 
The senior member of the tennis club from the third year reprimanded her, she looked at her with a mocking gaze. Harina lowered her head. Sorry senpai, I... I'm just not feeling well today. The third year senior snorted. Soon the interschool tournament will start and you're in this condition. Yesterday and a few days ago were also like this. Harina san, I think you should resign from the tournament that will be held the day after tomorrow and let other members replace you. She froze at this, even though she had been practicing hard for these few months for the tournament. Although she used to think about her love affairs a lot, every day, she never forgot to practice tennis so hard. Why did she practice so hard? It was because she wanted to be a professional tennis player. Just like her older sister. This interschool tournament is her first step. She couldn't just lose this opportunity. Harina forced a smile, she looked at the third-year senior with a tighter grip on her tennis racket. Senpai, don't worry. I just happen to be not feeling well. I'm sure tomorrow I'll be back to my usual self and be able to participate in the tournament normally. You. The third-year senior looked displeased. Actually Harina was chosen as the representative of the interschool tennis tournament because her skills were the best among all the club members. If there was no Harina, she was the one who should have been the representative for the tournament because her tennis skills were only slightly worse than the purple-haired girl. Seeing Harina looking unkind this week, today she decided to make the girl give up and let her take her place. But the third-year senior sighed, she wasn't impulsive either. Even so, she looked at Harina coldly. Well Harina-san, you said tomorrow you should be back to normal, right? If at that time your condition was still as bad as it is now. You really should let someone else take your place. Not just me, even everyone in this club thinks the same as me, right? Hearing the senior's words, the girls in the tennis club looked a little intimidated, but they agreed and some of them just didn't want to cause trouble by disagreeing. It's just that Harina, that girl is pathetic. The girl lowered her head while biting her lips with a sad expression. Oof. Let's go. The senior turned around and left with her two friends. By the way she also glanced at Eiji who was watching not far away and seemed to be trying to tease him with her gaze. However, Eiji didn't notice her at all and didn't even look at her which made her annoyed and actually left with her friends. At this moment, when Harina left and told the other tennis members that she was going to rest for a while. Sitting on a long bench not far from the tennis court. The truth was that she just wanted to adjust her mood, and she was also actually very worried hearing what the senior had said earlier. If tomorrow she is still like this, she will really be replaced by someone else. She didn't want that. She wants to join the tournament. She. The pathetic Harina. What a pity. Harina smiled wryly. What? Is that boy mocking me? He's probably watching all this time just to see how bad I am, right? When that senior scolded me, he didn't even come to help. Just kidding, who am I to him anyway? Her mood getting worse, she looked sadly at the tennis racket in her hand. However, what she heard next left her dumbfounded. Should I help her? I actually know what's wrong with Harina. Even if that girl says she'll be back to normal tomorrow, the truth is that she won't be able to. Why? Why can't she? Is she really going to be replaced by someone else in the tournament to be held the day after tomorrow? Harina was extremely reluctant, she naturally looked at Eiji who was standing far in front of her. From her vantage point, she could only clearly see his silver hair, but she knew right now that boy was looking at her. It seems like a long time ago that Harina felt something was wrong with her, it must have started a week ago where she probably disliked protagonist Rito more and more. Yes. Yes. It did start a week ago. Wait, why is Rito mentioned here? Does it have anything to do with him? Harina was confused, but she finally knew why her condition became like this after hearing the next words. The will of the world, or so I call it. Seeing a heroine like Harina who was unlikely to be with the protagonist, she changed the plot and decided to create a scenario so that Harina could fall in love with the protagonist again. How? Well right now, ordinary people can't see it, but me? I can see that in Harina's body there is something called a loose soul. Loose soul? What is that? Is it something dangerous? I'm going to die. Oh no, Eiji Kun said, this thing might make me fall in love with you Aki Kun again. Knowing this, Harina felt disgusted. Who is the will of the world? Are you a mother who forces a girl to fall in love with your son? Even so, she was now panicking. So all this time, her condition became this bad because of that thing called loose soul. Naturally, she was naturally patting herself down and wondering how to get that thing out of her body. Runaway spirit or loose soul, as the name suggests. It is actually a spectral being that has been freed from the confines of hell. It's actually a creature from another franchise, 
but the world's will was crazy and she threw such a creature at Harana so that she could create a plot that would allow protagonist Rito to do something like cure Harana. And how to cure her? People who have been possessed by loose souls, they will actually always feel depressed and over time will feel that life is boring until they decide to commit suicide. Harana was horrified to hear this, she, what should she do to get that thing out of her body? A.G., that boy must know, right? And sure enough, that boy knew and he told her from his inner voice. She was happy of course, but she was also surprised and hesitant because the way to get the loose soul out of her body was by dash a slash n, if you want to read 8 advanced chapters with a faster update frequency than the web novel, you can read it on my Patreon whose link is below. HTTPS slash slash www.patreon.com slash doglicker. Replace A with A and search in your browser. By the way, don't forget to throw power stones and leave a review to motivate me, smiley face, comment. 36 comment. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 88, Harana's Hope and Aji's Help. The way to cure a person possessed by a loose soul is to make that person fall in love with someone. In Harana's case, the girl had to fall in love with a man in order for the loose soul inside her to leave her body. Harana widened her eyes, she didn't know what to say. In this plot, the next few days after Harana became more depressed because she was replaced by someone else for the inter-school tennis tournament. The loose soul inside her makes her condition worse. She is often absent-minded and feels that the world is very unpleasant. Not long after that, she was almost hit by a car on the road which fortunately she survived because the protagonist Rito saved her. Even though it was a coincidence that Rito was there, but that situation was created because the world's will was very cunning and made such a scenario to make a girl like Harana's heart flutter. Not only was the loose soul successfully removed from Harana's body, but the girl also fell in love with Rito again. Is there such a thing? The will of the world is scary. Harana felt her head throbbing, she felt sick knowing her own future. Although she knew how to remove the loose soul from her body so that she could return to normal and be able to participate in the tournament that would be held the day after tomorrow without worry. But. But. The trick is that she has to fall in love with someone. And it just so happened that the plot this time was deliberately created so that she could fall in love with Rito again. If it was her a few weeks ago where she was still stupid and blind to like Rito so much. She was fine and would rather go see Rito so that the boy could help her. But now. After she was so disappointed in Rito and had completely thrown away her love for the boy. That thing called a plot wants to manipulate her. Even her, even though she always came across as a good girl. She could not help but be disgusted by the world's will and even Rito who in the plot made her fall in love with him again. Harana certainly did not want to follow things that had been decided by someone like the world's will or whatever it was. Who are you to rule my life? If it's my parents, fine. But who made that cunning plot to manipulate her feelings? She didn't want to let anyone succeed. Even so. What should I do? How can I fall for someone other than Rito? Subconsciously she certainly thought of Eiji, but she quickly shook her head. She was indeed rather attracted to the boy, especially when she remembered his cock which made her blush again. But the boy didn't seem too interested in her which made her sad. Should I help her? The truth is that I was standing here to help that girl. It's just that the way is quite troublesome. I don't mind helping her, but making her fall in love with me. Even if I tell Harana what really happened, she will definitely think I want to take advantage of her. No. I won't think that way. Harana subconsciously said, she was certainly happy to know the other party was standing so long at the edge of the field with the intention of helping her, she was touched and it made her relax her vigilance on Eiji. Turns out the boy was thinking of me. Worrying about me. Makes my heart feel a little sweet. No, if I tell her about the loose soul in her body, it will make it harder for her to fall in love because she's thinking about this. But I already know. Harana was helpless when she heard this and smiled wryly. I've long been able to hear your inner voice, but you didn't know this. Actually she had long wanted to tell Eiji that she could hear his inner voice, but she couldn't say it because her voice always disappeared when she wanted to say those things. But still. Now, would that boy really help her? If it was Eiji, he might, might not be that bad. Even though that boy had a lot of women, he was a good person, even to the point of being willing to stand there for so long to help her. Harana felt that if in order to get the loose soul out of her body she had to fall in love with someone, she felt that if that person was Eiji, she now wouldn't mind. It was actually because the situation was urgent and the tournament she wanted to join was getting closer, remembering what she promised to the senior before. She felt Eiji was the only person who could help her. Before tomorrow, she must recover and be able to play tennis normally. Although now she can also play tennis, but her skills have become so bad as if her body is not her own. This feeling is very annoying. From a distance, 
she looked at Eiji who was standing in the distance with an expectant gaze. From another person's point of view, the two seemed to be a girl and a boy looking at each other from a distance. With the background of the tennis court, the orange sky, and the leaves flying from the trees. People feel like they are looking at a spring scene where they would be mistaken just by looking at it. Oh my! What are these two people doing? Looking at each other for so long. If people said it was a staring contest, they wouldn't believe it. However, at this moment, the girl side panicked. No, no, aren't you going to help me? Why are you leaving? Harina was dumbfounded, she looked at Eiji's back who instead of approaching her, he just left the tennis court area and left from there. She couldn't even see his back anymore which made her hand that was stretched out into the air, instantly fall. She was left behind. Eiji seemed to have changed his mind and did not want to help her. Why? 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 Is she less beautiful than Lala and the others or what? Was it because she had previously dated Rito who was the boy's enemy or what? Harina didn't understand, she felt desperate now and wondered if Eiji hated her. Thinking about this, she felt very uncomfortable. I feel like this world is getting gloomy. How about asking Rito for help? That boy might be willing to help her get the loose soul out of her body in exchange for her falling in love with him again. Thinking of this, she shook her head, disgusted at being almost tempted. Falling in love with Rito? Wasn't that the same as following the scenario created by the world's will or whoever it was? No, it wasn't. She wouldn't do that. Glancing at the tennis racket in her hand, she gripped it tightly. What if her tennis playing skills became poor due to the influence of loose soul? If she practiced harder while ignoring all the uncomfortable feelings in her body? Perhaps, she could at least play tennis normally and be able to enter the tournament the day after tomorrow. What's more important is to convince the people in her club that she's fine. Harina, we're done practicing. Let's go home. The girls in the tennis club said that with their respective bags, but she stood up and shook her head. No, you guys just go home first. I'll still continue practicing in a bit. Eh, are you sure? Didn't you say you weren't feeling well before? One of the girls said worriedly. Harina forced smile. It's okay, I'm already feeling better. I still have to improve my skills before the tournament starts. Although the girls nodded, there were also some of them who sneered. These girls. They must really want to replace her. Even so, she didn't think much of it and decided to duel with the wall until nightfall. The sun has set. The moon shines brightly. Although at this time of the year, usually all the students and teachers at school have gone home. But. The purple-haired girl who continued to practice tennis alone at the tennis court did not. The silver-haired boy who was currently watching the purple-haired girl from a hidden place was not either. Both of them were still at school. Now Eiji was leaning against a tree yawning and occasionally looking at his watch. It's almost 8 p.m. already. Oh my. How long is this girl going to practice? Not afraid of breaking her hand. Luckily he had already told Lala and the others that he would be home late and they could eat dinner and sleep without waiting for him. Miss System also kept watching Harina from earlier, she was bored to death and couldn't resist asking her doubts. Host, host. What? This woman definitely didn't understand what he was doing and he needed to explain. Yes, you need to explain what you did. You could have just gone straight to Harina's aid and let her be moved until she fell in love with you. That way, you managed to get the girl in your pocket. But no, you suddenly left and abandoned the girl. Isn't that the same as making the girl think that you don't care about her? That girl must hate you. Miss System, you're naive. A.G. sighed, his breath looked like smoke in the night that let people know that it was quite cold tonight. Even so, in fact he was not cold at all with his power. His blue eyes that looked like galaxies never left the figure of the purple-haired girl who continued to train at night and beat the wall in front of him with tennis balls. He was secretly manipulating the wind around the girl to keep her from freezing. He's very gentle and caring, right? Cough, host. When are you going to explain? This woman still hasn't given up? You're such a curious baby. A.G. rolled his eyes and said, Miss System, you don't understand. Yes, I don't understand. You're not denying? Look if I helped Harina right away. Wouldn't that be too easy? I feel like I've said this before but... A person will only appreciate what she gets when trying hard or being desperate in the process. An old saying. Don't know where he had heard it from. He himself had forgotten. I kind of understand, but... But how long are you going to keep standing there? You're bored. A.G. asked with amusement. Yes. Then play with your friends. Don't you have any friends? You, you. Whatever, I'll ignore you and see if you make it or not. 
Well. It's good that the woman finally shut up. But speaking of friends. Does Miss System have any friends out there? I feel like she's a loner type of woman who's a workaholic and her only entertainment is watching me from a distance. Stopping thinking about stupid things, A.G. smiled. Why? It's because the time has come. That girl, Harina who saw her tennis skills not improving and instead getting worse started packing up and preparing to go home. However, her beautiful face looked sad, she looked so sad that her eyes turned red as if she wanted to cry at any moment. Yatter yatter, girl, you are pathetic. But don't worry, you're almost there. Not far after exiting the tennis court. Still at school. Harina walked in a daze. She, she seems to be completely incapable of participating in the tournament and she will be replaced by someone else. Even if she had practiced so hard. Putting aside her increasingly bad mood and sadness that Ag had even left her, but her tennis skills were also getting worse. Now she can't even hit the ball coming towards her, even though the speed of the ball is not too fast and it should be easy, she can't do it and her shots always miss. Loose soul. Is it because of that thing? Hate. Harina's eyes watered even more, seeing that no one could possibly see her. She crouched down on the road and started crying. It's over. I can't participate in that competition. That tournament. Hicks I can't. Tears began to flow down her cheeks. So sad. Bitter. Sick. It felt like all the negative emotions filled her heart. Oni-san, Hicks Hicks. Even though I've been practicing hard. But. But. This happened. Hicks Hicks ah. She called out to her older sister subconsciously. Remembering something inside her would also make her commit suicide someday. She was getting desperate. Why? Why did she have to experience these strange things? Because she's a heroine? Protagonist's mother pushed her into this desperate situation? No one helped her. Protagonist Rito doesn't even exist. Ag. That boy had already left earlier even though he said he wouldn't mind helping her. Liar. Even so, when she remembered Ag had no obligation to help her, she laughed bitterly. Right, who was she to Ag anyway? She was just a classmate who wasn't even close to him. There was no one to help her. There was no one to help her. No one cares for a girl like her. Even if she is one of the heroine, unlike Lala and the others who are happy. She wasn't, she seemed to have a bad ending. Looking at her own blisters from practicing too much, her tears also began to fall onto her hands and touch her blisters. It was painful. At this moment, the sound of flapping wings was heard. White feathers fell from the dark night sky. Pigeons. But it's night, why? Lifting her head up, she was stunned as something suddenly covered her face. Picking up the object with her hand. It turned out to be a handkerchief. At the same time. This girl is pathetic. I still haven't gotten home from school from earlier and saw her practicing so hard that she hurt her own hand. Seeing her crying so hard. I was planning to help remove the loose soul from her body, but it's not easy to make a girl suddenly fall in love, okay. And I didn't expect this girl to cry first. If I go out now and suddenly appear in front of her. That's too suspicious, Harina will probably think I'm stalking her. Fortunately, I was able to conjure up some pigeons with my magic to give her a handkerchief. With this, at least the girl will wipe her tears and stop crying, right? Damn it. Stop crying heroine. I can't stand seeing a girl cry. I'm not far to your right. Protagonist, where are you? Your heroine is crying and very sad here. You didn't come? What protagonist? Puffed. Harina who had been crying suddenly laughed at this. Knowing that the handkerchief in her hand turned out to be Ag's and that boy still hadn't come home just because he wanted to help her. He didn't lie. He was still here. He wants to help her. Her mood that had been cloudy was suddenly illuminated by a bit of light. Right side. She looked to her right, and not far away, she saw a silver-haired boy sitting on a long chair by himself. That guy wasn't even hiding. He seemed to be sitting there casually and probably thought he wouldn't find her. When their gazes met, she saw those blue eyes that seemed to glow as if there were stars in them seemed to widen. It was beautiful. From his expression, she knew Ag was surprised she found him which made her smile and unconsciously laugh while covering her mouth. Ag kun What are you doing there? It's rude to peek at a crying girl. Peeking? Indeed. No, wait. I got caught. What should I do? Hey I haven't even started the plan to make this girl fall in love. If it's like this, how can I get the loose soul out of Harina's body? On the surface panicking, inside Ag was secretly grinning. He walked up to Harina awkwardly and raised one hand as if in greeting. Harina, what a coincidence. 
Would you believe me if I said I just finished picketing and accidentally saw you crying here? Picket. What time is it? Harina certainly didn't believe it, especially when she could hear his inner voice and knew the truth. Even so, without realizing it, she stopped crying and started laughing. Seeing this, Eiji smiled. Sometimes to make a girl stop crying, you just need to do something silly to make her laugh. This way, Harina isn't as sad as before, right? So this was intentional? Harina stopped laughing, but still smiled and looked at Eiji gently. Eiji went this far just to make her stop crying. He, he hadn't come home from school until now because he was waiting for her. Something like this, Rito had never even done. No, she shouldn't have to compare a boy like Rito to Eiji because the latter was clearly better. Looking at Harina's gentle gaze at him, Eiji knew he almost succeeded. Harina, you believe in me? Harina shook her head with a smile. I don't, the excuse you made was very bad Eiji kun Why don't you admit to me that you've been waiting for me? What? I didn't. Harina, you misunderstood. He he I knew it, Eiji kun you're very kind. Harina. Unlike the others, you're so kind to me, you want to help me, and you want to do it without me knowing. Eiji kun you're so sweet. Eiji felt that something was wrong here, the other party's soft gentle gaze seemed too much. He felt the script was wrong. No, the script was still right, it was just that he felt Harina was starting to give off a sick girl vibe. But still, there was no doubt that he almost succeeded. Even now he could see. Harina. He didn't finish his words because the purple-haired girl suddenly hugged him. Hey is my plan too effective or am I too handsome? Looks like I'm still underestimating myself. Didn't I already say that you don't need to go this far? You could have easily put Harina in your pocket from the start. A.G. wanted to refute and he actually refuted his system's claim after feeling the girl's body tremble. Harina, the girl was crying in his arms. Hicks Hicks A.G. Kun. I've been practicing tennis so hard, but... But? Whoa. I... I might not be able to join the tournament and I'll be replaced by someone else. The purple-haired girl cried out her troubles, and she started crying again while sobbing. Her tears soaked his clothes. A.G. sighed seeing this. Damn it. Is he overdoing it? He seemed to have pushed this girl too far to get into this situation. It seems that the tennis tournament is more important to her than he thought. Actually, he could have removed the loose soul from Harina's body easily. With his current power, how could he not force a loose soul out of someone's body? If he wanted, he could even obliterate the loose soul in Harina's body right now. However, he was too short-sighted from the start and wanted to benefit from this plot. That was before of course because he... He hugged the girl's slender waist and said. Harina. That tennis tournament is so important to you. Harina raised her head, her violet eyes and Eiji's eyes staring at each other from such a close distance. Although tears were still rolling down her cheeks, she blushed and nodded. On. Then she felt Eiji's fingers wipe away her tears which made her a little surprised. But the shock was nothing compared to what Eiji said next. Under the moonlight, the boy's silver hair seemed to shine. A pair of blue eyes that seemed to have galactic dust in them looked dazzling as they reflected her. Harina was dazed. She saw the boy grinning wickedly which strangely made her excited instead of scared. I see. I might be able to help you right now. Are really A.G. Kun? You can really do it. But, isn't that why I have to? Harina couldn't say what she knew about the loose soul because that seemed to be the same as letting A.G. know she heard his inner voice. So as usual, there was something censoring her voice. What do you have to do? And no. It's nothing, A.G. Kun. You can really help me. The purple-haired girl seemed to change the topic which made Eiji chuckle. He lowered his head and whispered in the girl's ear like a devil wooing his prey. Yes and that's easy. Not just being able to join that tennis tournament. You'll also feel better afterward. Hearing Eiji's voice in her ear where she could feel his breath, Harina swallowed. Her face was very red, especially when she also felt the other party's muscular arms hugging her tighter as if not letting her escape and she could feel something stabbing her stomach. This. This. Isn't this. W what should I do? Dash. A slash N, if you want to read 8 advanced chapters with a faster update frequency than the web novel, you can read it on my Patreon whose link is below. HTTPS slash slash www.patreon.com slash doglicker. Replace A with A and search in your browser. By the way, don't forget to throw power stones and leave a review to motivate me, smiley face. A slash N2, this world will thing that I mentioned will only last a few chapters a person I said in the previous few chapters. This is what I meant and I know it's stupid, and this spoiler too, but I'm the kind of author who can't keep quiet on things that I think could make people misunderstand that this thing will last a long time.
By the way I added that kind of O element just to add some plot. At least before chapter 100, the protagonist and this annoying thing will die. Comment. 39 Comment. Vote. 0 left. Chapter 89, Aegis change of plan. She actually already had a few guesses in her mind. But if it could get her back to normal, and if it with Aegis, she. You don't have to do anything. Eh. Harina was confused. Aegi released her from his embrace. Unlike before, the boy was no longer grinning and was just smiling casually. She felt reluctant. B but you said you wanted to help me, you. I've done it. What did you say? I'm saying I've done it, you can participate in the tournament or whatever normally now. Harina didn't know what to say, what was this boy talking about? But when feeling her own body. Indeed, she did feel that her body became lighter. This. This was very different from before where she felt very uncomfortable. She even felt that she could hit hundreds of tennis balls flying towards her with precision. Of course, that was just a feeling she could describe as now her body feels better and better than before. She felt full of strength. Staring at Eiji, she wondered what that boy was doing to her. What about the loose soul inside her body? Didn't in order to get it out of her, she had to fall in love with someone? Suddenly she heard a strange noise behind her, she naturally turned her head only to see a large light blue creature with red eyes and a red mouth that looked like a spirit in cartoons. It wasn't quite as creepy as ghosts in horror movies, but still. Kya. Creature, what is that creature Aji Kun? She naturally immediately hid behind the boy's body and hugged him with a terrified expression. It wasn't too scary, but its size, which was bigger than a house, scared her. Aji laughed at this, he pointed at the creature floating in the air and said. That's loose soul, he's a creature that has possessed your body since a week ago. Because of his presence in your body, you've become depressed a lot and your body feels very uncomfortable. So that's it? Oh, you already know. He smiled playfully. The purple-haired girl panicked. And no, I... I mean because of that creature I can't play tennis well. A.G. pretended to believe this, he didn't ask further. But how did this thing get out of my body? Harina was confused. After all, didn't someone say that to get a loose soul out of her body, she had to fall in love with a man first? So why now? She knew it was A.G. who did it, but why didn't that boy say earlier that he could do this? If he had done it earlier, wouldn't she not have to cry and be sad like before? She looked at the silver-haired boy suspiciously. Don't tell me he did it on purpose. Removing the loose soul from Harina's body by force was harder than I thought. Gosh, if I didn't want to pretend to be strong in front of a girl, I would have vomited blood by now. Harina was dumbfounded hearing this. And if she took a better look at Aji's face, she saw that the boy's skin was paler than usual, although he was still smiling as if nothing was wrong. Aji Kun, are you alright? What do you mean, Harina? I'm fine. Liar. You, you, why are you forcing yourself to? The purple-haired girl bit her lip, her eyes started to turn red again and she hugged him tighter than before. A.G. wanted to say that his acting skills were not bad. Of course they were. How could just letting out a loose soul be enough to make him so limp? His current pale appearance was just acting. Because Harina looked so pitiful and he himself was too soft. He changed his plan in order to solve Harina's problem faster. But of course. This was not without its own benefits as the girl is now deeply moved by his act of self-harm to help her. This trick. This is one of the many tricks to win a woman's heart. If you can't get her heart just by making the process of helping her look difficult. You can also get her heart with a process that looks easy but you have to make yourself look miserable in front of her eyes. Most women out there who have a heart, they will definitely flinch at this kind of action. Even Harina, the girl is no exception. Since she was hugging him, pressing her breasts against his back, he could clearly hear the girl's heart pounding. This kind of thing. There was no mistaking it. I can see the ending. A.G. Kun. Harina, wait a minute. I still have to eliminate this loose soul. Otherwise, he'll escape and possess someone else's body out there. I can't let something like that happen. Although his face looked pale, his heroic words and handsome face were very effective in making Harina's gaze become even more mesmerized and infatuated. She let go of the boy and looked at his back as he walked towards the creature that was actually as big as a school building in a daze. Loose soul, or so it was called. The creature screeched with an ominous sound. Instead of fighting back with his huge body, he was actually a coward and would rather run away after being expelled from the body of the person he possessed earlier. And he did, especially when he saw the silver-haired and blue-eyed human staring at him. Just from his gaze, he felt terror and he knew it was better to run away than to fight the other party. Besides, a loose soul like him didn't even have the ability to fight. 
he was actually only a mid-level Lu Soul and his only advantage was his endurance as a spirit that should be immune to physical attacks and magic attacks to some extent. If it was the people of the runaway spirit squad, those people would definitely prefer to catch every Lu Soul like him in a jar in this situation and he would be locked up again in hell. Fortunately, he was not facing the runaway spirit squad. So he was confident enough to escape. Want to escape? Step. Step. The sound of his footsteps and his calmed voice could be heard clearly in the schoolyard. Who gave you permission? Eiji who was originally walking in the schoolyard suddenly appeared above the big Lu Soul's head. His body was floating in the sky with the fist swinging casually, but the power contained in it was. Boom. Eek. The clouds covering the sky above the school were blown away for several kilometers of meters which proved how hard the blow was. Like a curtain that had just been opened, a starry blue sky and a beautiful moon were clearly visible in the sky. Many people in the city wondered when they saw this of course. But put that aside. Lu Sol who had originally flown off to escape roared in pain. His shrill voice echoed through the school. His large body immediately fell to the ground and rolled around. Impossible. His head was hit by that human and it hurt like his physical defenses were useless. It was so painful that his soul trembled as if it would collapse if it received a few more blows from him. Oh. Though that's 50% of the Saint Galaxy man's physical power. Now I understand why in the original work those guys preferred to capture many of you. The loose soul body has a defense that is not bad and most people would have a hard time killing you directly. A.G. landed on the ground and walked over to the loose soul step by step. There was an amused smile on his face that made that loose soul tremble in fear. But what about me? Why don't you feel my punches a few more times? Three punch? Two punch? Hmm. How about one more punch? The feeling of terror he felt from the human was not wrong. He was scarier than the people in the runaway spirit squad. He had to run. Run away from here as soon as possible. He was even starting to regret why he possessed the body of a girl in this school. Seeing the large light blue creature flying again and faster this time. Crack. The ground beneath his feet broke, Eiji's body flying like a bullet. Instantly, he flew beside a loose soul with a wide smile and blue eyes that seemed to glow. Eek. I haven't even hit you again, but you're already screaming. Am I that scary? You're scary as hell. Lu Sol would definitely say that if she could speak properly. However, it was not like before. Now his huge body suddenly broke apart, becoming smaller and scattering across each of the school's spacious buildings. Each of the fragments naturally escaped and planned to reunite somewhere. Eiji who saw this was a little surprised, but still smiled. Standing on the roof of one of the school buildings. He suddenly remembered a certain spell of Anos and he felt that the situation was suitable to use that spell. There was no need to blow up Rias and Sana's entire school. And there was no need to worry about Harina who was watching in the distance being affected. Raising one of her hands forward as if grasping something. YG NEAs. Instantly, his hand glowed with a bluish white aura. This is a spell that transcends distance, allowing its user to grasp and hold anything in the palm of their hand, no matter how far away it is. The user is not limited by the number of his hands and can grasp multiple objects or living beings simultaneously and move them in various directions. In his case, he certainly dragged all the scattered loose soul body parts to one place and that was right in front of him. In just a few seconds, the loose soul bodies that were previously scattered in all directions immediately gathered and became one again as before. The large light blue creature reappeared in front of his eyes with an expression of shock and fear. Eek. 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 He screamed and wanted to run away again, but it was useless, he couldn't because his body was locked in the air as if his huge body was grasped by something. A.G. stared at the creature in front of him indifferently. Yo, we meet again. Still want to play chase? Unfortunately I'm already bored, I'd rather play with a girl than with you. So let's end it here. Goodbye. Lightly, he strengthened the grip of his glowing hands and the large loose soul's body looked like it was grasped so hard. The creature continued to scream eek. Eek. Before its body popped like a balloon that decorated the sky with fireworks. The last one was obviously just a special effect that A.G. added and it was done for the sake of impressing a girl. He added the illusion of a pleasant and romantic background music that he remembered from the franchise where Lu Sol came from. With this Harina was definitely captured, right? Harina. Her violet eyes reflected A.G.'s handsome figure standing with a starry sky filled with fireworks. Would when the Lu Sol was killed, he would create fireworks. She didn't know. But this melody. Did she hear it wrong? No she did hear the background music being played at this time. And it sounded very suitable in this situation. Her heart was beating fast like a deer that had been running around. She wasn't surprised at the supernatural power A.G. had shown during his battle with the loose soul. After all, 
After hearing his inner voice all this time, she knew the supernatural was real. Seeing the silver-haired boy suddenly appear in front of her, she stared at him without blinking. From Aji's perspective, he could see Harina had the look of a girl in love in her eyes which made him not in satisfaction mentally. Even so, he was still not satisfied and had to add more love points with his acting skills. Cough, cough. With the same pale face as before, he was now coughing up blood countless times in front of Harina's eyes. That would further convince the girl that after forcibly removing the loose soul from her body and fighting with the loose soul earlier, he worked so hard that he hurt himself for her. Harina's eyes were instantly colored with worry, she looked like she was about to cry and hugged his body frantically. Aji Kun. Aji Kun. Are you okay? The hospital. We have to go to the hospital right now. However, the silver haired boy's reply surprised her. It was not an answer that came from his mouth, but from his inner voice. There's no need to go to the hospital. I just need to rest for a while. Actually to recover my condition. It will be faster if I sleep with a girl, cough. Although this sounds strange, my special physique allows me to recover quickly if I do those things. After this, I should go home immediately and ask Lala or Kurika to speed up my recovery in bed. A.G. wondered if this was enough. And that seems to be enough. The girl caught his bait. The girl, Harina blushed, she seemed to hesitate for a moment, but there was determination in her eyes that was filled with shame. Then. A.G. Kun, why don't you rest at my house? It just so happens that it's not that far from the school and my family is out of town. I if you want, you can stay overnight there. After all, you helped get that thing out of my body and you got hurt helping me. So let me repay your kindness. Repay my kindness? You mean by staying at the house of a girl who lives alone? Well. Harina was worried whether A.G. would reject her. If he did, she would feel sad and heartbroken. Sure, let's go to your house. But in fact, that boy did not take long to immediately agree to her offer. He didn't hesitate to agree. He. Is it okay to bring a wolf into the house? Her father, mother, and older sister were not at home. If she gets eaten. Although she wasn't quite sure what A.G. meant about sleeping with a girl and doing those things to speed up her recovery. Remembering A.G.'s thing that pierced her stomach not long ago. She swallowed. Maybe she wouldn't refuse if A.G. really wanted to eat her after arriving at her house. This would be the first time she invited a boy to stay at her house. As for Rito. Who was that? That boy had never even been invited to her house. When the silver-haired boy and the purple-haired girl left. Not long after that. Another girl with purple hair, but longer that reached her waist had just arrived at the school. The girl was holding a jet black scythe with skull decorations. There was a purple scarf that seemed to float in the air while wrapped around her neck. She took out a device from her pocket that had recently been making noise, Pero, 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 Pero. It was actually a detector that could help her detect loose soul's whereabouts. A few minutes ago, the device had detected the fluctuation of a mid-level loose soul in this school. She came here to capture the loose soul, but when she arrived at the scene, she saw nothing. Even the loose soul detector in her hand had stopped beeping. Strange. Did I come too late? It looks like the cake Tama I detected earlier has gone somewhere else or he's already found someone's body to possess. Cake Tama. That was the Japanese version of the name loose soul had. Usually people from the runaway spirit squad called loose soul by this title. And that purple-haired girl, she happens to be one of the members of the runaway spirit squad who is currently tasked with searching for loose souls who escaped from hell. Dash. A slash N, if you want to read 8 advanced chapters with a faster update frequency than the web novel, you can read it on my Patreon whose link is below. HTTPS slash slash www.patreon.com slash doglicker. Replace A with A and search in your browser. By the way, don't forget to throw power stones and leave a review to motivate me, smiley face, comment. 39 comment. Vote. 0 left. Chapter 90, Staying at Harina's House. Haqua do lot herminium. Commonly called Haqua by her friends. Oh no, they are not her friends. Actually it's more like her classmates or colleagues. There were also some friends, but due to her rather arrogant personality, she hardly recognized anyone as her friends. She had also never admitted that until now, unlike her other colleagues or her friends in the runaway spirit squad who had managed to capture Cake Tama on more than one occasion. She, despite being the best graduate in her class with the highest grades had also managed to join the runaway spirit squad. She, Haqua du Lot Herminium, has never managed to catch a single Cake Tama in her more than 300 years of age. 300 years old was in fact still considered very young for a devil in New Hell and Haqua was one of the youngest members of the runaway spirit squad. But still. 
Some other young members of the Runaway Spirit Squad had even managed to capture at least one cake Tamil less than a year after they successfully joined the Runaway Spirit Squad. The Runaway Spirit Squad was a special organization created by New Hell to capture loose souls slash cake Tama who escaped from Hell. It was the number one organization in New Hell and many New Hell devils aspired to join the organization after graduating from their education. Haqua was the best graduated devil in New Hell about 10 years ago, and it had been 10 years since she became one of the members of the Runaway Spirit Squad. But unlike her brilliant performance at school, in the Runaway Spirit Squad, she. Ugh. Why am I always unlucky like this? Even though I managed to detect that cake Tama. I'm sure its location is here. But where is that creature now? Haqua stomped the ground in annoyance, her pretty face pouting because again she failed to catch cake Tama. Compared to cake Tama who had possessed the body of someone who was difficult to catch after that happened. The cake Tama she detected earlier was known to not be possessing someone's body. That kind of cake Tama was an easy catch. Especially when it was a mid-level cake Tama. Haqua was very confident she could catch that cake Tama just by opening the cake Tama catcher bottle in front of the creature and after that she would successfully catch the cake Tama for the first time. However. That cake Tama was not here. Either she had run away somewhere else, possessed someone's body, or. Haqua shook her head. There's no way someone would have caught that cake Tama before me. I'm the only runaway spirit squad in charge of searching for cake Tama in this Kuah city. While flying and checking every corner of the school using the purple scarf around her neck called HAG Oromo. Unlike her cake Tama detector, HAG Oromo has a flight function and other functions such as capturing slash searching for suspicious objects in the vicinity. The school grounds were clean without any traces of battle or anything. Haqua finally realized something. As far as her eyes could see there was nothing wrong, but she could feel the fluctuations of Kakatama's energy and other people's magic lingering in the air. The fluctuation was very small, but as the best graduate devil from New Hell. Although she had not managed to capture a single cake Tama so far, she was able to detect the energy fluctuations left behind. She even knew that the cake Tama was indeed here before, he was here and he seemed to have fought with someone. Haqua widened her eyes. No way. I'm the only runaway spirit squad assigned to this town, so it's impossible for anyone else to catch that cake Tama. Unless that person is a member of my runaway spirit squad who has the task of capturing cake Tama who has special tools and techniques to capture that creature. That person can't possibly catch that cake Tama, right? Unless. She rubbed her chin and thought of certain possibilities that she thought were ridiculous, especially when she often looked down on most people she thought were beneath her. I almost think that the person who fought with Cake Tama has killed that Cake Tama. Sigh. That's ridiculous. It was not impossible to kill Cake Tama directly, even for her with all the spells and weapons in her hands. But as the people of the Runaway Spirit Squad, she knew how difficult it was to break through a loose soul's physical defenses. Many of them preferred to use special techniques or tools to capture loose souls because it was easier to do. Even so, with Haqua's personality of looking down on others, she immediately denied whoever it was that came before her had killed Cake Tama with her own power. Hmm. What is this? Suddenly as she walked around the schoolyard, she stepped on something. She picked up the object and was dumbfounded when she saw it. So handsome. Cough. I mean, what foolish human would drop his student card here? The object she picked up was the student card of a student at the school she was at. Since it was a student's student card, Naturally there was a photo of the student's face on it and that was what made Haqua who had been single for over 300 years blush a little. But she quickly calmed herself down. It was just a human after all, she looked down on humans, even if their appearance was very handsome or beautiful. Reading the information on the student card, she could also tell the name of the owner. Ajcea? So that's his name. Haqua muttered. Don't misunderstand. It wasn't that she was interested in the student card owner, she was just... That's right, she suspected that the cake Tama she had previously detected had possessed that boy named Ajcea. She put the student card into her pocket. What was she planning to do? Not too late. I have to find that boy to take out the cake Tama in his body. Haqua who was previously upset now seemed excited after finding the clue. She thought that Ajcea was not the source of the magic fluctuations she felt before, nor could she accept the idea that human had killed that cake Tama. She rather believed that Ajcea had been possessed by that cake Tama. But whatever it was, Haqua caught the bait. On the other side. A.G. actually dropped his student card at school on purpose. It's not that he thought Haqua would find his student card. Actually, he just did it on a whim when he thought of several possibilities that someone from the franchise might find his student card. He was just betting on his luck to create a plot that connected him with the heroine. Right now he had no idea that one of the heroine from the franchise had actually picked up his student card and had the idea to look for him. 
if he knew, he would just smile and wait. Having watched many franchises in his previous life, he was certainly familiar with the plot of the heroine dropping an item and it just so happened to be found by the protagonist. He just reversed that plot, he didn't expect it to work. But put that aside. That's for later. Right now he's going to have fun with Harina. In the girl's house which did not seem too big or small, to be precise, inside her bedroom which was feminine and had several photos of the protagonist Rito in it. The first time the girl found him he looked at the photo. She frantically explained that they were pictures from middle school and she had forgotten to throw them away. Her reaction was too much, she could see the girl was worried that he thought she still liked Rito. She was about to remove the photos of Rito from her room, but he stopped her. The girl was confused. He said, it's okay, this will be more fun. Harina seemed clueless at the time. Even so, after a shower and dinner together. The girl offered to sleep together in her room on the grounds that there were no other empty rooms in her house except for her parents and older sisters which of course could not be used carelessly. She was wearing a thigh-length purple nightgown that showed off her white shoulders and curves. As one of the heroine, she was undoubtedly beautiful. A.G. pretended to be surprised. Harina, I don't mind sleeping on the living room sofa. You actually don't need to. No. I.I.V.E. invited you to stay at my house, A.G. Kun. How could I let you sleep on the sofa? Despite trying to look calm, her flushed cheeks could not hide her nervousness and embarrassment. This girl is flirting with me, right? I was just planning on resting normally. Although not as fast as when I sleep with a girl. Cough, I'm fine with that. But what's with this girl? She's suddenly very aggressive to get me to sleep with her. Harina became even more embarrassed when she heard this. She certainly knew her current actions were too bold. If it was her before today, she would definitely not be this brave. But after seeing A.G. help her this far, she couldn't help but fall in love with the boy and when she heard the boy was going to another girl. She. She crazily asked the boy to stay at her house. Harina, Harina, what are you thinking? You're too impulsive. Even if you like A.G. Kun. Isn't it too soon to give yourself to him tonight? Harina suddenly hesitated, but when she saw A.G.'s still pale face with an expression that pretended to be fine. She had the urge to push the boy into her bed to let him rest as soon as possible. Harina. At first A.G. wanted to pretend to be reluctant a few more times, but he didn't expect the girl to immediately push him onto her bed. The girl was now straddling him and she was pressing her modest breasts into his chest. Rito, you're going to get the green hat again. He secretly used his magic to do something and contacted someone. A.G. Kun. Harina's violet eyes seemed to have a sense of shame, but there was also lust in them, especially when she saw A.G. was on her bed and she was straddling him in a perverted position like this. Feeling something poking her ass, she immediately recalled A.G.'s penis that she had often dreamed of. By the way that boy was now wearing a white shirt and shorts that he created with his magic. She suddenly thought wouldn't it be easy to take off A.G.'s pants in this situation? Seeing the boy's surprised expression, she became more energized and courageous. Tell me A.G. Kun. Is there any way to make you heal faster? If there is, just tell me and I'll do it for you. Huh? Why are you suddenly asking this? I just need to rest and I'll heal by myself. Lies. A.G. Kun, I know you actually have a way to heal yourself faster, right? But because of what method you should use, you hesitated to ask me because you didn't want to trouble me. A.G. wanted to say that Harina's brain circuits were almost as good as Rias at interpreting things like this. It made him so comfortable that he wondered if it was because of his harem halo. Well whatever it was, he certainly wouldn't refuse good things to him. Although he would pretend to be reluctant at first, but in the end he would eat Harina up tonight. Looking at A.G. who seemed to be silent as if hesitant to answer. Harina knew the boy would not want to say that. He would rather suffer than take advantage of a girl like her. If it was another boy. For example like Rito, he would definitely take advantage of her to ask her for perverted things in this situation. After helping her and making her indebted to him. Rito would definitely do that without hesitation. Which made her dislike him. But A.G. was different. He was worried about her feelings not even willing to mention what kind of method could actually make him heal faster. Actually from his inner voice earlier, she could already guess it must be something perverted because he needed the help of Lala or a woman named Kurika in bed. Even so, knowing A.G. didn't want to ask her for such things and pretending there was no such method. Harina was so moved that she wanted to give her body and soul to that boy tonight. And she did, precisely after she heard his inner voice accidentally reveal what perverted methods he had to heal himself faster. Rito had just finished dinner with his younger sister. Lately he's been focusing on increasing his power. Feeling his void dragon bloodline getting thicker inside his body, he felt his body 20 times stronger since he was slapped by A.G. last time. 
he was getting stronger. Ha 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 ha. I did it. I got promoted to Void Distorter. Void Distorter. This is a race that feeds on universal radiation and fixed star energy. As long as there are radiation and stars in this world, his body will become stronger and his ability to manipulate the void will also increase. Although the process is not so fast and can be said to be slow unless he directly injects himself void dragon bone marrow in that place which can make him directly promoted to a higher level. But that's okay. Rito was satisfied with his current increase in power and felt he could slap Eiji for the first time. After all unlike him, that bastard was human. No, he might be an alien with strange powers. But compared to his alien race that was trash. Rito was confident that his race as a second tier void being called a void distorter was superior to Eiji. Now he was very confident in his power. He was also confident that he could get back Lala, Yui, and Run who had fallen into Eiji's hands. There was also Harina, the girl who had been cold to him for a week. But with him now, especially with his appearance that became more handsome after his race promotion. He was confident to make Harina crazy about him. Just wait. Harina will beg him to fuck her and give her a child later. After all this time, he will finally be able to get back his girls in his previous life. Eiji. That boy had no idea what horrors would await him when he stole all his girls. Although Rito said that for the umpteenth time, he seemed to have forgotten how many times his confidence was destroyed by Eiji. Well but putting that aside. Ding dong. At this moment, Rito suddenly heard his doorbell ring. Ding dong. Ding dong. Looks like Mikan is asleep. Alright, I'll check who comes to our house at this hour. Maybe it's dad. Although he doubted it was his father because he usually slept at work and would only come home once a week on Sundays. Now it was Tuesday, so the possibility of this being his father was quite small. So who? He would only know when he opened his door and saw him in person. Are you Yuaki Rito? Yes, it's me. Man, I'm sure I didn't order anything online. The one who came to his house at night was a young man who looked about the same age as him. But he was wearing a courier uniform which proved that he probably worked part-time as a courier even though he was a student. This young man is a hard worker. He felt he had a very good impression on him even though it was the first time he met him. Maybe he should give him a drink first before he left? He remembered Mikan bought some juice boxes that she kept in the refrigerator this afternoon. You didn't order, but someone wanted to give you a gift. So take this. The young man immediately pushed the package into his hands. Eh but, who is? I don't know. Just take it, I want to quickly finish my work and go home. Rito knew the young man was only doing his job as a courier. He didn't know who exactly the person who sent him the package was. But can't you be more friendly? I was going to give you a box of juice as a tip. After the young man who delivered the package went home. Rito closed the door and returned to his bedroom. With his power, he opened the package box easily and took out the contents. But at that moment, he widened his eyes because what he saw was. Mini projector. He honestly didn't know what the person who sent him this kind of thing was thinking. Luckily he knew how to use this thing because his father also had it and he once used it to watch a movie to make it feel like a movie theater in his room. Whatever it is. The person who sent me this must have wanted to show me something. I'll try to see. Rito innocently connected the cables to turn on the mini projector in his room. He planned to point the projection at the wall. He turned off the lights and. Yosh, I just turned it on. Rito was not suspicious at all. It was just a projector after all. He was very confident that such an object would not hurt him, even if it exploded, he could manipulate the void to envelop the object and the explosion would be useless. Physically, he would not be hurt. However, he didn't think about other types of attacks. For example, like mental attacks. Well, Rito turned on the projector and light began to gather on the walls of his room to create an image. Oh. It's a video. He looked at what was displayed curiously, but he widened his eyes as if he knew something. This bedroom. I feel familiar. Ah. I remember, in a previous life, I visited Harina who was sick and that must be her bedroom. Rito smiled, he was excited at the thought of Harina sending him this. The girl felt guilty for being cold to him, so she wanted to apologize by sending him a gift. This video. It would definitely feature Harina saying words of love to him. He could not help but laugh. Harina, don't worry. Since you're at least not with A.G. like the others. In this life, you will be my first wife. Ha 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 ha. After being satisfied to be happy. Rito was in a good mood, he turned up the volume of the video and sat on his bed as if preparing to watch a movie. In the video. There was no mistaking that it was Harina's bedroom. Decorated with cute pink walls. White furniture. Some dolls and. Oh, 
there were also photos of him in middle school in a frame. Rito smiled. Harina still loved him very much, she even still collected his photos like in his previous life. As he continued to watch the video for a few seconds, he was confused because the video never moved and only showed his photos displayed in a frame placed on the study table. He was about to do something to the projection as he thought it had a slight error, but he stopped after hearing Harina's voice. There was also a shadow on the wall shown in the video. The shadow was strange because it seemed that in it there was not only Harina sitting on the bed, but there was also someone whose body Harina was sitting on. Harina, what are you doing? You, hey why suddenly take off my pants? Rito was dumbfounded, it was not her voice but the voice of a man who came in the video. And that voice strangely sounded very familiar. He, he immediately had a bad feeling. And sure enough. Me? I will heal you. I'll take care of you and make you feel better. Eiji Kano, it's as big and long as I remember. Harina's voice sounded coquettish and filled with lust for the opposite sex. This was the first time he heard such a voice from her. But put that aside. Rito froze and his expression instantly became ugly. No way. No way. Harina and Eiji. What are they doing? Dash. A slash N, if you want to read 8 advanced chapters with a faster update frequency than the web novel, you can read it on my Patreon whose link is below. HTTPS slash slash www.patreon.com slash doglicker. Replace A with A and search in your browser. By the way, don't forget to throw power stones and leave a review to motivate me, smiley face, comment. 43 comment. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 91, Rito's protagonist mentality collapses. The purple-haired girl crawls on the bed while holding his dick in a daze. But not long after she licks her lips, she is seduced by his dick and starts to bow her head. She licks his thing awkwardly, but she starts learning to use her hand to play with his balls at the same time which makes him moan. Ugh. Harina. If you do this, I probably won't hold back from doing something to you. Slurped. Slurped. The girl in question squinted her eyes with unbearable lust in her eyes, she didn't answer, but instead went even crazier and started opening her mouth to lick his dick as if it was a popsicle. A.G. secretly laughed in his heart, she certainly didn't refuse, he acted more honestly by gripping the purple-haired girl's head and moving it faster. The muffled sound of applause could even be heard in the room as he crammed his cock further down the girl's throat. Harina looked shocked as her head was held by both hands and played with by him. She looked like she wanted to vomit with tears dripping at the corners of her eyes, but she also looked pleased when he was merciless and vigorously fucked her mouth. M.M. M.N. M.M. Actually, what made the girl suddenly take the initiative to use her mouth like this was because of his inner voice. At that moment. To make my healing process faster. It's actually easy. I just need to do perverted things with a girl. If it's with Lala, I usually let her lick my dick until I come. We also used to use other methods like sex because the girl prefers this method. But there's no way I'd mention these things to Harina, right? Unlike Lala who became my fiancé. Harina is not my woman. Although I was also tempted to do it with her. After all as one of the heroine. Harina is undoubtedly beautiful, many boys out there must like her. But as a good man and good at restraint, I won't take advantage of that girl just to heal me. By the way he used the second server inner voice when doing so so that only Harina would hear this. The other heroines could not hear it. Why? Why would he do this? It's because a man also needs to maintain his image. Cough, it's just not good if too many people hear what he said before. But if it was Harina, he deliberately let her hear it because he knew she would take his bait again. And sure enough. The girl suddenly nodded as if she knew what to do and started to take off his pants. She took his little brother out of his nest until the situation developed this far. While continuing to fuck Harina's mouth, he got up from the bed, took a standing position beside the bed, and made the girl lie with her head upside down on the bed. This position. The girl's mouth was still gagged by his dick. MMM. There was a question mark in her eyes which she answered with a wolfish look. Harina, I already said that I won't hold back if you continue. But you did. So don't blame me for doing it. Harina was confused, but she knew right now Eiji was also lusting after her and couldn't resist eating her. She was happy to know Eiji also wanted her, but she was surprised because that boy was too brutal, right? Sweck. Her nightgown was torn off, it was scattered on the bed. She was now naked, her exposed breasts were immediately grabbed by Eiji's hands and pinched her nipples which made her moan. HNN. Eiji Kun. Eiji Kun. Because her mouth was still clogged by the boy's penis it was enough to make her throat tight. She couldn't speak properly. But she didn't resist, she even spread her legs and started playing with her own pussy with her hands. 
Harina, I didn't expect you to be such a perverted girl. Heh, if Rito saw you like this. How would he react? Suddenly mentioned Rito. Harina was dumbfounded, but she didn't think too much as Aji moved his hips and started fucking her mouth again in an upside down position on the bed. Her mind was instantly overwhelmed by pleasure, and the mention of Rito's name only made her even more aroused. Although she didn't like the boy anymore, the feeling of betraying the boy by letting herself be fucked by Aji made her very excited. She now understood why Aji had not let her remove Rito's pictures from her bedroom. MM. MM. MNN. The sound of groans and applause echoed again in the room. Harina didn't notice, but Aji was grinning while manipulating something with his magic. He made the see-through camera connected to the projector in Rito's house clearly see the shadow of him fucking Harina in this position. Actually, he had contacted Sakuta to pretend to be a courier again like he had done with Issei before. But unlike before, this time what he sent to the protagonist was a device that could cause him to have a mental attack from seeing the woman he loved being fucked by another man. That other man is of course him, Aji Seiya. It was just their shadows on the wall of course because he didn't want his hair and his naked body to be seen by other men. Aji was possessive, but he also had a bad hobby of still allowing someone to be exposed to NTR feelings. From the wall, in addition to the obscene voices and Harina's moans, the shadows on the wall were also involved getting crazier. He kept playing with Harina's breasts with his hands, licking them, and even biting her nipples which drove the girl even crazier. His cock that kept getting rammed into the girl's throat also did not help but make her squirt juices from her pussy due to the excessive stimulation. That girl, Harina had a lecherous girl expression on her face. There was no longer the face of a quiet and gentle girl like in school. Now there was only a perverted girl who seemed to really like her doing anything to her body. Protagonist Rito, did you see this? A-H-H. A-H-H. Harina. What are you doing with that bastard? Didn't you love me? Why did you betray me? Actually, Rito had been frozen in his bedroom. Maybe because he was too shocked to see the girl he thought loved him so much making love with another man. If it was girls like Lala, Yui, and Run it was fine because he knew those girls betrayed him. But Harina? He knew from the start that she was the only girl who loved him since middle school. But why? Why now that girl too? Although after all the mental attacks he had endured he should be used to accepting the bad things Ag threw at him. His eyes were red, and his heart was aching right now. He stared blankly at the image of Harina whose mouth was being fucked by Ag upside down on the bed. He was furious, envious, jealous, but strangely he also somehow felt excited. Especially when hearing Harina's slut-like voice as Ag fucked him. What am I thinking? No, no. How can a galactic king like me get excited seeing the woman he loves being fucked by another man? That bastard. Aji, I'll kill him. I don't know how many times he said this, but this time he still stayed there and stared at the projection like a person watching a porn movie. In fact he had the idea of immediately going to Harina's house to stop the two. It's just that as if the projection had some magic enchanting it, he couldn't and felt reluctant if he missed what that bastard was doing to Harina. Huh? What is Aji doing? Him him. How dare he position Harina in such a lewd position. What he saw now was the shadow of Aji who had finished fucking Harina's mouth. Their shadows moved and now Harina was on all fours on the bed while raising her ass at Aji. Aji, that bastard also got on the bed and fucked Harina in doggy style. Bastard. Bastard. Harina. Why are you? Unlike before this time Harina even said something that was like a flying knife that slashed his heart. Ah. A-H-H. Aji -h. Kun. Aji Kun. Harder. Harder. Oh. Slap. Slap. Harder. Okay. I'll fuck you harder. Aji fucked Harina harder, he grabbed Harina's hair and kept ramming his big looking shaft into Harina. Rito felt he was going crazy seeing this, he clutched his chest. He felt his heart hurt a lot, yet he felt this excited feeling confused him. Even so, he was dumbfounded that Aji suddenly mentioned his name. Actually, that bastard had also mentioned his name to Harina earlier, but now he was even more evil. Harina. Answer me, do you still like Rito? You Aki kun A-H-H. A-H-H. No. I, I like you Aji kun I love you. I'm in love with you. Fuck me more. Oh. Really? Good answer. I like you too, Harina you are now mine and I will fuck you harder. Ah. Uh. Yes. Harder. Aji kun Aji kun Puffed. Rito. He's vomiting blood. Harina, she's really. Rito's head was buzzing, he felt that all the women who loved him in his previous life had abandoned him. First, Lala. 
the girl who was supposed to be his fiancé like in his previous life instead became Eiji's fiancé. Second, Yui. The Tsundere girl who in his previous life secretly scolded him often, but wasn't really angry at him because she secretly liked him. Now, that girl also became Eiji's woman and looked at him with a disgusted look. Third, Run. That girl should have also liked him like in his previous life after he activated her hidden mechanism. But that bastard, Eiji foiled his plan by separating Run from Ren first before he activated the hidden mechanism. Eiji, he is so cunning. Run has also fallen into his hands. And now. Fourth, Harina. The girl who liked him since junior high school, the girl who arguably liked him the most in his previous life was now making love to another man passionately and saying she didn't like him. She said clearly that she liked Eiji. Ah. Even though she had increased his power before. Just with the mental attack this time, he still could not endure the pain in his heart. Harina. Harina. Weebiwoo. Why did you also leave me like Lala, Yui, and run? What good is it Eiji? Obviously yesterday you were still fine and didn't get too close to that boy. But now you suddenly love him. I don't understand. Rito didn't understand, he didn't know that today Eiji had completed the combo to get Harina's heart in a few moves. If he knew, he would understand, but that would only make him even crazier because Eiji was so good at seducing his girls in his previous life when he wasn't around. His vision darkened after finding out Harina had also been taken away by Eiji. Lala, Yui, Run, and even Harina. They had all become Eiji's women. Thinking of this. Tud. Protagonist Rito fainted. On the other side. After a few hours had passed. Seeing Harina who was unconscious with a bulging belly and a white liquid that kept flowing out of her vagina. Eiji smiled, he hugged the girl on the bed while covered by the blanket. Snapping his fingers, he made the messy battlefield neat and clean instantly. The conquest this time went well as usual. Not only did he get Harina, he also managed to make the protagonist Rito suffer another mental attack. Why did he know Rito had a mental attack? It was because until now that boy hadn't come to Harina's house to disturb him while having sex with the girl. If not because Rito had a mental attack. What else? Host. Miss System. You're finally online. Miss System wanted to say that she was forced offline from earlier just to wait for her host to finish making love. But she decided not to because she had something more important to say. Host, there's something I want to remind you of. Let me guess. That must be my reward, right? A.G. felt he had gotten good at guessing the things his system would say, but he didn't expect to guess wrong this time. Not that. Although there are also rewards that you haven't checked, but that's for later. There are other important things you should know first. If I don't say it now, I know you'll complain to me later. Looks like Miss System learned to say things first before they happen to avoid being sprayed by him. Good job. I'm glad you learned from experience, but what exactly is the important thing you want to say? Don't tell me the final boss has finally decided to appear in the near future and my current power isn't enough so I have to do some leveling in another world. What? Am I right? AG was actually just joking, but he didn't expect it to really happen? Fortunately Miss System said. No. Sigh. It's not that. It's just that can you stop second guessing the plot? You seem to forget the things you said in the past can fly the flag. When he heard this, A.G. froze. He pretended to cough and said while rubbing hair in his soft buttocks which made the girl moan slightly in her sleep. I was just joking. I didn't say anything before. Let's forget what I said before. Miss System. Miss System was silent. She sighed, wondering if her host had been too relaxed all this time. It might be good to throw him into another world that had a higher level of difficulty. Just kidding. Unfortunately she is not that kind of poisonous system. Anyway. I just wanted to remind you that the world's will is getting crazier because you made the protagonist have a mental attack again for the umpteenth time. He also doesn't like that you keep taking away all the heroin he has prepared for the protagonist. Hearing this, Eiji laughed amusedly. Heh. So. What did she do this time? About the world's will. He didn't know how Miss System could know what the world's will was doing. But as expected. It must be because she was System, right? That woman must be able to know the plans that the world's will had with a certain method. Although Miss System's identity was still mysterious. He knew she must be much stronger than him because she could give him so many rewards that were so off without him having to do anything so difficult as certain protagonists. At least for him, slapping the protagonist and winning over the heroines was easy as long as you understood how to play. This woman. Besides being strong, she must also be very beautiful, right? Perhaps embarrassed by what he was thinking, he heard Miss System snort. Praising me more won't get you anywhere, you know? The reward this time is still as usual. 
It's random and random, okay. Tsk. Ag clicked his tongue. Not like the heroines. It seemed like it wasn't easy to seduce his system to get a lot of good things. Miss System giggled, but she continued by saying. Enough kidding. Host, the world's will has manipulated the plot again and this time she plans to influence all the heroin you haven't caught until now. His expression became serious. Influencing the heroines I haven't captured yet? How will she do it? The heroines of that franchise are not affected by anything, but the other franchises. What's with this dramatic style of speaking? Tell me quickly. Also what do you mean the heroines of that franchise? That's the franchise where loose souls come from. Oh, go on. So this time the world's will plans to make all the loose souls in that franchise escape from the new hell. All those creatures are now possessing the heroines you haven't captured yet. In addition to creating a higher chance for the protagonist so that he can capture the heroine faster. It was also done to make things harder for you, host. Ag. World's will, are you sure this kind of thing will make things difficult for me? All you mean are all the heroin I haven't caught yet. Um. Not really. After all, the number of loose souls in this world is also limited and it's not as many as the number of heroines in this world. But the world's will focuses all those loose souls to influence the heroines you haven't captured in the franchises you have influenced or some other franchises there are not too far away from you, host. Hearing this, Ag nodded. The world's will wanted to play this way. But so what? Putting aside his power. Don't underestimate him who has seen many routines in the novels and anime he saw in his previous life. Just like when capturing Harina who was previously possessed by a loose soul. Capturing other heroin possessed by loose souls is also not a problem for him. Actually, what the world's will did only made him even more excited to hunt down the heroines and slap all the protagonists out there. Ag smirked, his blood boiling slightly. The skies outside, the skies of Kuah City and its neighboring cities were unintentionally affected by her mood, precisely by his magic. But fortunately he immediately controlled it. Even so. Rumble. Rumble. Things outside were still affected by a bit of his magic. Suddenly the sky above the city became overcast. Lightning thundered from the gathering black clouds. People who were sleeping soundly at home or still passing by on the street instantly understood that it was about to rain heavily. Those who were already in their homes were fine, but those who were still outside immediately hurried to return to their homes. Harina who had been sleeping due to fatigue after playing three rounds, she opened her eyes slightly and saw that she was being hugged by Eiji. Seeing that the boy's handsome face was no longer as pale as before. Looks like the things they did before were really useful, she was happy that the boy now looked fine. But when thinking about what happened before she blushed, she pretended to sleep and tried to sleep again because she knew it was still night. Even so, she felt something hard and hot poking her stomach. She opened her eyes and looked at the boy who was now her boyfriend. Or so he called her because she had become one of his women. Seeing the smile on Eiji's face and hearing the boy say. Harina? Did I wake you up? Sorry, you can ignore my sure energetic little brother and go back to sleep. Harina sighed, but her eyes flickered back lovingly hearing that the man would rather let her sleep again than satisfy his still unsatisfied libido. She kissed the boy's lips. She was not so shy as before after what they did. It was dark as the lights were intentionally turned off and the only lighting was from the window where the moonlight came in. She got up from her bed and straddled Eiji while positioning the boy's penis to the entrance of her vagina. Harina, aren't you tired? You don't need to force yourself. The boy's words and gentle smile only made her want to satisfy him even more as a woman. It's okay Eiji kun you're still not satisfied, right? If it's one more time. I can do it. You said that. Then. All right. Let's start the next round. As Eiji said that with his gentle gaze that turned into a wolf, Harina regretted the initiative to let herself be eaten again. Instead of ending up with one more round. This time Eiji continued to beat her with his penis time and time again. They tried more poses, all parts of her body had been touched in various ways by the boy. Even her tight asshole is not safe from Eiji's eager penis thrusts. Although she started crying and begging to be given a break, the boy kept whispering words of love in her ear which made her keep agreeing to more rounds until she passed out. At that time, she saw that it was already morning. It looked like she wouldn't be able to go to school that day. Feeling so much of Eiji's seat inside her. Before passing out, she even wondered to herself if she would get pregnant. After all, her belly was bulging like a pregnant woman's from being filled with so many of her boyfriend's seeds. Meanwhile. As Miss System said. All the loose souls in New Hell have been released. Many of them had scattered to the human world and even the world of other supernatural beings. One of them was the underworld. At this moment, Sana was massaging her forehead with a serious expression on her face. 
there was fatigue clearly visible on her brow. It had been three days since she stayed in the underworld, she hadn't gone to school, and hadn't even met her fiancé, Aji during this time. Why? Although she wanted to spend more time with Aji, she was busy. She was busy sitting on her desk which was located in her bedroom. Many papers were piled up on the table, under her work lamp, her hands kept busy writing and signing things related to Sitra's territory in the underworld. For example, problems that occurred in the region, her family's businesses such as hospitals, farms, etc. Actually, this kind of task was usually only done by the Sitri clan head, her father. But three days ago, she received the bad news that her father had sleep disease. When Sana first heard this news, her face immediately turned pale. As all the devils in the underworld knew. Sleep disease is a disease unique to devils that affects both common and noble devils. When devils are stricken with this disease, they fall into a deep sleep and can't wake up. Then their bodies gradually began to become weak, and they would meet death one day. That's why patients suffering from sleep disease are forced to artificially maintain their lives in hospitals. Devil doctors have searched for many ways to cure this disease, but they have found none. Even the professional doctors of Sitri Hospital which is the best hospital in the underworld under have not found a cure for this disease. That's why Sana was panicked to hear that her father was suffering from this disease. At that time, she also immediately contacted Aji that she cancelled the plan to stay at his house with Rias and the others. Because of her panic she didn't even tell Aji about her father, and that lasted until now where she continued to be preoccupied with her duties as the head of the Sitri clan. Her mind was currently more preoccupied with how to cure her father's illness and organize things as the new Sitri clan head. Actually the idea of asking A.G. for help had just crossed her mind at the moment, Sana's eyes lit up as if she had hope even though she was a little reluctant to continue to trouble A.G. after all he had given her. But A.G. is my fiancé. Isn't it natural to ask your fiancé for help when you're in trouble? Yes. Why am I only thinking about this now? If it's A.G., he might be able to. She prepared to use communication magic to contact A.G. with bags under her eyes, but before she was about to do so. Unbeknownst to her because she was probably too tired and her alertness was reduced, she did not notice a white spirit-like creature enter through the open window of her room. That being was none other than one of the loose soul slash cake Tama who escaped to the underworld and happened to find Sana who she thought would be a suitable host. And she did, she rammed into the girl's back from behind and possessed her right then and there. Sana who originally wanted to contact A.G. suddenly looked dazed. She cancelled the communication magic she was going to use, suddenly she felt that all the problems that weighed her down, be it her father's problems and her work as a clan head made her mind chaotic. Suddenly she even forgot her idea to contact A.G. and ask for his help, she stared at all the paperwork on the table and sighed with a depressed expression on her face. What did I want to do before? Oh right. I still have to research the medicine to cure my father and at the same time do my duty as clan head. If A.G. was here and saw all this. No. Actually he did see this with one of the rewards he had just received from the system this morning. Unfortunately he saw it right after the loose soul actually possessed Sana's body which made him too late to act to prevent or something. Because of that, he glared at the system interface as if he was staring at Miss System. Miss System awkwardly said. I can explain, host. I remember you saying any heroine that I haven't captured yet will become the target of those loose souls. Something like that. I can explain. Didn't I capture Sana already? So why would a loose soul possess her? I can explain. You'll find out exactly after receiving the next reward. Host, you still haven't checked the next reward hey don't blame me. Plot, you should blame the person who made the plot. The world's will. It's her fault. I also actually didn't know this would happen before, I just found out now. Dash. A slash N, if you want to redate advanced chapters with a faster update frequency than the web novel, you can read it on my Patreon whose link is below https slash slash www.patreon.com slash doglicker replace a with a and search in your browser by the way don't forget to throw power stones and leave a review to motivate me smiley face a slash n2 this stuff about the worlds will only last a few chapters and before chapter 100 it will be gone comment 53 comment vote zero left chapter 92 visiting the future in law's home in front of his room mirror A.G. looked at himself who had now changed into a dark blue blazer suit with a black shirt underneath. He originally wanted to wear a tie as well, but he changed his mind and felt like this was better. For the bottom, he wore long black pants and black leather shoes that made him look formal. The air around him now seemed to have changed. Unlike his usual casual appearance, he now looked very neat and looked like a noble man. With silver hair and blue eyes that looked beautiful, his tall and athletic body didn't help either, but made him look very handsome. 
If A.G. had to describe himself, he now looked like the male lead in a noble genre manhui that usually had this kind of vibe. Many ladies or heroines out there definitely couldn't help but glance at him. Yatter yatter. There was no need to go on and on about his appearance because he was worried about being called a narcissist. However, at this moment, the door to the room suddenly opened, and a woman suddenly entered. Not only that, the other party immediately hugged him from behind with her large breasts pressing against his back. This woman hugged me with her hot body in the morning. Damn, don't you know being a man who restrains himself is quite difficult? Not now, I have to meet my future in-laws. A.G., you dressed up so nicely to meet your future in-laws, Nyat. The woman who hugged him was Kurika who as usual was wearing a sexy black kimono. Having a woman like that hugging you in the morning makes your little brother excited. Unfortunately A.G. knew now was not the time for that. With his harem monitor reward that he just got from changing the plot of To Love Are You. To be precise, he got this ability from changing Yami's plot two days ago. Speaking of harem monitor. This is an ability that can make him monitor whenever and wherever his harem is. For example, when he was monitoring Sana this morning, he used this ability to see what the girl was doing remotely. From his vantage point, a screen would appear displaying what the girl was doing. And that was why he also knew that a loose soul had just possessed his bespectacled fiancé. It was actually easy to get that thing out of Sana's body with his powers, and he was going to do it. It was just that Sana's current situation, precisely the problem he had also seemed to require him to immediately visit his future in-laws right now. That was why he was currently dressed up to go to his fiancé's house. Although it had been over a month since he was declared Sana's fiancé, he had never once met the girl's parents which made him feel a little awkward. Gosh, other than Sana's parents. He hadn't even met Lala's parents. Rias too, the girl seemed to have told him that she had asked her parents to let her get engaged to him. And she did, she was now his fiancé too which made it his duty to meet her parents someday. Definitely not now, okay. For now, he would go see Sana's parents first as the girl's situation was more urgent. Kurika, how did you know? Lala, Asia, and Run had gone to school first and he asked the girls to tell the teacher that he would be taking the day off. What about Harina? Didn't he sleep at the girl's house not long ago? After checking the reward he got at the girl's house while hugging her soft body. She healed the girl's physical exhaustion, placed a note by the bedside, and even prepared breakfast for her as a form of attention before he left because he had things to do. By the way he did not forget to pretend as usual when asking the black-haired woman who was hugging him. I know from, dollar yen, at dollar. Well Kurika, you seem to have forgotten that you can't mention things related to inner voices to me. The woman froze for a moment before she seemed to be thinking hard with her cat ears twitching. That's one of Nico Shaunya's abilities. With this ability, I can slightly guess what people will do. In your case, I think the reason why you dressed up so nicely this morning is for a date with a woman or it could be to meet your future in-laws. Nyat. Ag, you believe me, right? Ag rolled his eyes. Oh, I believe, I believe, fart. I remember in the original work Nico Shao didn't have that kind of ability. This women. You should think of a better reason. But since you are my woman, of course how can I not trust you? He nodded. So that's so. Makes sense. Yes. A woman seems happy when her boyfriend or lover trusts her. Kurika was no exception, though she also felt a little guilty for lying. But what else could she do? Besides, her voice was always censored when she wanted to say things about that inner voice to Eiji. Don't you have any duties from your organization, Kurika? Eiji turned around, he hugged the woman's waist and caressed her big ass. Nya the woman moaned feeling his caress, she leaned her head on his chest and looked at him with a narrowed gaze. Her cat-like golden eyes looked beautiful. As expected of the heroine. No, all of his women were beauties that could slap the actresses slash models in this world unless they heroine. The latter he said because he remembered Mai was a model. I'm not. Not now, although Vala said that a week from now he has an assignment as a security officer at the conference between the leaders of the three factions that will discuss the peace treaty. Peace treaty? Ah. I remember in the original work there was also something like this not long after the incident caused by Kakabile trying to provoke a war between the factions. So that's also in the plot. Kurika blinked her eyes, she wondered what things would happen in that meeting. Since it was in the plot, there was bound to be trouble, right? To be honest, she didn't really care about the peace treaty. For her, as long as she could be with her little sister and Eiji, what happened to the faction or whatever didn't make her think too much. About her group too. Actually, she had long wanted to withdraw from Vala's group, but Eiji gave her a small task and it required her to stay in the group. Eiji was silent for a moment, he was remembering the things that happened in the peace treaty arc in high school DxD. In the original work, 
the meeting between the three supreme faction leaders was not so peaceful because the organization called the Chaos Brigade that Kurika actually joined made trouble. But don't get me wrong, in fact even though the people who attacked were people from the same terrorist organization as Kurika. Those people, he knew they weren't from the same group as Kurika. He remembered that in the original work, the organization called Cow's Brigade was the biggest villain organization in this franchise and the people there formed their own faction. Unlike Kurika who arguably came from the Vala group and only that made them seem like mercenaries. The other groups in the organization formed their own factions. Leaving aside the other factions that could be explained later, but the faction in that organization that made trouble at the three-faction peace treaty conference was the first faction in the Cow's Brigade called the Old Satan Faction. This faction consisted of a collection of devils who were descendants of the original four great Satans. That was what Eiji remembered about the plot of the peace treaty. And he also remembered the purpose of the people from the old Satan faction to make trouble at the peace treaty conference was to kill the three leaders of the three factions. Their target was to kill leaders like, Surtsks, Devil Faction Leader, Azazel, Fallen Angel Faction Leader, and Michael, Angel Faction Leader. But unfortunately, at that time they were too confident and they failed as people from the villain camp. That was in the original work, but in this life. He suddenly thought of a great idea to shoot two birds with one stone without having to worry about Rias and Grafia blaming him. Although this is wicked idea, but... Thinking of Sertsk who seemed to have secretly supported Issei with a lot of resources to increase the boy's power. He knew this from his subordinate, Alpha who he had actually secretly given the task of monitoring the protagonist. The blonde elf had been tasked with monitoring the protagonist Issei and that was why he knew this. Eiji's eyes flashed coldly, but it wasn't for long because he didn't want the woman in his arms to notice. There's also Azazel. Hmm. Wait, that guy. What about that guy? He was sure that guy should already be dead since he had given him poison back then. Despite having many subordinates, he didn't bother ordering his beautiful subordinates to keep an eye on men like Azazel. Peace treaty? Well. Interesting. But leave that aside. Kurika, do you know the latest news about the Grigori leader? Grigori leader? Isn't Azza? Oh, yeah. The woman seemed to remember something. In addition to running errands like a mercenary, she also naturally gathered information from her organization. One of the latest information she had gotten not long ago was about Azazel. Kurika looked at Eiji and said. If you're asking about Azazel. He is rumored to be stepping down from the leader's seat because he is busy with his research and the current leader of Grigori is a fallen angel named Barakil. After she said this, her lover who was now even more handsome with his silver hair that was shinier than Vala left. A.G. burst out laughing which made him receive a confused look from the black-haired woman in his arms. A.G. Why are you laughing, Nya? Something funny? Tell me. Kurika was curious, she hugged his body tighter which made him sigh mentally. Because why not? The woman continued to press her weapon of mass murder against his chest which made him try hard to restrain himself. Remember, you have to go meet your future in-laws this morning. You should refrain from exercising with Kurika. Damn it. If it's only for a short while maybe. Host, plot. Tisk. I know. Just for a minute, okay. I still have to do some skinship with Kurika to deepen the relationship. Miss System, activate server 2 temporarily. Despite not saying anything, Miss System did what her host wanted. Ag kissed Kurika's lips lightly. The woman widened her eyes as if she wanted to ask for more, but he quickly said, it's okay. Just remembering something funny about fallen angels. Kurika looked at the boy flatly, obviously she didn't believe him and she was surprised to hear what his inner voice said. So because of this you left. Actually. I just remembered that it's been almost a week since I secretly poisoned Azazel with one of my abilities since the Cockabile incident. That guy, he dared to provoke me even though he's not the protagonist. Unlike the protagonist who I tolerate to maintain the plot, I don't care about supporting characters like Azazel. Letting that guy live for a few days was already very gentle. Now he must have died from a sudden heart attack and the people in Grigori are deliberately spreading false information to hide Azazel's death. Azazel is busy researching? Fart. The people in Grigori must be pretending. If the news of Azazel's death spreads, it must not be a good thing for them, especially when the peace treaty conference is just around the corner. As for Barakil? Isn't that Akeno's father? He's now the leader of the Grigori. Hey isn't that my future father-in-law? Poisoned Azazel? Azazel is dead? So that guy is dead. As for Barakil who Eiji suddenly called his future father-in-law. Put that aside. Although she might have met and talked to Azazel a few times in the past when Vala took her and the rest of the group to visit the man who was practically his adopted father. That man, Azazel often looked at her with his lascivious gaze. 
Although he did not show it clearly and always spoke kindly, she knew he might have some ideas about her which disgusted her of course. For Vala, Azazel was an important person because he was his adopted father. But for her? Other than being slightly amazed to know such a person could be the leader of the Grigori, she didn't really have a good impression of the man. Knowing her lover had killed Azazel. Instead of being unhappy or worried, she was happy the man was dead. Kurika was no saint, if there was someone like Azazel who dared to think of her in such a way. If it didn't care about the consequences of killing a person with a status like Azazel, she would also want to kill such people. Especially now, after she became Aji's woman which made her even more careful with other men. Although Aji let her stay with his group, she knew he was also a possessive person, but he chose to trust her instead of restricting her. This kind of action only moved her, but it also made her keep her distance from other men even more. Even when doing group tasks with Vala and the others, she always asked to move alone or if not she asked to be paired with Elife because she was also the other female member in the group. Is the monologue over? Aji wondered, but saw Kurika's admiring gaze on him. He knew she didn't mind his killing Azazel. On the contrary, she seemed pleased. He wondered what Azazel did to make Kurika happy about his death? Well whatever it was, it was good. Actually the reason he told Kurika about this was also to see how far she would support him with his every action. So far, Eiji was satisfied to see that Kurika did not disappoint him. He lowered his head and kissed her neck which made her moan. Nya Eiji let's make a kitten, Nya. Kurika's eyes flickered with lust, she was like a cat in heat as she looked at him. Finished kissing the woman's white neck which left a hickey there. Eiji slapped the woman's ass. Not now, okay. As you said, this morning I was planning to meet my future in-laws now. Sana's parents to be precise, and I also have to visit the girl. She seems to be having problems. I have to help her. Kurika pouted, she was a little unhappy that until now Eiji hadn't eaten her and given her a kitten. The latter didn't need to be rushed, but the former made him doubt whether she wasn't pretty enough that the man could still refrain from eating her until now. Aside from the perverted things they had done such as blowjob and bathing together. They still hadn't done the last step because every day Eiji was always busy dealing with other heroine and slapping the protagonists. But when she found out about one of her sisters. Cough, not Konako. But the other girls in Eiji's harem like Sana were having problems. She reluctantly nodded and let him go. Good woman. I'll give you a present later tonight. Eiji said while pinching Kurika's chin and looking at her with a narrowed gaze. Kurika who was a little sullen immediately smiled. Really? Right. So wait for me to get home, okay? Okay nya. Eiji and Kurika went downstairs, he was preparing to leave. Kurika stayed at home, she could play outside if she wanted, but that woman chose to laze around at home while watching dramas on TV. These women. Why do they like watching dramas on TV so much? Other than Korka. When not watching dramas, Lala would watch anime or other alien-related shows on TV. Asia would usually join in on the fun with the girls. Run. Well ever since the girl lived in her house, she often fought over the TV remote with Lala. Unlike Lala, the light green-haired girl preferred to watch idol singing. To be more precise, the girl seemed to be starting to become a fan of AI who appeared on TV as an idol. AG remembered that in the original work, in one episode, Run enrolled in a certain company to become an idol and not long after that she actually succeeded in becoming an idol. Maybe he should introduce Run to AI later? Write that in the system interface later so he doesn't forget. You're using the system interface as a memo. Miss System could not help but complain as her host was actually typing a few words on the system interface while sitting in his car. Ag finished composing the memo. He raised his head. Miss System, what did you say just now? No, I didn't say anything. Are you sure? Yes. Miss System sounded annoyed. Okay, this woman must have a lot of problems in her life. So it's best not to disturb her. Broom. Broom. The car's engine had started, the car was already running out of his house, but at this moment. Host, I remember Sana's parents' house should be in the underworld. A.G. immediately hit the brakes when he heard this, he pretended to cough and said, I know. I. Right, I meant to teleport my car with me to the underworld. Didn't you once receive a card from Sana that allowed you to instantly teleport to her home in the underworld? Even with your powers, you can teleport there on your own. But still, why would you bring a car with you? You can instantly teleport. A.G. did not speak, but his car that was originally in front of the gate of his house suddenly disappeared and left only him standing there. His car? It was teleported back to his garage. Glancing at the watch in his hand, he nodded. Miss System, forget what I said earlier. It's actually been a few days since I warmed up the car's engine, so I did it a bit. 
Miss System slept to say anything, but she heard the woman stifling a laugh over there. Aji's expression darkened slightly. Damn my cool image. Even though he was already this strong, why did he often forget some details? If he could, he would rather get the photographic memory skill like a certain protagonist. But whatever, for now. He pretended he hadn't done anything silly and immediately teleported to the underworld. Instead of using his own magic, he used the card that Sana had given him. And instantly, he was teleported to a courtyard with a wide white road with many neatly cut plants on the left and right. Not far behind, there was a golden gate with the Citri clan logo. And not far in front of it, there was a house. No, it was more like a European-style castle combined with the British royal style. There were many statues that resembled monsters in a movie he had seen called Gargoyles lined up on the side of the road. It didn't look scary to him, but if it was an ordinary person like Asia or Run. The two girls must have been a little scared, especially with the red-colored sky in the underworld that made the atmosphere in this house look quite eerie like watching houses in vampire movies. While walking towards the castle that was arguably his fiancée's home, he recalled a few things such as the Citri clan was one of the 32 remaining devil clans from the 72 pillars and one of the highest ranked and famous devil families in the underworld. This was a clan that was not inferior to the Gremory clan where Rias came from. Being the house that produced the current Leviathan, members of the Citri clan had a strong affinity towards water-based magic. That was why Sana had the water attribute as her specialty. So did her other family members such as her father and mother. The only known exception was Sirafal Leviathan who excelled in ice-based magic. Considering that woman, damn. That woman owed him something and he would definitely have to collect later. Being too busy with other heroines and protagonists, he always forgot to catch that magical girl. Now that he was here, it was a good chance to catch her. Looking to the side, in the distance he could also see an estate. Actually, his fiancée's so-called home was more like an area almost the same size as a city and the house he was now heading to was the main residence of his fiancée's family. Citri territory was famous for its natural wealth, and was said to have most of the nature reserves that existed among the several territories belonging to high-class devils. The Citri clan was also known as one of the few territories that had advanced medical facilities, having one of the most famous hospitals in both the underworld and the human world. Host, your monologue is too long. I know. By the way someone approached you from behind. They seem to suspect you as an intruder. I know. Huh, what's with that annoying cliché scene where a man is not recognized by the guards at his fiancée's house? Aji's lips twitched. He turned back and saw two devils wearing guard-like uniforms running from the gate to chase him. He was ready to take out the card Sana had given him to prove that he wasn't an intruder for having a card with the Citri clan logo in his hand. As for pretending like a protagonist in an urban novel in this situation? Forget it. If you can solve this problem easily, why should you pretend to slap the guards at your fiancé's house? Isn't that asking for trouble? Unless the guards provoked him, then don't blame him for... Eiji Sama. Is that you? Eiji who was about to take out a card from his pocket was stunned. What? One of the guards seemed to recognize him and the others also seemed to be the same. They stopped in front of him and looked at him kindly. There was also respect and a little fear in their eyes as if someone had warned them beforehand to be polite to him if them saw him. Yes, it's me. You two seem to recognize me. Of course, Eiji Sama, you are Sana Sama's fiancé. Yes. Everyone who works here naturally recognizes your esteemed identity, Eiji Sama. Eiji knew he should be glad these people didn't trouble him and instantly recognize his identity with just one glance. Sana must have told everyone in Citri territory what he looked like and what his identity was to make the guards in her house recognize him in a panic. But what was with this feeling of disappointment? Shouldn't someone have been looking for trouble with him when he came to his fiancé's house? Host, you read too many urban novels. Indeed. My brain must have been poisoned by the things I read in my previous life. Eiji did not deny. One of the guards said, Eiji-sama, are you looking for Sana-sama? He nodded. Yes, I'm here to see my fiancé. Then please follow me. I will take you to see Sana-sama. Sana-sama should be with Lord Sitrai and Lady Sitrai right now. Sure, lead the way. Yes, Eiji-sama. One of the guards led the way for him. Meanwhile, the other guards bowed respectfully to him before returning to guarding the gate. One person was certainly enough to lead the way for him. It was just that Eiji wondered, he wondered where that person was. Who was the person he was referring to? Of course protagonist. The rewards he got this morning were actually two. One was the harem monitor and the other was the other plot knowledge he got after capturing Harina. In that plot, there was certainly a reason why the loose soul entered Sana. The worlds will set up a plot where the protagonist would curing Sana's father. 
Issei turned out to be able to do so as a regressor protagonist who seemed to know the cure for Sana's father's sleep disease. After successfully curing Sana's father, Sana was naturally grateful to Issei, but she also felt complicated because she had previously hated him a lot. And this is the beginning where Sana starts to develop excessive good feelings for the protagonist. It's also the effect of the loose soul in her that makes her seem unstable and Issei's help is tantamount to making her have a crush on that boy even though she's already my fiancé. Tsk. This stupid plot. Damn, world will, you want to give me a green hat? You're dreaming. I won't let you succeed. Sana, I'm coming. Don't worry, I'll cure your father. With my powers, it's easy. At the same time. Just a moment before. In her father's bedroom where she and her mother were watching the doctors trying to cure her father as best they could with the help of Citri's family hospital's technology and medicine to cure sleep disease. Unfortunately it was all useless. Other than slowing down her father's illness, her father still couldn't wake up from his sleep and he wasn't cured at all. Sana looked sadly at her bedridden father. Her eyes were red and there were dark circles in her eyes which proved that she hadn't slept well lately. Sana, you should rest first. You haven't slept for two days, right? Lady Satrai, Sana's mother looked at her daughter whose skin was slightly pale and glum with worry. As a devil, Lady Satrai looked youthful. Despite her age. No need to mention it. Coughing, what was certain was that she still looked like a woman in her twenties with her milky white toned skin, slender figure and beautiful face that had something in common with Sana and Sirafal. But unlike Sana who lacks in the chest, and Sirafal who lacks in height. Lady Satrai was a combination of both daughters, she was as tall as Sana, and had breasts no worse than Sirafal. On top of that, she also had waist-length black hair that was flowing with beautiful blue eyes. This appearance. This is Aji's future mother-in-law. No, mom. It seems like the medicine this time hasn't worked either. I still have to research other medicines. There are also my duties as clan head still waiting for me in the study. Sana shook her head. She disagreed with her mother's suggestion which made the beautiful housewife sigh. Her husband didn't wake up, and now her daughter was hard to get to rest. Lady Satrai sighed. By the way mom, where is Onisama? Hearing this, Lady Satrai sighed again. Her first daughter, she. Sirafal. That girl is still busy with her work as Leviathan. The last time I heard from her was a week ago where she said she was going abroad, to the territory of the Norse gods to negotiate something. That girl has not been informed of your father's condition. If she knew. Lady Satrai smiled wryly. With her first daughter's personality, she would definitely not hesitate to leave work to return home immediately. It was just that she did not want her daughter to do that. Being a leviathan who also served as a diplomat representing the devil faction. The girl had great responsibilities, and as a mother, she did not want Sirafal to just ignore her responsibilities. Besides, if it was about her husband suffering from sleep disease. So far her husband was only asleep, he had been asleep for five days. Although she was also sad to know about her husband's condition, but she knew that people suffering from sleep disease still had quite a lot of time to live. For example, she remembered someone who had not woken up from sleep for years because of this disease, Miss LaBelle. That woman is still alive today, even though she hasn't woken up from her sleep for years which sparked rumors about her. But putting that aside, people who suffered from this disease did not just die right away, so there was still plenty of time to try all means to cure her husband. She didn't have to immediately tell Sirafal to go home, even if she did, what could the girl do about her father? If it was Sirafal, she would definitely cry after learning about her father's condition and her crying would only disturb the people at home. Although while working the girl could be a mature woman, when returning home, especially meeting her younger sister, she would be a little girl. I understand. For now it's better not to tell Onisama until she's done with her work. As if she knew what her mother was thinking, Sana nodded in understanding, but her increasingly pale appearance made her mother even more worried. Even so, Lady Satrai was unable to persuade her second daughter, Sana who was unlike her first daughter, this girl was too serious and too hardworking that it was difficult to be told to rest. However, before today, exactly a week ago, she saw Sana smiling often and she seemed much more relaxed than usual, she often talked about how good a fiancé she managed to get. Speaking of Sana's fiancé, right. She only knew the boy from Sana's mouth, she had never actually met the boy named Ajiciya. She looked at her daughter, she was about to ask her. Don't you want to ask your fiancé for help? From your mouth, you once said your fiancé has many abilities and he is so strong that he can slap the Grigori leader and even make Sertsk silent. Perhaps if you ask for his help, he can come to try to cure your father? Lady Satrai was about to say all this, but she suddenly saw her daughter widen her eyes. 
She saw many reactions on her daughter's face from surprise, disgust, but suddenly seemed to be happy about something. Um. Sana, what's wrong with you? Mom. He's here. He? Who is he? My fiancé. Aji's here. Lady Satri was stunned for a moment, and she smiled faintly. Your fiancé. Okay, why don't we prepare to welcome him? I can finally meet my future son-in-law. Not long after she said that, the door to the room was suddenly opened from outside. Ignoring Sana who immediately ran towards the door, she stared at the person who came in. Lady Satri widened her eyes at that moment because... Dash. A slash N, if you want to redate advanced chapters with a faster update frequency than the web novel, you can read it on my Patreon whose link is below. HTTPS slash slash www.patreon.com slash doglicker. Replace A with A and search in your browser. By the way, don't forget to throw power stones and leave a review to motivate me, smiley face, comment. 32 comment. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 93, Lady Satri who pleaded with her future son-in-law. So handsome. Sana is smarter than her older sister in choosing a man. Lady Satri gazed at the silver-haired and blue-eyed boy in her daughter's arms. She unconsciously spoke her heart which was heard by everyone in the room except her sleeping husband. Noticing the doctors, her daughter, and her daughter's fiancé looked at her after she said that. Lady Satri blushed slightly, but she quickly picked up her mentality as Hostess Satri by feigning a cough, walked up to her daughter and said to the silver-haired boy. Nice to meet you, Aji Kun. I'm sorry we didn't have time to make preparations to welcome you. My daughter also seems to have just found out you're coming to our house. She didn't even dress up properly when her fiancé visited her. When her mother said this. A-H-H. Sana looked at her own appearance that was only wearing a normal dress, she wasn't dressed up, she had no makeup at all. Her slightly pale face and panda eyes didn't help either, but made her feel like an ugly duckling even though she was the heroine. She released herself from Aji's embrace and lowered her head in shame. Oh no. Aji, what if that boy's fondness for her decreased because of this? Earlier when she had just heard Aji's inner voice saying things about the plot, the creature called Lu Soul that had somehow possessed her that made her confused, and the boy himself coming to cure her father. She didn't think about her appearance at all and rushed to hug her fiancé without any preparation. Hearing the plot that Issei will come to cure her father and she will fall in love with him after that. Her natural reaction was disgust, especially when she just found out that a loose soul possessed her which made her so easily moved by Issei's actions in the plot. After hearing Eiji's inner voice yesterday where the boy seemed to be busy helping the heroine named Harina, she naturally knew what a loose soul was. No wonder this morning she felt her body became weaker than usual, and she felt her mood was so bad that she was stressed. Apparently there was another being inside her body. She patted her body and wondered how she could get the creature out of her body. But putting that aside, right now she felt like finding a hole to cover up her ugly duckling-like appearance. However, she felt a large, warm hand patting her head which made her squint her eyes. She knew it was Aji's hand, and she felt this was the best head pat she had ever received in her life. It felt so good. Even her tiredness and stress had inexplicably disappeared. It's okay. I didn't tell Sana that I was coming to visit her at her parents' house. As for her appearance. She's still pretty without makeup, hat. She also looks cute with her panda eyes. Aji said that with a gentle smile while looking at Sana which made Lady Satri, and the doctors in the room look at him in slight surprise. By the way while using his padding skills, he also instantly eliminated the loose soul inside Sana's body. As he said, this creature was not a problem for him. Since Sana was already basically his woman, he did not need to utilize the existence of the loose soul for his own benefit like he did with Harina. Arasana, did you hear that? You're lucky to have Aji Kun as your fiancé, if it was another man. Lady Satri seemed to be teasing her daughter. Mom, I know. Ugh. Me, I'll go to my room to dress up. Sana was about to run away with a red face, but Aji hugged her waist. Well, Sana, you don't have to do that. Eh Aji, but? My appearance right now. Sana wanted to say she looked ugly, she was not confident in appearance. She was worried that Aji was just pretending to be fine with her current appearance, and actually he was. This girl. She's usually confident, why is she so panicked now just for not dressing up when I don't see her? Is it because of the loose soul in her body? But I already eliminated that thing in her body when I patted her head. Eh, already? That loose soul was eliminated so easily from her body? She didn't even feel a weight, she finally understood why her body became lighter than before. Sana was happy, she was touched by Aji who secretly helped her. But still, she was still worried about that boy. Although Sana is still beautiful, 
but to eliminate the girl's worries about her appearance. And Axis. A.G. lightly rubbed Sana's face with his hand illuminated by green light. The girl was confused, but in an instant after he removed his hand from her face. Lady Citri and the doctors were again surprised. It was actually not unusual for someone, especially a devil to use healing magic. But the effect of their magic was nothing, it still couldn't compare to the healing effect provided by the sacred gear Twilight Healing which was said to be able to heal any wound easily in seconds. Their magic is also not comparable to the best healing items in the underworld such as Phoenix Tears. Even so, it's not just about healing magic. In fact, Sana's previous condition was actually only caused by lack of sleep which made her skin and face look unhealthy. What the boy named Eiji did was not just healing, but it was more like rejuvenating and enhancing one's appearance. Sana, you. Lady Citri looked at Sana with envy. Sana who realized that Eiji had done something to her looked at her mother in confusion. Unlike before, she did feel that her body became fresher than before. It's just that she was confused as to why her mother and even some doctors were looking at her with such a look. And her mother, why was she looking at her with envy? Mom, what's wrong? A.G., just relieving all my fatigue, and making me feel better. Sana, you should look at yourself in the mirror. A.G. Kun, can you do that to me too? Lady Citri looked at her future son-in-law, no. She was looking at her son-in-law with an expectant gaze. Sana was confused, but she immediately walked to the other side of the room where there happened to be a mirror. A.G. scratched his cheek, he looked at Sana's mother whose appearance was worthy of a woman who could give birth to heroines like Sana and Sirafal. In the original work, he had never seen her. But in this world, he finally knew what she looked like. Gosh, my mother-in-law is so beautiful. Are you Sana's older sister? Nay San, do you want to? As a good son-in-law, isn't it natural to make your mother-in-law feel young? Lady Citri smiled wider at hearing herself called Nay San. She remembered that she hadn't introduced herself that she was Sana's mother, she could understand that Eiji had misunderstood her identity, but she was happy that her appearance could still make a boy as handsome as Eiji consider herself young. Her impression of the boy who became her daughter's fiancé increased by several points. She closed her mouth while giggling before saying. Oh my. I'm actually Sana's mother, Eiji Kun, you misunderstood. Eiji pretended to be surprised to hear this. Ah oh, sorry, I thought you were Sana's older sister. You look young and very beautiful, so I misunderstood. He 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 Eiji Kun, you're very kind. Would you like to drink something or eat first? By the way you can call me mom or nay san. Um. How about mother-in-law? Ah uh, why? You can call me mom or nay san, you know. Eiji was having fun with his mother-in-law, but at this moment Sana walked back to them with a happy expression. This girl, she didn't seem to be so sad about her father anymore after she improved her appearance using one of Ana's spells that could rejuvenate people and make people look better. If Sana previously scored 88 points as a heroine. Now she managed to score 90 points. A.G. A.G. You did this. The girl with glasses looked even more beautiful than before. The circles under her eyes had disappeared, her skin also looked very healthy, even her previously rather thin body was also starting to fill out. However, what made the girl most happy was her chest, now it was at least a C cup. A.G. nodded. Yes, glad you're happy. But Sana. Who's lying on the bed? Is that your father? Sana who was originally happy and wanted to thank Eiji by kissing him froze. When her fiancé came and made her more beautiful, she was too happy to forget that she was sad about her father's condition before. She looked at her father, then looked at Eiji with a pleading look. Right, Eiji. That's my father. He was affected by sleep disease that made him fall asleep and hasn't woken up after five days have passed. Eiji. Please. Can you help my father? Lady Citri also stopped joking, she led A.G. to stand beside the bed she even bowed slightly before saying. A.G. Kun, the magic you used before. Is it also able to cure my husband? If it can, please do so. A.G. certainly didn't refuse, it was just that he was a little awkward. He waved his hand, saying to his mother-in-law and at the same time also to his fiancée. All right mother-in-law, you don't need to beg me like that. And Sana, I actually came here to cure your father. So don't worry. Leave it to me. A.G. Thank you. Sana hugged her fiancé, with her breasts buffed, now the silver-haired boy could feel the softness pressing against his hand. A.G. pretended to cough. Sana. I haven't healed your father yet, so don't rush to thank me. But the girl smiled and said while shifting her glasses slightly. But I'm sure you can do it. So why not? Seeing as these two are about to start a flirting session with each other. Cough, I'm glad my daughter and son-in-law have a good relationship. 
Even so, can you guys do it later? Sana immediately let go of Eiji's arm which she was hugging. Eiji sighed, he decided to ignore the gaze of Sana's mother who was looking at her own daughter with envy. Although Sana's mother was very beautiful, but he was also not that cruel to give Sana's father a green hat. You sure you won't do it? Miss System. Putting that aside, where is protagonist? He hasn't come until now. In the plot arranged by World's Will. Protagonist Issei did come to Sana's house after he finished his training which he actually knew from Alpha that the boy was training in a dragon's lair called Tiamat which had many treasures in it and one of them was a useful thing for Issei to increase his power. In the original work, who is Tiamat? Tiamat is a female dragon and the only female among the five great dragon kings. She is a blue dragon known as the Chaos Karma Dragon, and is one of the few active dragons in the high school DXD franchise. Although she is not a heroine, her human form is no worse than a heroine. But putting that aside, he knew Tiamat had a bad relationship with Drake. So there was no way that woman would let Drake's hosts like Issei use the things inside her cave that were basically her treasure inventory. Although Eiji didn't know the details, but Alpha said that this had something to do with Sertsk. Well let him guess, Sertsk must have bribed Tiamat with something. That woman loved treasure, so Sertsk must have given her some treasure or something to tempt her into letting Issei train in her lair. Host, you seem to have forgotten there's no you in the plot. So. So your arrival now triggers the butterfly effect. Even so, protagonist will still come, it's just that he will come late. If that's the case, why should he bother waiting? Eiji thought it was better to go ahead of Issei and not give him a chance at all. He looked at the doctors, to be precise the three doctors who were actually busy using medical equipment to continue monitoring Sana's father's condition. All of you, back off. The doctors looked at each other. He was actually prepared for the doctors to doubt his abilities. Why? Because this kind of cliché usually happens in many novels when protagonist wants to cure someone. Even if he had previously shown off a bit of his ability to make Sana feel better. Who knows these doctors have brain problems, and they... Of course Eiji-sama, please do. Yes, we leave Lord Sitri to you. Eiji-sama, please. The doctors retreated, they stood at the far end of the room. What the... Eiji naturally looked at Sana. What what Eiji? Do you need something? If so, say so, and I'll find it for you right away. Sana, she smiled, her posture like a wife who wanted to take her husband's things. But Sana. That's not it? Nothing. You and mother-in-law should also step back a little. Sana and even Lady Sitri complied. It was just that by the time Sana was standing some distance away from Eiji and her father, she finally understood why Eiji was looking at her earlier. Even those doctors have also been properly educated not to doubt me. Well. Sana. You did well. It's just that next time you might not have to work so hard to make sure everyone in Sitri territory knows about me. Although I did not plan on giving the protagonist a chance. Although I'm also not a protagonist who likes to pretend to slap the faces of people who doubt her. I. I feel like things are going too smoothly that I'm a little uncomfortable. And protagonist, where are you? I came to cut off your chance, but you haven't come until now. Sana. So you're complaining because everything went too smoothly. Isn't that nice? A few days after you became my fiancé, I told everyone in Sitri territory that you were my fiancé. I even had people put up a lot of posters about your appearance so that people wouldn't mistake who you were if you suddenly came here. And actually it was also done so that my suitors would stop pursuing me because I already had a fiancé and he was a man who could make my suitors feel inferior by comparing their looks to his. Although your appearance now seems to have changed a bit, and looks more handsome. Everyone can still recognize your appearance. If it's someone else, they should be happy. But here you are complaining? Sana couldn't help but laugh, she suddenly giggled which made her mother look at her in confusion. Lady Sitri was confused. She understood Sana was very confident in her fiancé's ability to cure her father. But to make you laugh while staring gently at your fiancé's back in this situation. Gosh, isn't a girl too crazy about her fiancé? Even so, when thinking of her daughter's fiancé being Eiji. She stared at Eiji's back and the green magic circle under his feet that covered him and her husband in a daze. The doctors watching on the side were also watching in a daze. But unlike the reason for Lady Sitri's daze which was unknown. The reason they were in a daze was because it was their first time seeing such an intricate and beautiful healing magic circle. As doctors, especially doctors who worked at Sitri's family hospital, they were also naturally able to perform healing magic. It was actually one of the requirements for ordinary devils like them to work at the Sitri family hospital. But putting that aside, the Sitri heir's fiancé is amazing. Aside from his looks, the man was also able to use healing magic at a level far better than the hospital's magical medical devices, 
Sacred Gear Twilight Healing and even Phoenix Tears. Why did they feel Ag's magic was better than all of the above? It was because at this moment, under the green light of the magic circle which had a special effect like luminous green leaves flying in the room. From the medical device that could tell Lord Citri's condition. They could all see that Lord Citri was showing signs of waking up. Meanwhile. In front of the gate. The wild-looking waist-length brown-haired boy with bloodshot eyes and a face that could now be considered handsome stared at the gate of Sana's house with a smile. He was wearing a tight red t-shirt under his athletic body, long black sweatpants, and white sneakers. No matter where you looked, he looked like someone who had just finished working out. The guard guarding the gate naturally walked up to the boy. He doubted the boy's appearance the first time he saw him and thought of sending him away. Boy, who are you? What are you doing here? This is Sitri's family residence. This is not a place where a random person like you can stay. If you have no important business to do here, you'd better leave. If A.G. saw this, he would be a little surprised because the one who shouted and chased away the person was one of the guards who was very friendly to him when he suddenly came. Unlike when he welcomed him, when the one who came was the protagonist. Those guards were really acting according to the cliched scripts in those novels. That's right, the person who came and was currently standing in front of Sana's gate was Issei. Issei had just completed his training in Tiamat's cave located in the depths of the Devil's Forest. It was still in the underworld, so he could also travel to Sana's house which was also in the underworld. Actually, after he completed his training, it was precisely bathing in a pool filled with dragon's blood, which allowed him to increase his power quickly. He suddenly had a vision where he healed Sana's father and after that Sana would fall in love with him. She left Eiji who had become her fiancé, and for the first time he managed to get revenge on the boy by stealing his woman. Although at the time he was confused as to who gave him that kind of vision or image in his brain, he even asked Drake if he saw it too. To which the dragon replied no. Even so, Issei chose to trust his intuition and immediately traveled to Sitri territory to do the same things as the vision he had gotten. Looking at the guards who chased him away, he snorted and said, Random people? I am Issei Hayadu. I am the emperor of the red dragon. I came here to cure Lord Sitri. Huh? So? Are you a doctor or something? The guard at least needed to ask to be sure. Putting aside the boy's name which he clearly did not recognize, he was definitely not a famous character in the underworld. As for him calling himself the Red Dragon Emperor? He couldn't believe it. However, Issei shook his head and arrogantly said, I'm not a doctor. But I can cure Lord Sitri of his sleep disease with my abilities. You all better let me in, otherwise. Before he could finish his sentence, one of the guards hit him with a spear. Issei quickly caught the spear with his hand and glared at the guard who attacked him. Why are you attacking me? The guard snorted. Isn't it obvious? You came from nowhere. Arrogantly wanted to enter the Sitri family residence and said you wanted to cure Lord Sitri even though you're not a doctor. Boy, you are a suspicious person. People like you are usually killed on the spot for daring to force their way into the Sitri family residence. Everyone. Surround and attack this boy. Instantly, the guards who were actually middle class devils immediately surrounded Issei with magic spears in their hands. Issei's face darkened when he saw this. It was true that what he did earlier seemed unreasonable, but the guards at Sana's house were too ferocious, right? Actually he just wanted to be a little arrogant, especially after he was as strong as he was now. He thought these guards would immediately let him in after he called himself the Red Dragon Emperor, but they didn't and instead wanted to kill him on the spot. These guards. How dare they stop me and try to kill me? I already mentioned that I am Issei Hayadu. I am the Emperor of the Red Dragon. I came here to cure Sana's father. But why don't these people distrust me? Suspect me so much. Damn it. This is a good chance to make Sana fall in love with me by curing her father. I can take revenge on Eiji by stealing his fiancé. Since you guys want to stop me, don't blame me for being cruel. The guards at Sana's house, I'll kill them all. The heroines. It had been a long time since they had heard of this protagonist. And the first thing they hear is Issei's cunning and evil plan to make a woman fall in love with him by curing the woman's father. It's actually fine if people don't know Issei has an ulterior motive to help cure Sana's father. But after knowing what the boy really wants. How can they not feel disgusted? At school, precisely in the occult research club room during school breaks. Rias already knew Eiji wasn't in school today because he went to the underworld to help Sana. After hearing his inner voice earlier, she knew the problem Sana had and wondered why the girl didn't ask for her help even though she couldn't cure her father of sleep disease. She sighed. Aren't we best friends? That girl always wants to solve her own problems. Rhea smiled wryly, she was just a little annoyed that her best friend didn't ask for her help when she had a problem. Luckily there's Eiji. 
So Sana's father should be healed, right? If it's Eiji, he can definitely do it. This confidence. Not because of love, but the fact that Eiji had so much in him that she didn't know what how many things the boy could do. As for the protagonist Issei whose inner voice was heard earlier, she didn't act much because she was used to hearing the protagonists say their disgusting plans. She wouldn't even be surprised if Issei failed again and got slapped again by Eiji. It's just that. Now she was staring at her queen who was looking at the bracelet Lala had given her awkwardly. Akeno, why do you keep looking at my bracelet? Rias, I remember you never wore bracelets as fashion before. I feel that your bracelet is unusual. Where did you buy it from? The black-haired girl looked curious. The two were actually having lunch in the club room and had been very relaxed until an inner voice suddenly invaded and made Rias comment. This bracelet? It's called an e-linker. The crimson-haired girl smiled, she raised her hand as if showing off. Akeno's lips twitched. Slightly regretting asking just to see the show-off expression on the girl's face. E-linker? Don't tell me it has something to do with Eiji. When the black-haired girl heard that the bracelet had the letter E at the beginning of its name, she immediately thought of the white-haired boy. Oh, she didn't know yet now that Eiji had silver hair. If she knew and saw the boy's current appearance. If it was Akeno? What would she do? Rias nodded with an excited smile on her face. Um, this bracelet was actually made by Lala. It's very advanced. Akeno, do you want to know what it does? The bracelet was made by Lala? Thinking of the pink-haired girl. Akeno remembered that girl was an alien and she was also a genius scientist. In addition, that girl was also Eiji's first fiancé who was often praised by Eiji in his inner voice which made her envious. Of all the heroines. The pink-haired girl was the most praised by Eiji so far. Even she, although it was unclear how she felt for the boy after all the perverted things they did, she could not help but feel sour in her heart when she heard the boy's inner voice praising a heroine to the skies. She nodded at the crimson-haired girl's offer and was willing to hear what the function of the bracelet called e-linker was. It was just that seeing what the bracelet's functions were, her lips twitched again. No wonder Rias was so excited about the bracelet. In addition to the function of communication between the girls in Eiji's harem in a sophisticated way. It turned out that it could also be used to play virtual games that transferred the user's consciousness to the game world. Akeno was a little envious when she heard how advanced it was, but that was it. She congratulated Rias for having the exclusive bracelet that the girls in Eiji's harem had. But as she slowly ate her bento again, the crimson-haired girl suddenly said something that made her choke. Akeno. Since you're my best friend and queen, how about you also become one of Eiji's women? I don't mind. You used to say this kind of thing, but you seem to have forgotten. Come on, I'll help you seduce Eiji if you want. Dash. A slash N. If you want to read 8 advanced chapters with a faster update frequency than the web novel, you can read it on my Patreon whose link is below. HTTPS slash slash www.patreon.com slash doglicker. Replace A with A and search in your browser. By the way, don't forget to throw power stones and leave a review to motivate me, smiley face, creator's thoughts. Doglicker gods doglicker gods. I know many of you are annoyed with the world's will, but after the protagonist dies, AG will immediately deal with that thing. As I said in the previous chapter, before chapter 100 those things no longer exist. Comment. 30 comment. Vote. 0 left. Chapter 94, Protagonist Who Seeks Death. It is true that she has said such things in the past. To be honest when she said that, she was half serious and joking. Although back then she went as far as following Rias to do perverted things with Eiji. Akeno didn't hate the idea of being one of Eiji's women, even being a mistress was fine because she thought it would be really hot. But still, she didn't expect Rias to bring up this matter right when she was eating. Cough. Cough. Ah. Akeno, drink this quickly. Rias gave the black-haired girl some drinking water and the other party drank it. After finishing drinking, Akeno sighed. Rias also sighed, but she said, So Akeno, what do you think? You still want to discuss that topic? Akeno's lips twitched. Did the crimson-haired girl want to be her matchmaker? She seemed eager to do so. She wondered how to answer Rias. Fortunately at this moment, Eiji's inner voice interrupted their conversation. Fool. After killing the guards at Sana's house, protagonist still thinks he'll be accepted by Sana and her family, protagonist's brain circuits are amazing. I've come this far. What a coincidence, I've had enough. Why not try killing the protagonist for the first time? Compared to other protagonists, Issei wants to die the most for trying so far to dig into my corner. Rias and Akeno looked at each other. It looks like one of the protagonists in this world is going to die. 
Issei tried to pursue Sana when Eiji wasn't in the plot. It makes sense that Eiji has stopped tolerating this one protagonist. The black-haired girl nodded. Is that all right? What do you mean, Akeno? Well. Didn't you talk yesterday about your older brother having something with Issei? Rias widened her eyes. Indeed, she did mention the things that happened in her house to Akeno yesterday. Actually when she asked her mother and father to get engaged to Eiji. It was in the dining room, and coincidentally her older brother and Grafia were also there. The latter was doing her usual maid hobby, but put the silver-haired woman aside. Her older brother was a little opposed when she said her wish to get engaged to Eiji. Rias, I think it's too soon to decide who your fiancé could be. Eiji Kun is good, but... There are still many good men out there. Besides, it hasn't been a month since you broke off the engagement with Riser. Ani Isama. What do you mean? If it's about the family's face. I'm fine not publicizing my engagement with Eiji for a while. At that time, she was not to be outdone by her older brother. To be honest lately her older brother was getting more and more strange. Grafia had even said that besides work, her brother often went somewhere to meet someone. She had been suspicious ever since. Rias. If you really want to get engaged. How about I recommend someone? Huh. Ani Isama, do you think I'm willing to get engaged to a man other than Eiji? No way. Even if the man you're referring to is very nice, I would never agree. She started to get angry at her older brother at that moment. Her mother was also there and she tried to calm down the situation that was about to heat up between her children. Rias, calm down. But mom. Ani Isama wants to force me with another man. Sertsks, you too. You'd better not force your sister. Do you want to do the same thing your father did when he got Rias engaged to Riser? Mom. Nice. By the way, she saw her father who was eating almost choke at that time. As for her older brother? He's getting annoying. Mom. I only want the best for Rias. I'm not forcing her, I'm just asking her not to rush things because there are other guys better than Eiji Kun out there. Ani Isama, you. For the first time, she wanted to throw a plate at her older brother's gently smiling face. It seemed hypocritical, but she sighed. Fortunately she managed to calm herself down and believed that her mother was on her side. As for her father? Well he seemed to be going along with what mom said back then. It was strange, but ever since the engagement with Riser was cancelled. Her father had somehow become more submissive to her mother. Better than Eiji Kun? Sertsks, do you have a problem with my future son-in-law? Mom. Nice again. Her mother admitted that Eiji is her future son-in-law. Her older brother's expression became complicated at that moment. Oh, she remembered the cockabile incident. Her older brother and Eiji did have a conflict. Maybe because at that time Eiji didn't listen to her older brother not to kill Kakabile, her older brother held a grudge. It seemed to be because of that. Her older brother's heart was too small to hold a grudge because of that, right? The gentle expression on his face was just a mask to cover his hypocrisy. Mom, it's not that. It's just that I have indeed met a young man who I think is suitable for Rias. She already had a bad feeling at that moment. Oh? Who is that young man? Her mother asked curiously. Her older brother seemed a little excited which annoyed her. Then he said the name of someone she didn't like. That young man's name is Issei Hayadu. He is this generation's red dragon emperor. Although he's a bit of a pervert, but I can see that he really likes Rias. It's not an ordinary liking, but I can see that Issei Kun loves Rias sincerely without seeing her background or anything. Except for her father who acted as if she had nothing to do with the current drama. She, her mother, and Grafia looked at her older brother flatly. She could see Grafia staring at her older brother with raised eyebrows. Grafia also seemed to be on her side at that moment instead of supporting her husband, which was good. Sertsks, are you pretending to be stupid or ignorant? That young man you're referring to? Isn't he just lusting after your sister? Mother asked this to her older brother which made her happy. Yes. Issei was just greedy for her body. That protagonist was so stubborn with things that happened in his previous life. Even though he aspired to be the harem king. The girls he pursued during his time were limited to her and the other girls who became the heroine in the high school DXD franchise. That guy sucks. Her older brother was silent for a moment. No, mom. Isn't it natural for a man to lust after the woman he loves? She could see her father suddenly drop his fork when he heard this. After picking up his fallen fork, he looked at everyone with a smile as if watching a drama. Continue. Her father was also strange, he seemed to be too relaxed these days and preferred to have fun by playing golf, bowling, or other types of sports with his friends from other devil noble families. 
she had heard from her mother that her father rarely came home these days because he was busy playing with his friends. Even her father's duties as clan head Gremory, he assigned her mother to do it for him. Her father's change did not trouble her. The problem now was her older brother who seemed to have become a supporter of the protagonist. Fortunately at that time neither her mother nor father agreed with her older brother. Her mother approved that she was engaged to Aji, and her father also approved. The latter did it lightly as if he didn't want to bother with his children's problems anymore. Those were the things that happened in the past. To be precise, it happened last night. Now, she looked at Akeno and said with a shrug. It's okay. It would actually be good if Issei died. That way, Ani Isama will have no more reason to promote Issei to my family. As for how Ani Isama will react after learning what happened to Issei. Well. Rias was honestly a little worried that her older brother would do something bad to Eiji if he knew Eiji killed Issei. If her older brother did, she would certainly try to stop him. But still, what if she didn't succeed? She could only hope that everything would be fine. Ding. Eiji took out the D-dial from his pocket and saw that there was a message from Rias. Rias, do it quickly and without leaving any traces. Eiji. You can do it. Fight too. His lips twitched. Was it just him or did the crimson-haired girl want him to kill Issei as soon as possible? Although the message did not say it clearly. Who knew what Issei had done to make Rias want him to kill Issei without leaving a trace? But that wasn't the end of it. There were also messages from the other girls. Lala, Eiji. During lunch break at school a blonde girl from first year asked me about you. Ah, that must be yummy. That girl seemed to have transferred to his school and became a first year student at Kyogakuen. Yui, Eiji Kun. It's not good to skip school unless you're sick. By the way be careful. The black-haired girl was basically worried about him, but she typed this message with her tx under a personality. Run, woo woo. AG. AG. Lala, she brought fish from her planet to the cooking class. I happened to be in the same group as her. Guess what happened? What? What happened? The cooking class was blown up. She's a little curious. Run, when I wanted to cut the fish with a knife, it flew up and slapped my face with its tail. Whoa Lala, that girl is pranking me again. And Asia, she was also slapped by the fish when she wanted to cut it. It was only when Lala used her invention that the fish was finally cut. Run, Lala, she clearly could have used that invention earlier. But she didn't. She must have done it on purpose to prank me and Asia. Otherwise, I don't know what it is. Crying dog emoticon. Are you the elementary school kid who snitched on his parents? Eiji shook his head with a smile. If it was Lala, the girl must have been unintentional and in the original work this kind of thing also happened frequently. So run, Asia, you guys have to endure it. Actually there were also other messages coming from Asia, my AI, and surprisingly Elife. But putting that aside, he was now staring at the boy in front of him whose hands and feet were bound with golden chains. The smile on his face disappeared and was replaced by an expressionless face. Eiji. Damn it. How dare you play with your cell phone at a time like this? Let go of me. I'll kill you. A-H-H. -H. I'll. You're so noisy. Before Issei could finish speaking, he slapped his face. His already battered face was now even worse. The wounds on his body didn't help either, but made him look like a pathetic protagonist who had been defeated by villain. Was he villain? Probably. But certainly the sound of the slap was very loud and echoed in the endless dark space that was actually a small dimension created by his magic. Here, even if there was a plot armor or the world's will calling for reinforcements to save protagonist. All would be useless. No one could save the protagonist except himself. Now that protagonist was suspended by magic chains in the air with his power which he had again sealed which made him helpless of course. You must be wondering why the situation happened. Earlier when he had cured Sana's father of his sleep disease using his magic. Precisely one of the highest healing magic Anos possessed called the Eichel, all complete healing magic. This was the strongest version of the end spell that he had previously used on Sana. But unlike Sana whose appearance became more beautiful, this spell focuses more on healing. With this spell, he can reverse and heal all wounds inflicted on any living being regardless of race and can even cure things like sleep disease with ease. Sana's father, Lord Sitrai woke up just then. Sana and her mother were of course happy. After that they decided to celebrate Sana's father's recovery and welcome him with a meal. So you're the guy who beat Sana in her chess hobby and became her fiancé. Agce, yeah, right? Thank you for curing me. At that time Sana's father thanked him with a serious face. If it wasn't for you, Ag, I might not be able to wake up again. After all, in all these years, 
there was no one who could cure a devil with sleep disease until you came along. Sana who was busy feeding him looked proud as if her fiancé's achievements belonged to her at that time which made her mother and father smile amusedly. You're welcome. He nodded and said, it just so happens that I mastered a suitable healing magic and am able to cure people affected by sleep disease. I'm glad it was actually useful to cure you, father-in-law. In addition to the satisfaction on his face at the sight of his future son-in-law, Sana's father's expression also seemed interested when he mentioned the healing magic he used to cure him. In addition to serving as the head of the Citri clan, he remembered that Sana's father was also supposed to be the head of the famous Citri hospital in the underworld and the human world. Lastly, of course, the Citri family went into the business world in the human world while pretending to be human. He seemed curious about the magic spell, but he also seemed hesitant to ask his future son-in-law for something. As a good future son-in-law, he naturally took the initiative to say, I heard that there are quite a few devils affected by sleep disease in the underworld. Many of them did not survive, and there are also those who have been asleep for many years. If father-in-law is willing, why don't you or the people in your infirmary learn the healing magic I used to cure you? It will take care of others who have not been cured of sleep disease and those who will be affected by the disease in the future. The three people in the room looked shocked, especially Sana's father. Sana asked doubtfully. Eiji, is it all right? The girl seemed to be worried that she had asked too much of him. But hey it was only one healing spell, that spell was like a drop in the ocean of magic spells Anos possessed. There was also Varvados who he knew now he had full access to all his magic. Until now he had never even tried all the magic he could use because there was no situation that required him to do so. He lightly said, this is just one of the magic I learned in my free time. Precisely learned instantly from his character card. Really? A.G., no. My son-in-law, if you are willing to share that healing magic spell with Citri family. Citri family is willing to pay you. With this magic, our hospital can save more lives of devils affected by sleep disease and other incurable diseases in underworld. Of course if you want, my son-in-law. I don't mind transferring a few percent of our hospital's shares. Oh wait, aren't you going to marry Sana? Those things you can actually have naturally. How about? Sana's father realized the value of the Eichel mantra that could almost cure any wound or disease. And he seemed to be in business mode, he thought hard about giving her something in exchange for the spell instead of just asking for it for free. Dear, we are eating. Can you talk about something like this later? Lady Citri said to her husband. Sana's father was stunned for a moment before pretending to cough and looking at him, ah. Sorry son-in-law, I was too excited. He shook his head and snapped his fingers. Instantly, not only Sana's father, but even Sana's mother and Sana were dumbfounded by the information that appeared in their brains. Honestly if it was for his own nation. He would not be stingy and if with that spell it could make his future in-laws happy and like him even more. It would make things easier in the future if they found out that not only Sana, she was planning to marry their other daughter. Cog, a woman owed him a promise for losing a bet. He has no intention of letting her go just because she is not at home right now. Sana says that her older sister is busy with her work and hasn't been home for a week. It's a pity, but he can woo the woman's family first. Sana's father laughed, there was a look of admiration on his face as he examined the information he had sent straight to his brain. Sana's mother and Sana too. The latter didn't seem too surprised as he had previously transferred other spells to her. Even so, the girl was still happy. Son-in-law. If there is anything you want just say so. As long as I can give it to you, I will definitely give it to you. What do I want? Well. I already have your daughter. Isn't having your daughter enough? Daughter he was referring to were all his daughters. Sana blushed at that. Sana's mother said something Akeno like. Era Era was very popular among Japanese women, although Sana's mother was a woman born in the underworld. She must have watched too many dramas on TV. Host, what about Sana's mom? He decided to pretend that he didn't hear what his system said just then. Ha 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 ha. Enough. Enough. If you want, you can also marry her now and give me lots of grandchildren. Dad. Sana who was already blushing was further embarrassed by what her father said. She lowered her face which now looked as red as Rhea's hair. Sana's mother sighed and said it was a pity Sirafal wasn't here. That's right, it's a pity. At that time, the atmosphere in the dining room was very harmonious. It would be a lie if Eiji didn't enjoy it, he enjoyed eating with his fiancé's family. Although he wanted to enjoy this kind of moment longer, he knew he couldn't because a certain protagonist was seeking death. After Issei's inner voice that said it would kill all the guards in Sana's house who got in the way. One of the servants at Sana's house walked into the room and said frantically. Sana's father frowned as he too was unhappy to have his family time interrupted. What's wrong? 
Lord Citra? Outside, a madman has broken in. He killed all the guards guarding the gate and is now dealing with another guard in the courtyard. He also keeps shouting that he's come to cure you, Lord Citra. Cure me? But I've already been cured by my son-in-law. And if he came to cure me, why would that man kill the guards in my house? Impudent. This person clearly came just to cause trouble. Sana's father instantly rose from his chair with an angry expression and the power of an ultimate class devil coursing through his body. Of course he refrained from exploding right then and there, but everyone in the room could sense his power as the Citri clan head. Everyone of course stopped eating and came out to see who the madman was. And it really was Issei whose appearance was somewhat different, but she knew it was him. After coming out of Tiamat's cave, he had indeed gotten stronger than before and he sensed that Issei was not a human but a humanoid dragon. Stop. Boy, who are you? You dare to kill the guards in my house. I hope you're ready to accept the consequences for offending the Citri clan. Lord Citri said coldly as they stood facing each other in front of Issei who a few meters away had just finished blowing off the head of the last guard in Sana's house with his bare hands. Back then Issei had never even taken out his boosted gear just to kill a bunch of middle class devils. Lord Citri. Issei seemed to want to greet Sana's father, even smiling at the sight of Sana and her mother. But when he saw Sana's father looking healthy, he was shocked. Not only that, the moment he saw him appear next to Sana's father, his expression instantly became ugly. You. You. Eiji. Why are you here? No way. Don't tell me you're getting ahead of me again. You bastard. How come you always show up at all the places I want to visit? Sana's father's expression darkened when Issei dared to ignore him and pointed at his son-in-law while shouting at him. He couldn't help but laugh at that and gave Issei an amused look. Oh Issei, it's you. As usual. You never tire of finding trouble with me whether it's school, outside, and here. Do you want to cure my father-in-law to get close to my fiancé? You're disgusting as always. It was the same moment that he complained in his heart that the heroines heard. Every word he said to Issei also echoed in Sana's courtyard and of course everyone heard it. Dash. A slash N, if you want to read 8 advanced chapters with a faster update frequency than the web novel, you can read it on my Patreon whose link is below. HTTPS slash slash www.patreon.com slash doglicker. Replace A with A and search in your browser. By the way, don't forget to throw power stones and leave a review to motivate me, smiley face, comment. 45 comment. Vote. 0 left. Chapter 95, The End of Protagonist Issei. No wonder that person is so stubborn about wanting to cure Lord Citri. It turns out that his real goal is to get close to Sanasama. Disgusting. Fortunately Sanasama's fiancé Ajisama arrived first, otherwise. The servants in Sana's house were whispering, and they were doing so from a distance. Ordinary people couldn't possibly catch the sound of their whispers, but people like Issei. He certainly heard what the servants were saying. He didn't care what the servants were saying, but he was more concerned with the gazes of Sana and her family who were looking at him with disgust. They certainly heard what Aji said. Damn it. Aji, how did that boy know his plan so well? Issei's expression became ugly, he stared at Eiji with his red eyes filled with hatred. Eiji. He was still staring at Issei with amusement at that moment. Sana doesn't need to be said. Having heard Issei's inner voice before, she naturally already knew what Issei's intentions were. What she said at this time only made her even more disgusted with Issei, maybe even hate that protagonist. His mother-in-law, she was seeing Issei for the first time, and after hearing what he said. His mother-in-law frowned and looked at Issei with displeasure on her pretty face. After all, what mother would be happy to know that her daughter was being targeted by a scheming man like Issei who wanted to cure her husband to win the heart of her engaged daughter? This kind of trick, for a woman who has watched many dramas on TV. She must be familiar with Issei's cunning tricks and she believes what he says about that boy. Issei's arrival here while killing the guards at Sana's house didn't help either, but made everyone in this place no longer support him. Even if the protagonist's halo existed, it was useless because the protagonist went too far to put himself in this situation. So you want to heal me to get close to my daughter? Sana's father looked at Issei coldly. A blue magic circle appeared behind him as if ready to attack Issei at any moment. Issei clucked his tongue, even if he was stupid, he knew he had failed and there was no point in pretending. He looked at Sana's father arrogantly and admitted what he said proudly. It seemed like he was confident in his power, and he was not afraid of Sana's father. That's right. What Eiji said is true. I originally came here for your daughter, Sana. If I heal you, wouldn't it be natural that Sana would fall in love with me and leave her fiancé? Issei patted his clothes and stood up with a smile that he found handsome. Who would fall in love with you just because you cured my father? 
Issei, you're too confident. And there's no way I'm leaving Eiji just because of you. Who do you think you are? Sana couldn't stand what Issei said. The disgusted and contemptuous expression on her face was clearly visible which made Issei dumbfounded. Sana, why do you and those girls look down on me so much? I'm the Red Dragon Emperor. How could I be inferior to a bastard like Eiji? The girls Issei was referring to must be Rias, Akeno, Konako, and the others who in the past had always looked at him with unkind gazes. It was different from his previous life, which confused protagonist. Issei's face had a green illusion when thinking of his girls with other men. Sana looked at Issei coldly, she was about to say something, even his father-in-law was also about to attack Issei with his magic. But at that moment he patted his father-in-law's shoulder and said, Father-in-law, you don't have to bother dealing with Issei. Let me do it. Son-in-law, are you sure? This boy seems strong enough to defeat all the guards in this house. Sana's father looked very worried about his son-in-law, he seemed to be completely conquered by what he gave him earlier. Besides, had Sana not told her father how strong he was? But whatever it was, he looked at Issei who was also looking at him with killing intent. Don't worry, father-in-law. I have a problem with that boy and it's time to end it. Since he dared to think of my fiancé, I must kill him with my own hands. His father-in-law seemed very supportive of him at that moment. He nodded and said something like let the young one solve his own problem. Sana cheered for him, and surprisingly her mother did too. Protagonist Issei looked jealous, he was so jealous to see Soma and even his beautiful mother cheering for his enemy. As for him. There was no cheering for him, he clenched his fists and a green aura exploded from his body. A strong wind blew with the green aura. Making the yard and even Sitra's territory in the distance affected. Eiji could see his father-in-law's expression change, Sana and his mother-in-law looked worried because Issei was emitting power that seemed to be above the ultimate class league. Actually the level of the ultimate class itself was uneven. Not all ultimate class beings were as strong as Sertsks who held the title of the strongest devil in the underworld. Although Sana's father was also an ultimate class, he knew he was much weaker than Sertsks and even Issei at the moment. If this was a game. The lowest level of the ultimate class was 100. A person whose power had reached the ultimate class could certainly still increase his power further. And Issei's current power must have reached over level 200 which was only slightly worse than Sertsk's. That was according to him of course, but for a protagonist who could be this strong with only a week's training. People toiling for years would surely vomit blood or be envious knowing the protagonist's astonishing growth speed. Except for him of course because to him Issei's current power was just. Eiji. You think you can beat the current me? He he you're naive. Issei laughed coldly. The current me is stronger than before. Even you. You won't be able to beat me. But this is a good opportunity. After I kill you. Rias, Asia, and the others. All those girls will become. Before protagonist finished his words, Eiji appeared in front of him at a speed he couldn't keep up with, he grabbed the protagonist's face and threw him into the sky. He himself flew into the sky and Issei's face was still held in one hand. That protagonist was already in his balance breaker suit now, but no matter what he tried to remove his hand, he could not do so which made him continue to scream. Actually A.G. could have teleported the two of them to another place, but why should he do so when he could teleport protagonist in a way that hurt his pride? And sure enough, the protagonist's fragile self-esteem was hurt because of this. A.H.H. A.H.H. Why? I've obviously practiced hard and am already this strong. Why can't I even get A.G.'s hand off my face? Damn it. Damn it. The heroes wondered what was going on. But some of them knew Eiji was beating up the current protagonist Issei and planning to kill him. And none of them cared about Issei, not even Issei's childhood friend Irina who didn't care much about him. Azizith. When Eiji said this, he and Issei were immediately transferred to another place. It's another dimension where no matter how far you look, you'll only see darkness like space without any stars, suns, or planets. Even so, he and Issei could still see each other clearly. What he was using was actually one of Ana's spells again. Azizith or it could also be called Dimensional Prison. This is magic that allows him to open gates to other dimensions. In addition to making it difficult for the person brought into this place to get out unless he allows it or the person is strong enough to blow up the small dimension he created. He also didn't have to worry about Issei's plot armor calling in reinforcements. That world's will, he was sure that creature couldn't do anything to help Issei either. After all, this was his personal dimension that was separate from the universe itself. Anos was so crazy, he had a spell like this when the man's character fusion had only reached 21%. Who knew what other spells he could use after reaching 100%, but put that aside. Eiji threw Issei and the boy rolled on the floor of the dark dimension. 
protagonist looked around nervously as it seemed like him was a little scared of the place he was in now. A.G. Where are you taking me? Get me out of here or else. If not what? Are you still so confident to beat me? A.G. asked indifferently. Red lightning crackled in his hand, and a sword made of lightning appeared in his hand. Before Issei could finish his words again, he had already appeared in front of him with a vicious slashing motion. Issei's pupils shrank, he was late to act, even so he believed his armor's durability was enough to fend off Eiji's attack this time. Partner. No. You must dodge. But he heard Drake shouting frantically which made him move his body naturally. But it was too late. Ah. Issei screamed, his body stung by millions of volts of electricity that made him scream so loudly in his armor. Eiji's red lightning was no worse, even stronger than the lightning that some of the lightning gods out there had. In that dark dimension, the red light, or rather the red lightning that was electrocuting protagonist shone brightly. Not only the sound of screaming, there was also the sound of thunder rumbling so loudly there. A.G. looked at the scene indifferently. It had been a long time since he had used the power of Bobo Eboe thunderstorms, and after the fusion reached 100%. With just this power, he was actually able to destroy a city with a lightning strike. This was not the end of course, he planned to slash Issei again. In that one slash, the boy's chest armor had been broken and he looked burnt like someone who had been electrocuted. Next, he slashed repeatedly, creating a storm of red lightning that fell like rain and all of it focused on Issei who could only scream in pain and had no chance to escape. After screaming for a few minutes, Issei's body shone brightly with a green aura and at the same time he also started to say a spell almost similar to Vala and he started to transform. I, who am about to awaken. I am the heavenly dragon who has stolen the principles of domination from God. I laugh at the infinite, and I fret over the dream. I shall become the red dragon of domination. And I will plunge you into the depths of red purgatory. Juggernaut drive. A.G. I will hereby kill you. I'll avenge all the pain you gave me in this life. I'll make you fucking pay. A.G. looked at Issei whose body shone brightly and instantly turned into a red dragon as big as Vala he had once fought with Grin. Issei immediately attacked in his juggernaut drive mode by shooting a green aura from his mouth that covered hundreds of meters. He thought A.G. would definitely not be able to dodge this attack and he would definitely die. However, he didn't know that someone once did the same move as him, a certain white dragon to be exact and he ended up with. Dead. A.G. didn't try to dodge, he just smiled and took the attack. Boom. Issei was happy, he thought A.G. was dead after receiving his attack. In his dragon form, he burst out laughing and his laughter echoed in the place. But not long after the light from the explosion disappeared, he was dumbfounded because the person he thought was dead without leaving anything behind. That person, A.G. stood without the slightest injury. The clothes he was wearing were not even damaged at all after receiving his attack. No way. I already used 80% of my power in that attack. How could you not even be injured in the slightest? This doesn't make sense. I'm the Red Dragon Emperor. I've mastered my juggernaut drive mode with it perfectly. How could I not be able to hurt a human like you? A.G. You're sneaky. What tricks are you using? Issei roared incompetently. His earlier confidence also seemed to be faltering. Although the current him seemed to be able to control his juggernaut drive mode perfectly, even his juggernaut drive was much stronger than Vala's and without the risk of going crazy at all except for fatigue after wearing it. After coming this far, he still couldn't hurt Eiji. Killing the boy was even more impossible. It made him who had been the strongest in his previous life as the Red Dragon Emperor doubt the world. Eiji's existence in this life made him always feel at a disadvantage. His girls in his previous life who loved him were stolen from him. Even when he wanted to take revenge many times, he would always be slapped and again Eiji stepped on him. Issei's mentality was on the verge of collapse. At first he thought of trying to attack again because it was probably just a coincidence that Eiji could withstand his previous attack. Right now, Eiji was probably just pretending that he was fine. Consoling himself, Issei was sure he hadn't lost completely. He could still win. Issei, you still seem to be trying to entertain yourself. A.G. shook his head as if bored. Why are you protagonists always like this? Well whatever. He raised his index finger at Issei. At the tip of his finger, there was a green light familiar to what Issei had fired earlier. But unlike Issei, the power fluctuations in it were many times stronger than what he had fired. Issei who saw this was dumbfounded, he didn't understand what A.G. was saying about calling him the protagonist. Although he was a little happy to be called the protagonist because he thought it was cool, but how could Eiji use the same attack as him? And it was much stronger than his. Drake who was watching this from Issei's perspective was also dumbfounded. 
The red dragon was clearly dumbfounded because what was at Eiji's fingertips contained the same dragon power as himself. Seeing Eiji grinning. Unlike Issei who just stood dumbly with his huge dragon body. Drake shouted at Issei again, he this time reminded his foolish host to run as far away as possible because he knew resisting the attack was pointless. However, it was too late. Eiji's voice echoed throughout that dark dimension. Full counter. The green light again shone brightly in that dark dimension and the range of its rays this time was wider than before. Green, green light like someone's green hat illuminated the entire dimension. With his current power, he could tweak the full counter and make it temporarily withstand the attacks thrown at him before countering more strongly by adding his own power. He thought this was enough to kill the protagonist, but even after the light that illuminated the entire dimension disappeared. Although Issei had returned to his human form with severe injuries and his armor shattered into pieces. Issei protagonist's endurance is very strong. He's like a cockroach. He's still breathing after being hit that hard. Eiji believed this must be one of the effects of the armor plot that could save the protagonist. In the original work, he knew Issei had even died without leaving anything behind, but he could still live after his body was recreated using a certain dragon meat. Even so, he knew this kind of effect only happened once. If he attacked Issei again now, he was sure he could kill protagonist. He prepared to use his own spell to kill Issei, but Miss System suddenly reminded him of something. Host, aren't you thinking of using that ring? Ah. Right. Now that you mention it? Miss System, this is a good opportunity to try it out. Looking at Issei who now had his hands and feet bound by golden chains. By the way that golden chain was one of Varvato's spells called Jigel. That golden chain had an ability similar to the golden chain of a certain franchise that could basically seal the enemy's movement and power. Staring at the gluttony ring in his hand, Eiji stretched out his hand to Issei's face. Those were the things that happened before the situation developed this far. WH what are you trying to do? Eiji. Stop it. I'm sorry. I give up. You, you can't kill me. Issei was badly injured, his power was sealed, and the drake inside him was also offline. He stared at Eiji who held out his ominous looking ring attached hand with a look of horror. Surrender. Eiji slightly stopped his movements at that moment which made Issei have hope in his eyes. Yes. I'm giving up. I surrender. Help. Eiji. After this I will no longer bother you, I will not provoke you again in the future. Oh. What about Rias, Asia, Sana, and the other girls you've been chasing? They're all my women. Are you going to give up on them too? He was slightly intrigued and wondered what Issei's answer would be. Issei gritted his teeth, he seemed hesitant, but for the sake of his own life, whether it was a lie or not. He looked at him and said. I give up. So let me go, okay. Eiji was expressionless, but he enjoyed Issei's expression of begging for his life. No, he felt happy to see a protagonist begging for his. Next time, he should create some scenarios for that. But that was it. As for letting Issei go. He could see that Issei was lying and he hadn't really given up on the heroines in his franchise. As expected of a harem protagonist. Besides his life, the most important thing in his life was beautiful girls. That was actually not much different from himself. The ring on his hand shone with black light, and he looked at Issei indifferently. If you begged me long before today honestly. I might still be able to give you a chance, Issei. His hand was placed on Issei's head. No. No. Eiji. You bastard. Didn't I beg you? Let go of me damn it. Don't kill me. I still have to live. I'm going to be the harem king. What do you want to do to me? Stop it. You can't kill me I <sighs> Looking at Issei who was screaming as if his soul was leaving his body and trying to release the chains that bound him. He did not budge and continued the devouring process that made Issei slowly dry up like a corpse. But unfortunately. It's too late now. Goodbye Issei Hayadu. Your second chance is enough up to here. Your girls in the previous life, I will take care of them all. He could see at the last moment that Issei looked very surprised as if he had been struck by lightning again because he knew that this was his second life. The boy seemed to understand why he had known so many things about him all this time, and the girls he liked were always taken before him. Despite not knowing for sure, Issei realized that he knew a lot about him from his previous life which put him at a disadvantage. That was all he could think about before his vision went dark. Issei's body dried to ashes, the ashes scattered and the ring of gluttony in Eiji's hand shone even brighter. At this moment, a different system notification was heard for the first time. Ding. Congratulations host, you successfully killed the protagonist of High School DxD. The plot in the High School DxD franchise collapsed and you can't get any more rewards from that franchise. Don't worry though. 
as a reward for your achievement in killing the protagonist for the first time. New system features have been unlocked. Dash. A slash N, if you want to redate advanced chapters with a faster update frequency than the web novel, you can read it on my Patreon whose link is below. HTTPS slash slash www.patreon.com slash doglicker. Replace A with A and search in your browser. By the way, don't forget to throw power stones and leave a review to motivate me, smiley face, creator's thoughts. Doglicker gods doglicker gods. I have fulfilled one of my promises to kill the protagonist, the rest will follow. By the way I know the story became boring because AG became so manipulative, but I will tell you that he will stop doing it in chapter 103 plus. At least by then he will stop focusing on hunting down the heroines in such a manipulative way. It will be the opposite flow of what AG used to do. So be patient and thank you for reading my book so far. Comment. 47 Comment. Vote. 0 Left. Chapter 96, Overnight at Sana's House. What did AG feel the first time he killed protagonist? Aside from feeling the ring of gluttony transferring the powers Issei had to him such as dragon things and even the boosted gear that he could now use. Speaking of boosted gear, that thing is now actually in him including Drake. Unlike Issei who couldn't control the channel whether Drake could see through him or not. Luckily AG could control whenever Drake could go online and talk to him. So there was no need to worry about a dragon snooping on the things he did with his girls. Did that need to be explained? Of course it does. AG wanted to say that unless he forgot, he would definitely explain things that could trigger misunderstandings and be toxic to people. By the way he didn't feel anything after killing the protagonist. I mean he didn't feel happy, sad, or anything. Oh wait, he was a little sad because he couldn't get any more rewards from the high school DXD franchise. Host, don't you want to know about the system's new feature? AG was still in the small dimension he created. He looked around vigilantly and wondered if there would be any attacking him. For example, when exiting this dimension. Perhaps the world's will was planning an ambush. Before that, it is good to check the things you have before the enemy attacks. Sure, tell me what kind of feature it is. You're too wary. But whatever, let me explain the system's new features. This new feature will at least help you solve the problem of plot collapse. There are also other uses such as. Miss System sounded excited. She explained that the name of this feature is Replace Protagonist. It's a simple name. Before Miss System explained further, AG could even slightly guess what this feature did. But still, he chose to listen to what explanation the system gave. Unlike the inner voice feature. The Replace Protagonist feature allows him to replace the protagonist in a franchise. Not replacing as in possessing the protagonist's body and changing appearance to the protagonist, but he took on the role of the protagonist himself. For example, with this feature, he can replace the role of the protagonist Issei without having to shout up high. Of course and the plot that will happen in the future will automatically move and he can do anything in that plot as usual. Although the plot of High School DXD has already collapsed due to the death of the protagonist Issei, but with this feature he can still maintain the plot by replacing the protagonist. That's why Miss System said that with this feature he could solve the problem of the collapsed plot and get the system rewards from the plot again. But unlike usual, there would be a reduction in the quality of the rewards which he didn't mind too much because at least when he caught the other heroines in the franchise. Not only the heroine, he could still get other benefits from his system. It's not like AG couldn't be bothered to catch heroin without being rewarded because of the beautiful heroine herself. Aren't they also rewards? But still, it would be better if someone paid him for it. Just like people who love money and women. AG loved profit and women. Not only that. In addition to the advantages this feature had, there was also a drawback in this feature that made it impossible for him to replace all the protagonists just like that. There are two requirements for him to replace the protagonist with this feature and he can choose one of the two. One replacing a dead protagonist in his franchise. This one he plans to use on the protagonist Issei and it's free. Two replacing the protagonist using the system points he got after influencing other franchises. Now for this paid one he was confused, but Miss System explained that after this feature was unlocked, there were also things like points that he now had and the points he had accumulated so far were 470,100 points. Those points he got from influencing plots in the high school DXD, to love are you, bunny girl senpai, and Oshi no Ko franchises. What about the franchise that Lu Soul comes from? Miss System explained that what he did back then didn't really affect the plot in the original works. After all, he only killed random Lu Soul that affected heroin from other franchises like Harina and Sana back then. There was also the influence of the world's will that arbitrarily released all the loose souls in that franchise to affect other franchises, thus making the plot in the original work chaotic. Hearing this, Eiji felt that throwing himself into the plot of the franchise was very troublesome. 
so he preferred to focus on the franchises he had influenced first. Oh wait, doesn't he have a lot of subordinates? What's the point of subordinates if not to help him handle things he's lazy to do? Actually, so far, apart from ordering all Shadow Garden members to expand the organization's intelligence reach to the entire world. Since the world's will was mentioned, he had added another mission to the Nine Shadows including Irina and Zenobia in it to eradicate the loose souls possessing the heroines. If it was the protagonist in the original work, he would need to perform the conquest method to make the girl possessed by the loose soul fall in love with him. But Eiji. He had taught all the shadows a certain spell that made it easier for them to eradicate loose souls possessing a person's body. It was actually the same spell that he used to instantly eliminate the loose soul inside Sana's body. It was one of Barvato's spells called Purification that allowed the user to purify every dirty and negative thing on one's body including loose souls. When he taught this spell to the girls in Shadow Garden, the girls had a look of justice and passion in their eyes to eliminate evil beings like loose souls in this world. The girls have a hero complex that makes him smile wryly mentally. As a good leader, how could he say that he told them to do this to secure the heroines? If it wasn't the heroines, he wouldn't have bothered to go this far. For now. Immediately make me replace the protagonist Issei. Ding. Start analyzing the high school DXD franchise. Oh. This process doesn't seem to be as fast as throwing rewards. In the system interface, AG could see the percentage numbers starting to move. It was only a few seconds and after reaching 100%. Ding. It was found that the protagonist Issei Hayato had died and there was no problem if the host replaced the protagonist's role. Ding. Successfully replaced the protagonist Issei Hayato. Now host has become the new high school DXD protagonist. All the plots and fate threads of the heroines in the franchise are connected to you. Thread of destiny? What kind of thing? AG didn't ask, but he thought the thread of destiny must be something similar to red thread. It was an invisible thread that was said that everyone had it from birth and they already had their own soulmates waiting for them in the future. People usually only have one common thread or at most a few as there are people of status who practice plogamy. But protagonists, especially harem protagonists, such people have many common threads and all of them are connected to the heroines who are destined to become their wives. Basically something like that. Actually before replacing the protagonist, A.G. thought he must have a lot of those threads, right? Exactly he cut the protagonist's red thread and attached it to himself with his every action. Now that he had replaced the protagonist, he had many of them connected to him. Although he was already this strong, unfortunately he still could not see the thread or the flow of destiny. Something like that. Perhaps that world will had the ability to do so. Speaking of the world will, A.G. frowned and asked his system. Miss System. I know what you want to ask. So is it possible? You know, the other party is troublesome enough if she's left alone. After this, who knows what he's trying to do to trouble me. With my current power. You can. Seriously. A.G. widened his eyes slightly. Why are you only telling me now? Would you believe me if I said I didn't want to interrupt your fun? After all, earlier you were excited to hear that the worlds will change the plot. Miss System has a reason. Don't know if that's the real reason or not. A.G. rolled his eyes. It was true that he was previously excited when someone like the worlds will wanted to fight against him. But now, he felt that if that person was not eradicated immediately, troublesome things would continue to be thrown at him and that was troublesome. Put that aside. Where does she live? At Satri's family residence. It was 2021 in the underworld which meant it was already night. It had been over seven hours since A.G. had left to deal with Issei and there had been no news of him. Sana continued to walk back and forth in her room, she was uneasy. At first she wasn't too worried, but as the hours passed, she began to worry about A.G. because he hadn't returned until now. She originally thought that after killing Issei, A.G. had gone straight back to his house. But after she contacted the people in his house to ask for confirmation, the answer she got was. A.G. hasn't returned yet. Isn't he at your house, Sana? No, he was here this morning. But after he left to deal with Issei somewhere. He hasn't returned until now. Eh. So A.G. wasn't there either. He wasn't. It was A.G.'s first fiancé, Lala whom she contacted using a device called D-Dial that the girl had given her in the past. Sana had not received a better version like the E-Linker, but put that aside. Upon learning this, she said that A.G. was also not at her house and after that they ended the call. Her relationship with Lala wasn't too close and wasn't bad, but she hadn't talked much with the other party during this time and it was awkward enough that she ended the call immediately after getting an answer. Rather than chatting, she would rather think of ways to find out where A.G. was now. Actually she had thought that something happened to A.G. when she fought with Issei, but could Issei even hurt A.G.? 
From his previous inner voice, she knew Issei was no match for Eiji. Maybe she was too confident in Eiji's strength, but a few hours ago she also felt something different about herself. Not sure what it was, but... Sana, why don't you close your windows at night? You'll catch a cold. I am a devil, the night breeze is not enough to give me a cold. Sana naturally denied, she was a devil, she had a pretty high resistance to the night wind. But not long after that she widened her words as she heard a familiar voice from the direction of her bedroom window. She turned her head only to see her silver-haired fiancé standing by the window. Eiji. Sana immediately threw herself at him, and said worriedly while patting his body. Are you okay? Issei didn't hurt you, right? Eiji who had just entered through the window, he looked fine, even his clothes were still as clean as the morning. He hugged his bespectacled fiancé and said, I'm fine. Issei wasn't able to hurt me and that boy no longer exists in this world. The meaning was clear. Issei was dead and Sana understood this. She looked a little surprised to hear of the protagonist's death since Eiji had actually done it, but that was all before she let out a sigh of relief and smiled like a happy wife seeing her husband just come home from work. Good you're fine, but why did you take so long? Sana asked with curiously. Eiji quickly answered. After I killed Issei. I took a walk in the underworld first, the scenery here is quite nice, I was curious and did some sightseeing for a few hours. That was a lie. Eiji felt Sana and even the other girls didn't need to know that he had traveled somewhere to deal with the world's will in their world. It wasn't that he didn't want to tell them, but for now he would rather discuss that later and focus on the beautiful scenery before his eyes. What Sana was wearing right now excited him as a man. Really? Yes, do I look like a man who likes to lie? You did. Sana almost wanted to say this while shouting. After all, who from the first time they entered school pretended not to know her, Tsubaki, and the other heroines. Back then he even secretly mocked her as having brain problems because of the things that happened in her original work even though on the surface he was smiling and very friendly. Sana looked at her fiancé flatly, she was actually waiting for his inner voice to explain the truth as usual. But no. His inner voice didn't say anything at all. Doesn't that mean Eiji is really telling the truth? Sana's doubts lessened. It actually didn't matter whether Eiji was lying or not because she knew the boy was lying probably for her own good. As far as she knew Eiji, although the boy liked to pretend, he usually did it without any intention to hurt the heroines. Even so, as Sana looked into Eiji's blue eyes that seemed to have stars in them, she felt sucked into them and dazed. But it wasn't long after she felt Eiji's hands roaming over her body and his gaze resting on her chest. She just remembered that the clothes she was currently wearing were a black lingerie-like nightgown that showed off her figure, especially her breasts that had now grown larger thanks to Eiji's magic. Sana blushed. Eiji, UHNM. Eiji looked at Sana with a hot gaze. It was indeed a good idea to beautify the girl with his magic, and what the girl was wearing now only stimulated the evil fire in his heart. Now he had one hand rubbing the girl's thigh and his other hand hugging her slender waist. Sana was now not wearing glasses, and he could clearly see the girl's violet eyes gradually showing an obscene light. He grinned and whispered in his fiancé's ear. Sana, you are very beautiful tonight. Are you deliberately waiting for me to return to your house in this outfit? Sana, you are a lute girl. No, you misunderstand. I'm. I actually. Sana's voice was small, she didn't speak properly as her fiancé's hands moved more and more wildly on her body, she moaned, but didn't resist and just leaned her body on his broad chest. You. I didn't hear you clearly Sana. By the way is this my reward for curing your father? Reward. Sana just remembered. After Eiji healed her father and even give his spell on her family, she had not given Eiji any reward. Because Eiji thought this was his reward. Although her family was quite conservative in matters like this and long before she had told Eiji that they had to get married first if they wanted to do it. But feeling something pric cling in her stomach, she swallowed, she knew Eiji was already excited and wanted her badly tonight. If she refused him, she was afraid the boy would hate her, especially after what he had given her and her family. Yes. This is your gift. If you want, you can try your reward tonight. But. Please be gentle, okay. As Sana said that, her body was already lying on her large bed and in front of her eyes, she saw Eiji staring at her with a predatory smile ready to grave meat that made her gulp. I is it going to be okay? She remembered how big Eiji's thing was and wondered if it would fit inside her. Don't worry Sana, I'll be gentle. Sana almost believed what Eiji said, but a few seconds after that her dress was torn off and thrown on the floor. She found Eiji had also taken off his clothes and exposed his perfect body. She could see his muscles that looked like works of art and his penis that was currently towering over her stomach. Before she could say anything, one of Eiji's hands held both of hers above her head, 
pressing her to the bed, his other hand playing with her breasts, pinching her cherry red nipples vigorously. The boy also kissed and licked her neck greedily which made her moan in pleasure. Oh A.G. The feeling of her body being touched so much by her fiancé made her very aroused. Her legs wrapped around the boy's waist, and after a while she heard a whisper in her ear. I'll put it inside. Sana nodded. On. She was actually a little scared, not even daring to look as Aji's penis that was as big as her arm pressed against her small entrance and broke into her. Ah. And she felt it, she felt Aji entering her. Her eyes widened, feeling the pain as her membranes were torn, she screamed so loudly, she wanted to move her hands, but her hands were cruelly pressed to the bed by Aji. Although the boy said he would be gentle, he did it roughly which made her even more aroused instead of angry. The sound of rapid clapping could be heard as the dick continued to pound her womb, A.G. was on top of her while playing with her breasts, biting, and licking them greedily. The boy fucks her hard until the bed shakes violently. Slow down. A.G., please ack. 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 You say that, but your expression looks like you're really enjoying it, Sana. A.G. smiled at the expression his fiancé made. Although there were tears running down her cheeks, the girl's expression was extremely lewd. Her tongue stuck out, her saliva dripped, and her eyes rolled upwards. I'll be faster. The speed of his waist increased. No ack please don't go faster ack ack. Sana's short hair was disheveled, the expression on the girl's face was getting lewd. Fluid had even sprayed out repeatedly from her pussy, she had already climaxed, but her fiancé continued to fuck her viciously. Even so, the girl was enjoying it, she enjoyed her fiancé's rough treatment and felt she have a fetish for it. After the sound of wet clapping, and moans continued for two hours in the room. While kissing the girl's mouth passionately to silence her moans, A.G. finally come. He come inside Sana's womb. H.M.N.N.N. Sana's mind was blank from earlier and only filled by her fiancé's penis, she had climaxed many times in two hours, but this was the first time she felt the seed of the man she loved filling her womb until her stomach bulged. That was so hot. And that seed kept squirting inside her who knows how much until her mind drifted and she passed out. Pop. Pulling out his dick from Sana's tight hole that slowly spilled a lot of milk like a small river, A.G. was not satisfied yet. But seeing his fiancé who had already passed out in one round, he decided to end his night's sport. Looks like he fucked Sana too hard to make a devil like her even pass out in one round. He covered Sana's naked body with a blanket, closing the window of her room, he walked to the door to check whether it was locked or not. And as he did so. Ah. The panicked voice of a woman who had been peeking from behind the door was heard. Dash. A slash N, if you want to read 8 advanced chapters with a faster update frequency than the web novel, you can read it on my Patreon whose link is below. HTTPS slash slash www.patreon.com slash doglicker. Replace A with A and search in your browser. By the way, don't forget to throw power stones and leave a review to motivate me, smiley face, comment. 45 comment. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 97, Lady Satri who helps her future son-in-law. Right from the crack of her daughter's open bedroom door. Lady Satri originally wanted to check on her daughter's well-being as she knew the girl had been worried about her fiancé since he left. But when she got to the front of her daughter's room, she was stunned because just then she heard a familiar clapping sound and the sound of her daughter's lewd moans. As a married woman of many years, she could of course guess what her daughter was doing in her bedroom. And sure enough. When she tried to peep through the crack of her daughter's unlocked bedroom door, she saw her daughter being pressed on the bed. Her daughter, Sana was making expressions that she herself had seen for the first time as a mother. Not only that, she was also stunned to see that the man who was fucking her daughter was her daughter's fiancé, Aji. Both of them were naked, and she could even see the naked figure of her future son-in-law better than her husband. Lady Satri gulped, especially when her gaze fell on Aji's penis which was much bigger than her husband's, she saw that it was penetrating her daughter's small hole and her daughter seemed to enjoy it very much. It must taste so good. Lady Satri felt envious seeing this, Unconsciously she continued to stand there, watching her daughter having sex with her future son-in-law. At first she wanted to reprimand Sana for throwing away her virginity before marriage. Their family was quite strict in that regard, but that thought soon disappeared seeing her future son-in-law, A.G. squirts inside her daughter. She saw her daughter's belly bulging like a woman who was four months pregnant at that time. That's a lot. Her husband had never come that much. She, is she going to get a grandchild soon? Although devils are known as a race that has a low birth rate due to their fertility problems. That was why after the great war in the past that killed many devils. Although many years had passed, the number of devils in the underworld had not increased much. Compared to the human race, the number of devils in the underworld was in fact much less than that. 
but if in one round a man come that much inside a female devil. A.G., her future son-in-law might be able to increase the percentage of devil births in the underworld. Ha! Huh? What was she thinking? At this moment, she didn't blink. Even after spilling that much seed inside her daughter's belly. She saw his future son-in-law's penis still energetic and looming as if it was not satisfied. Her daughter had already passed out by then, she could see A.G. was not satisfied, but he let Sana rest. Lady Citri was of course already horny after watching for over an hour, her panties were already wet from earlier. She had to hurry to leave so as not to be caught peeping at her daughter who had sex, but her gaze could not look away from her son-in-law's penis until the door to her daughter's room opened and she stood outside in panic. Ah! She almost fell backwards, but a strong arm wrapped around her waist, keeping her from falling. Looking at the person who caught her, she blushed because of course the person who caught her was her naked future son-in-law. And and she could now see his penis from such a close distance. It slightly pierced her stomach which made her stunned. Mother-in-law. Are you okay? I'm fine A.G. Kun. That's good. A.G. let go of his mother-in-law, he certainly knew that the other party had been standing there for a long time. He smiled and said, so what's mother-in-law doing here? Me? What's wrong with a mother visiting her daughter's bedroom? Although there was a slight blush on her cheeks, Lady Citri seemed calm, but her gaze was often fixed on his sword. With his magic, he instantly created a pair of shorts to cover his sword. A.G. could see Sana's mother looked a little reluctant when she saw him already covering his sword. Knowing his mother-in-law saw him naked, he didn't blush, his face was too thick for that. Un. He nodded. There's nothing wrong with that, but mother-in-law. You saw everything, right? Lady Citri stared at her half-naked future son-in-law. She looked dazed because her future son-in-law was too handsome, right? Aside from his sword, his figure was also very good. Hearing his question, she did not panic and looked at her future son-in-law with a seductive smile and a slight frown on her face as if pretending to be angry. Yes. And what did my future son-in-law do to my daughter? You and Sana are not married yet, but you two have already done it. A.G. didn't expect it. Instead of being embarrassed and nervous, his mother-in-law counterattacked. As expected of a mature woman. Unlike this morning, his mother-in-law was now wearing a white nightgown. It didn't show as much skin as the one Sana wore, but it was thin enough that he could see the shadows of her curves from the candlelight that illuminated the hallway of the house. By the way like the outside, the inside of Sana's house also resembled a vampire castle in a movie, and at night unless it was the main room. The hallway of the house will be lit by candlelight which makes the situation even hotter, cough. He rubbed his neck and said. Sorry mother-in-law. Sana and I couldn't help ourselves earlier. But don't worry. I will definitely take responsibility by marrying her. Hmm. That's good. By the way what about the boy who had evil ideas about my daughter? He's the Red Dragon Emperor and he looks very strong. You were able to return safely without any injuries. That's good, but what exactly happened to that boy now? You mean Issei? He won't be able to look for trouble anymore, so mother-in-law doesn't have to worry. Lady Citri understood that the person she meant must have been killed by Eiji, she let out a sigh of relief. As a devil, she certainly didn't care much about the death of people who had nothing to do with her, especially people who had evil intentions towards her daughter. She was happy that her future son-in-law had killed the boy named Issei. I see. Thank you Eiji Kun. You have helped our family a lot today. You're welcome. If it's for my women's family. Isn't it only natural that I help out as a good future son-in-law? I also happen to have had problems with Issei for a long time. So mother-in-law, you don't have much to thank me for today. In fact Lady Citri was not really angry, but saw that Eiji was so good. She was very satisfied with her future son-in-law. She smiled, her blue eyes flashing, reflecting her future son-in-law's figure, his muscles, and his lower part. She sighed mentally. Sana, you caught a good prospective husband. Not only does he have a big dick, a handsome face, and is very strong, but his muscles too. Somehow she couldn't help but compare A.G. to her husband. Now she was still horny. Her husband had fallen asleep first after everything that happened today. She was very grateful to A.G. for healing her husband and the things he gave to her family. Looking at the boy's pants it seemed to still hide a dragon that was still unsatisfied. Lady Citri had an idea. It wasn't that she didn't feel guilty for betraying her husband, but she knew all this time that her husband had also secretly had an affair with another woman outside. Although she had never had an affair with another man, she would do it for the first time this time because she was tempted by her future son-in-law. Mother-in-law, what are you doing? Although A.G. was indeed somewhat interested in his mother-in-law, but he had previously said that he was not that cruel to give his father-in-law a green hat. 
so even though his previous actions seemed to seduce his mother-in-law, he was in fact not serious and did not plan to do anything to his mother-in-law. But even if he didn't intend to do anything, his mother-in-law herself took the initiative. Beside her sleeping daughter. His mother-in-law boldly knelt down and pulled his pants down. His little brother who had not stopped being excited earlier instantly became more excited in this situation. Lady Satrai who sees her daughter's fiancé's cock looming in front of her face, she licks her lips unconsciously and sniffs the smell. It smells really good too. Mother-in-law, I said what are you doing? If your husband sees this, he... Raising her head, she saw her future son-in-law looking at her doubtfully. She giggled, held his penis and said, Don't worry, A.G. Kun. Let your mother-in-law help you, okay? Think of this as my thanks after all you've done. Besides, you're still not satisfied either, right? My daughter is unskilled, she fainted before satisfying her fiancé. As a good mother-in-law, I have to help my future son-in-law. As for my husband? He's already sleeping, so it's fine as long as we don't make too much noise. Seriously? Is there anything like that? A.G. was shocked. What kind of logic was that? But considering he had a halo harem that might also have a part in this situation. There was also his appearance that must have made women like Sana's mother also couldn't help being attracted to her daughter's fiancé. Unbelievable. He certainly had no intention of rejecting his mother-in-law's initiative. As for his father-in-law. Sorry, but giving that man a green hat was inevitable in this situation. Seeing that his mother-in-law had started licking his penis like licking ice cream. He groaned, that woman's tongue was very skillful. That night, beside the sleeping Sana. Not only using her mouth, but he pulled her mother-in-law lying on her daughter's bed. His mother-in-law was surprised at first, but lust overcame her. She let her future son-in-law rip off her nightgown and after that. It was a beautiful night. The next day Aji woke up in Sana's bed. Sana was still sleeping beside him without knowing what her mother did last night. As for the woman in question? His mother-in-law had already left first, he saw the process and the woman walked out of the room with somewhat limping steps after he fucked her so hard last night. His relationship with his mother-in-law was currently unclear and ambiguous. They both agreed to keep this a secret from everyone, especially Sana because who knows what her reaction would be if she found out he fucked her mother. Cough, last night he and her mom boldly did it next to her while she was sleeping. Knowing Sana was actually sound asleep at the time, he and her mom went wild last night and found the dangerous situation even more exciting. They were crazy. Fortunately Sana was not woken up by the noises in her bedroom last night. Her mother's moans, she didn't even wake up to them. The girl was completely exhausted, fast asleep and seemed to be having sweet dreams after losing her virginity. This battlefield called Sana's bedroom had even become very messy. Torn blankets, torn pillows, torn curtains. That last one was because he tried to do it with her mother-in-law by the window. He hit her from behind and she moaned while clutching the curtains. Snapping his fingers, instantly Sana's bedroom became as neat and clean as when he had not done it with her mother-in-law. A.G. Coincidentally, just then Sana seemed to be starting to wake up. She opened her eyes and the first thing she saw was her fiancé. Good morning Sana. Good morning. The girl smiled, but she still lay lazily while hugging him tighter. A.G. played with the girl's short black hair which made the girl close her eyes again. Does your body still hurt? Opening her eyes again, Sana moved her body slightly on the bed and said, No. It doesn't hurt anymore. Did you use magic to heal me? Yes. I thought you wouldn't want to skip school as student council president. So I healed you first so you wouldn't have trouble walking. Thank you the girl lifted her body slightly and kissed his cheek before lying on his chest. A.G. chuckled. This is the first time I've seen Sana Sitrai look lazy. The Sana I know is usually very serious and disciplined. Your reaction when I mentioned school, I thought you would immediately jump out of bed. Why? Don't you like this side of me? Sana looked at her face with curious violet eyes. He looked at his fiancé's beautiful face with a smile while pinching her cheeks. No. It's actually cute. I like it. If Sana at school is the student council president who looks cold and strict in the eyes of the students. In my eyes, when in bed, I like to see her acting lazy and spoiled. Oh, I also like it when she makes expressions like last night. Sana blushed. Not because of what her fiancé said from his mouth, but from his inner voice. She bit the boy's shoulder and said. Pervert. What? Did I say something perverted? Sana, I said you were cute. Why are you suddenly? He is of course pretending. With a mischievous smile, A.G. squeezed the girl's ass for revenge. Kaye. Sana was a little surprised, but she didn't want to lose and started biting A.G.'s shoulder again. I don't know why she was addicted to doing this. 
Ag wondered if Sana was starting to imitate a dog. What he didn't know. Sana was actually marking him like a she-wolf marking her male. After Ag had taken her virginity last night, she had become even more obsessed with that boy and had the desire to continue clinging to him. But she knew it was impossible, especially when considering the boy had other women besides her. She felt helpless, she knew soon Ag would leave to meet another woman who became her fiancé or lover. So at least, before that happened. She wanted to leave her mark on his body and enjoy his touch longer to satisfy her heart. Ag certainly did not remain silent. As Sana eagerly bid him, he started fingering her ass and breasts which made her moan. Even so, they kept at it for over 10 minutes before Sana looked at her bite marks on his shoulder with satisfaction. Ag's lips twitched, something like this could have been removed easily, but he didn't do it to make the girl happy. After all that, his little brother naturally reacted, but before he said anything. Sana got up from the bed and seemed to be preparing to escape to the bathroom. But before that, she looked at him with a smile and said. It's been a few days since I didn't go to school due to replacing my father as clan head. I've had Tsubaki and the others take care of things in the student council during my absence. Today I'm going back to school. Eiji, what about you? Me? Well. Of course I'm going to school too. But I should probably go back home first to meet up with Lala and the others. Eiji suddenly remembered he seemed to have forgotten his promise to his cat. That woman. Kurika. She was probably sulking because he forgot to go home and give her a present last night. By the way. Luckily he didn't forget to tell Lala and the other girls at his house that he would be staying at Sana's last night. So the girls didn't have to worry so much because he didn't come home last night. Sana seemed reluctant to hear he was leaving, but didn't stop him. It's just that instead of running away, she invites him to take a bath together that morning and it looks like she intends to help him take care of his morning wood before letting him go to another woman. Her fiancé was very kind. Host, are you done having fun? Miss System. As you can see. I had a wonderful night and morning that will make many men out there envy me. Even those protagonists. They are no exception. Miss System was silent for a moment. She had only asked a simple question, but as usual her host hated protagonist. He couldn't help but involve protagonist in this conversation. Good. So you didn't forget today's plot, right? Standing in front of his house. Ag, who chose to teleport in front of his gate instead of inside his house laughed. Of course not. How could I forget? Said someone who forgot this and that for who knows how many times. Miss System decided to ignore this point and excitedly said. Good. You are now the protagonist of High School DxD. With this it must be even easier for you to seduce the heroines in that franchise. Now it's time for you to catch the sexy devil priestess who has family problems. His system has been getting more and more excited lately. She was in a good mood whenever there was a plot that required him to go capture the heroines. Ag felt that besides the inner voice system, Miss System was also actually a system that had something to do with the system that villains in those novels usually had. Um. What was it called? He forgot. But putting that aside, he was also excited about remembering today's plot. Who does Miss System call the sexy devil priestess? That is of course Akeno. The girl who likes to say era era in the original work and here is the same. She had been ignored for a long time and now it was time to catch her. Even so, he remembered something that made him smile amusedly. You're right Miss System. But after the death of the protagonist and I have killed that world will. According to the ability of the world will that I have devoured. The so-called world will was in fact not a person. He knew this after Miss System told him where she lived yesterday. It was precisely after he killed the protagonist that it took his hours to return. Miss System said that the world will did not exist in this world. Not in the earth world and not in the underworld, heaven, or any other planet in this universe. Then where can I look for it? At that time he was confused because could this woman speak more clearly? Could it exist in another universe? The world will still exist in this universe, but it exists in another dimension called the void world that no one in this universe knows about. Void world? Okay, that sounds like a cool and scary place, but back then he didn't back down. But you know where it is, right? Miss System, Stop pretending to be dramatic and quickly tell me. Can't I pretend a little? This woman. So where? He asked flatly back then. If you want to go there. You can use one of Anos spells that can open another dimension in this universe. Try to remember carefully. You should be able to do it with your current character fusion. The moment Miss System said that. He immediately checked the Anos's spell library in his brain and found it. Not saying much, he immediately cast the spell on the spot. Deidre Dunt. Instantly. The space in front of him was twisted together with the air and the dimension itself. 
unlike Azizatha's spell which also had the function of opening up another dimension which was basically a personal dimension created by his magic. Ditradunt is different. This spell did not create a new dimension, but opened every dimension in the dimension he was in in the form of a giant portal measuring 100 meters. Fortunately at that time he was in the dimension created by Azizatha's spell, so he didn't have to worry about the reaction of others who saw the giant portal open. Back then, behind the portal he finally knew what the void world was referring to looked like. Inside, everything was white. There was nothing as far as the eye could see except for a giant red ball the size of a planet that turned out to be the world will. According to Miss System, world will refers to the fundamental force or drive that underlies all of existence. World will is the uncontrollable and blind energy that drives all entities in the universe. So that's why it can manipulate the plot and affect people like protagonist. Yes host. Generally every universe has a world will. But some don't. It just so happens that this universe has it. Then if I destroy this thing. Will it be okay? It won't make the universe explode or anything, right? He was cautious of course, even at that moment he was wary of whether that planet-like thing would attack him after seeing him come to the void world. Didn't I say that before? The world will has no combat power. It can only move the plot like when it releases all the loose souls in the new hell and gives people like the protagonist a hint or something. As for your worries after killing the world will? Don't worry. Even if this thing is annihilated, the bad things you're thinking of won't happen. The universe will still move without the world will. After knowing this. What else was he waiting for? He was about to cast the world bombing level magic that Anos had, but he stopped because he suddenly remembered his ring. Miss System. You can also do it on that thing. Seriously? Yes. You know what? Sometimes he felt that the things Miss System gave him were too up. For example the ring of gluttony, this thing can even devour the world will? Crazy. And he did it? Sticking his hand on that big thing. Devour. In fact, there was no need to say that because his ring knew when to eat or not, but he said it only because he wanted to. It took seven minutes for the planet-sized object to be completely devoured by the ring of gluttony. He certainly managed to absorb the abilities of the world will back then, but unfortunately not everything. Miss System said there were also limits to the things that could be absorbed by his through world will. Things like the ability to manipulate plots was something that could not be transferred to him because he was not an entity like the world will that consisted of those energies. Even so, he still got the other abilities that the world will had and that was enough. But after he exited the void world and returned to the main dimension. He was a little surprised because 7 minutes in the void world was equal to 7 hours in the main dimension and that's why he made the girls worry. Remembering the things that happened yesterday. A.G. only thought about it for a while before he rechecked Akeno's plot with the ability he got from the world will. Future Sight. Dash. A slash N, if you want to redate advanced chapters with a faster update frequency than the web novel, you can read it on my Patreon whose link is below. HTTPS slash slash www.patreon.com slash doglicker. Replace A with A and search in your browser. By the way, don't forget to throw power stones and leave a review to motivate me, smiley face, creator's thoughts. Dog liquor gods dog liquor gods. Although I know many of you are not interested in world will, there will be a scene of how AG got the world will skill later. And like I said before, be patient until chapter 103 plus where AG stops being too manipulative. Comment. 37 comment. Vote. 0 left. Chapter 98, Persuading Kuriko with a bad joke. As the name suggests. Future insight is the ability to see the future. The world will has this kind of cheating ability. A.G. had actually used it not long ago to check some plots in the future and sure enough it was still changed from the original work. It was not because of the influence of the world will or the death of the protagonist, but because of his actions during this time that created the butterfly effect. So plot changes are inevitable. The first time A.G. used this ability, he finally understood why the world will could know the things he was going to do to Yami in the previous plot and create a plot that benefited the protagonist. In addition to having the ability to manipulate plots that he didn't have, that world will could see plots that would happen in the future so he could change this and that in advance. Of course there was a limit to how much of the future of the plot he could see. This time AG even only checked a few plots, including Akeno's plot in the next one week. Why not try to see further into the future? It was because of the insane consumption of magic. The cost to use this future inside ability was not free. The world will needed to consume its own energy to see and change the future plot. AG was the same, but he used his magic for that and seeing what happened in the next week had already consumed 10% of his magic reserves. This made him realize that with the power he had accumulated so far, at least there were still things that made him troubled. 
in the future it would be good to increase his magic reserve so that he could use as much magic as possible. It was estimated that reaching this point was still a long way off as Anos character card had only reached 24% fusion even now. Damn it's so slow. Of all the protagonist character cards he had. Anos was the strongest by far and that was why his fusion process was so slow. AG deactivated his future insight and his eyes that were actually glowing golden from earlier when using this ability immediately returned to blue. So that's it. It's still the same as what I checked yesterday. Akeno. That girl is going to have trouble today. What problem? AG could only say the girl's relatives were so racist that they were itching to find trouble after so many years had passed. The girl's father didn't help either, but used this opportunity to make up with his daughter. Because he was now the protagonist in the franchise. The plot is of course related to her, but rather than doing things like the protagonist who likes to make the heroine forgive and forget her grudges. He would rather do the opposite. Walking towards the door of his house, A.G. refrained from grinning wickedly out of excitement. Hey. From the sound of his voice, this man sounded amused. The heroines were wondering what was wrong. After the protagonist Issei died. The plot inexplicably still goes on, and many things in the future change. Although I don't know for sure because my ability to see the plot is also limited, but I know today a certain heroine will be in trouble. Who? The heroines glanced at themselves because they were worried it was their turn. But they breathed a sigh of relief except for a certain black-haired girl. It's Akeno. Today that girl will. A.G. didn't finish his words, he opened the door of his house and said. I'm home. Lala, Asia, Kurika, run. There was no answer. Actually it was already 7.24. Usually at this hour the girls had already gone to school except Kurika. The latter did not go to school as she was not a student of course. With her age, that woman should be an office lady if she wasn't working in the cow's brigade. Glancing at the living room, although no one answered, he saw that the TV showing the morning drama was on. From behind the sofa, he could see the tail of a black-colored cat swinging. A.G. smiled. Who else if not Kurika? The woman was now sitting with her head resting on the arm of the sofa. Her gaze kept on the drama she was watching and ignored it. This woman is sulking. She's really sulking because I didn't come home last night. It seemed that before catching Akeno, he had to persuade Kurika first. With his Saint Galaxy human brain, he thought hard for two seconds before nodding. First, he had to distract her from the drama she was watching. He naturally walked over to Kurika and sat down beside her. Kurika, you know, I have a funny story that will definitely make you laugh harder than this drama. Huh. Laughing. When? From the start, the drama I watched had no comedy in it. It's a dark story about a detective who uncovers the murder case of a woman who becomes a mystery in the movie. Kurika wanted to say this, but she remembered the other party was the man who didn't keep his promise. She wasn't really angry actually because she knew Eiji was really busy dealing with other protagonists and heroine. From the beginning, she didn't have a problem with her man having many women, but she still wanted to pretend to sulk so that he would try to persuade her. Kurika finally turned her head and looked away from the TV. Funny story? How was I supposed to know that your story would be funny? She wanted to see how this man would persuade her. She wasn't going to make this easy. Eiji answered enthusiastically. Of course, this story is really funny. So, listen carefully. Kurika gave permission with a wave of her hand, and Eiji began to tell the story. So, there was a cat and a dog who went for a walk in the forest. They walked for so long that they got hungry. The cat said, I want fish food, while the dog said, I want meat food. Why is this a cat and dog story? Is the cat referring to herself? As for the dog. Kurika looked at Eiji. She was listening seriously, no laughing expression on her face. Eiji pretended to cough, but he continued anyway. So, they searched for food that suited their desires. The cat found fish near the river, while the dog found meat lying under a tree. Eiji paused for a moment, hoping Kurika would laugh but she just looked at him seriously. Then what happened? Asked Kurika expressionlessly. Come on Kurika. Pretty, don't get mad, okay. Stop sulking and laugh. Stop sulking and laugh. Not that easy. You have to persuade me harder, Nyat. Saying this in her heart, Kurika still maintained her expressionless face, golden eyes flashing without the slightest wave as she stared at the boy in front of her. Eiji was a little surprised by Kurika who was still expressionless, but he continued to tell the story. The cat and dog ate voraciously until they felt full. Then the cat said, I really enjoyed this meal. This is the best dish I've ever eaten. Kurika's expression did not change and asked, what did the dog say? Eiji wondered if his harem halo was broken. Damn. With a thick face, 
he answered excitedly, the dog said, but I prefer meat. Kurika still didn't laugh, and A.G. felt frustrated. Isn't that funny? What's going on? Why is persuading this woman so difficult? Usually it's easy. Actually he could have seen the future in this situation with his future insight, but his pride did not let him use that skill to help him persuade a sulking woman. The harem halo was fine because it was passive and he did nothing to turn it off. But the others. Forget it. A.G. didn't know that Kurika was just pretending to be angry right now. Kurika finally released a faint smile. Well, that's funny. I'm laughing, A.G. Actually it wasn't funny at all. Or rather, where did A.G. hear such a bad joke from? But she felt sorry for the kid, so she agreed to what he said. Think of it as funny even if she can't force herself to laugh. You said it was funny, but you didn't laugh. This time Kurika really laughed. Not because of the joke, but because of his inner voice. Seeing Kurika who laughed while covering her mouth with the sleeve of her kimono. This woman really likes to wear kimono anywhere and anytime. A.G. even knew Kurika had 20 sets of kimono in her closet and all of them were black. Other than kimono, that woman's favorite color was also black. But put that aside. The first step was successful. As Kurika was laughing, he immediately hugged the woman and put her on his lap. Kurika was surprised by A.G.'s sudden movement, she wanted to continue pretending to be angry, but just then her lips were pressed by the boy's lips. She was kissed. While being hugged tightly on the sofa by her original intention immediately collapsed and she narrowed her eyes, enjoying the kiss, but before she was about to stick out her tongue to put it into Eiji's mouth. Eiji stopped kissing her and looked at her with mischievous smile. Kurika pouted, she started to get a little annoyed and gripped the boy's shoulder firmly before saying. Continue. She pressed her large breasts against his chest and pressed his body on the sofa to prevent him from escaping in this situation. Oh. Isn't the beautiful woman sitting on my lap sulking? Eiji did not heed the woman's words and rubbed her back gently. Actions like this only made Korka even more aroused, especially when remembering there were only two of them at home. She bit her lip and said. Yes. And someone hasn't apologized for not keeping his promise. Hearing this, Eiji lit up and said with a gentle smile to the woman on his lap. Sorry, am I forgiven? I regret forgetting to go home and not playing with my favorite cat last night. Kurika's cat ears twitched, her gaze gradually looking at Eiji gently. But not only that, there was also lust in her eyes. Want me to forgive you? Eiji nodded, he wondered what this woman wanted. Oh actually he could guess, especially from the woman's shirt which she deliberately loosened and exposed her white shoulders. Her large breasts also jumped out of her clothes, revealing her beautiful hardened pink nipples. Eiji gulped seeing this. Kurika wrapped her arms around his neck and whispered in his ear. Then continue, Nya. Damn it. Kurika, you're playing with fire. It's still early, what if I'm late for school? The heroines. What is Oni-san doing? Don't worry about it, Konako. You don't need to know. In the occult research club room. Rias was trying to get Konako to stop being curious about the adult things her older sister was doing with Eiji. She felt that the little girl was still a child. So her mind should not be polluted. But unfortunately, Konako seemed to understand a bit what her older sister was doing with Eiji somewhere. Although her face was expressionless, there was a blush on her cheeks. Ria slapped her forehead when she saw that. Eiji, can't you not say things like that in your inner voice? Oh right, you don't even know that your inner voice is heard by the heroines. Said in her heart without knowing the truth. Rias felt helpless, she had just come to school this morning by directly teleporting into her club. Hearing that Issei's protagonist was dead, she was happy because with this she no longer had to worry about her older brother pushing her into that boy. But put that aside. There was also another problem as she heard her queen had a plot today and it looked like the girl was going to get into trouble. Eiji didn't finish his words properly, so they didn't know what exactly awaited Akeno today. As the king of her peerage, she was naturally worried knowing one of her peerage members was rumored to be in trouble today. And the girl in question. She looked at the black-haired girl who was also in the club and as usual she was waiting for her to leave for class together. Akeno, we should speed up the plan. What plan? Akeno who also knew the situation because she also heard the inner voice. Now she looked confused. Do we have a plan for something? Of course it's a plan for you to successfully seduce Eiji. Rias said with a look of isn't it obvious. Um. Rias, I'm sure what you said has nothing to do with my current situation. Akeno looked at the crimson haired girl flatly. Konako who was also still there while eating her fish snack looked at Rias in confusion. Glancing at the clock, she quickly picked up her bag and said. Bakuo, Akeno senpai. I'll go to class first. Sure Konako. 
Be careful on the road, Konako-chan. Konako nodded. On. Seeing that the white-haired girl had already gone to her class. Rias looked at her queen again and said. Akeno, what do you think? How what? If it's about the plan to seduce men like you said from yesterday. Forget it, okay. I'll think about those things myself. It wasn't that Akeno hated what Rias was doing to keep pushing her onto Eiji. It was just that she preferred to take care of such things herself. Also, she was now more worried about the plot that had to do with her. Eiji said she was going to get into trouble today, but that boy didn't finish his words which annoyed her. And it seemed like he did it because he was busy doing perverted things with Konako's older sister. Although she was also a little excited thinking about what perverted things Eiji and Kuriko were doing, she was more worried about herself at the moment. Rhea sighed with Akeno's refusal. The reason she was so urgent for Akeno to join Eiji's harem was actually so that she would have an ally there. The girls in Eiji's harem. Almost all of them favored Lala. Although she had also accepted the pink-haired girl as the leader. But it was good if she also had her own allies within the group of heroines. Well I won't force you, but according to you. What trouble could befall you today, Akeno? Rias asked curiously to her queen. Akeno wore a thoughtful expression for a moment before shaking her head. I don't know. Actually, she was also thinking of the people from the clan her mother came from, but she quickly dismissed the thought because it had been a long time since those people had stopped chasing her. There was also an agreement they made with the Gremory family in the past that as long as she did not enter the territory of that clan, the Heimjima clan. The people in that clan who hated her because she had the blood of the Heimjima clan mixed with the blood of fallen angels flowing in her body. Those people were not allowed to do anything to her, they were not allowed to hunt her anymore like seven years ago. Back then, if Rias and her father's bishop hadn't saved her by making a deal with the people of the Heimjima clan, she would have died a long time ago. Remembering her past, Akeno felt her heart grow cold. Her expression looked a little dark which made Rias worried and hurriedly distracted the girl. Well for now why don't we go to class first? Akeno didn't answer, but she nodded and followed Rias to class. She thought the plot Eiji was talking about was probably just a minor plot. The protagonist was also dead, so this so-called plot wouldn't be too much, right? As for the people of the Heimjima clan? She felt that those people couldn't possibly dare to attack her as long as she was still in Kuah City. Time passes. It was already afternoon. If Eiji knew what Akeno was thinking, he would say the girl was naive. But that was good because a girl who wasn't too smart would make it easier for a man to win her heart. Eiji wasn't complaining about this, he was just happy. He was also even more happy to hear what his first fiancé said after school hours were over and they walked out of the classroom hand in hand. Eiji. I invited Yui and Harina to stay at home to watch a movie together. You don't mind, right? Lala said excitedly. That girl seemed to really like watching movies together with many people and he liked it too. Who wouldn't like watching a movie with lots of pretty girls? I don't mind. Did you also invite my, Sana, and Rias? I've invited them too, but apart from Rias who said she'll come tonight. Mai is busy with her modeling work and Sana? Sana is also busy finishing up her piling student council work. Those two girls are hard working. Eiji remembered Mai even missed school for three days because she was out of town. During this time she also sent him frequent messages and he knew the girl was now in Tokyo. Besides doing her work at the same time, she also visited her younger sister who lived in the city. As for Sana? Just this morning he saw her lazing around in bed, but now she was back to her hard working mode and by now the girl must be wrestling with a pile of papers in the student council office while being accompanied by Tsubaki and the others. I see. So where are Harana and Yui? I see they went home first instead of coming with us. The two of them are planning to teleport from their respective homes tonight using the e-linker Lala gave them. So it also has a teleportation feature? Okay, there are many features there. Lala. You're great. The one who answered him was not the pink-haired girl, but the light green-haired girl who hugged his other hand. Actually at this moment he was walking while flanked by two beautiful girls which made many male students look at him enviously. He could even hear one of them shouting Ryaju exploded. Not sure what it meant, but the female students who saw them on the street seemed eager to gossip as usual. Not all of them of course. There were also those who didn't care because they were used to the sight of him surrounded by beautiful girls. Thanks to word of mouth rumors. At least if it's first and second year students. They must all know about him. Which he didn't care about. Hearing what Run said, he nodded at the girl and then looked at the blonde girl who was also walking beside Lala. Unfortunately his arms were full, he could not hold the girl like the other two girls, but he would not make her feel neglected. Asia. Since there will be a lot of people tonight, just use all the ingredients in the fridge to make food. Asia smiled, 
she was glad Aji asked her and nodded. I'll do it, Aji san. By the way, what do you want to eat tonight? Me? Well anything you cook is fine. But I might be late getting home tonight. There's something I have to do. The three girls pouted a little, but after hearing his inner voice this morning. They understood and did not prevent him. Not long after that Aji parted with the girls in front of the school gate. Then he immediately turned around and headed somewhere. By the way what happened this morning? He did do lewd things with Kurika, but they hadn't made the final move because that woman suddenly got a call from her group. The woman was very upset, she was about to refuse, but after hearing the reason why her group suddenly called her. Aji told Kurika to agree because it was related to the secret mission he gave her. Although still reluctant, she agreed. It seemed that what they had done this morning left her quite satisfied. However, after she had completed her mission, she wanted them to do the things she wanted and he agreed. After the woman went to meet Vala, Elife, and the others somewhere. A.G. of course went to school. Although he was late which made Yui reprimand him. School went on as usual, he met Lala, Asia, Run, Harina and the others. What about the protagonist Rito? Heh, that boy seems to be really badly injured after receiving a mental attack before and has been out of school for two days. The girls already knew Harina to be one of his women's and they included the girl in their group which he himself was not allowed to interfere. The group he was referring to was a group chat that seemed like it should only be known by the heroines which made him sigh. But put that aside. He was currently looking at the figure of a sexy black-haired girl who was walking by the roadside. Her ponytail swaying in sync with her steps, she smiled and called out to the girl from behind. Akeno. What a coincidence. Eiji Kun. Akeno turned her head and saw the silver-haired boy who had kept her worried and alert all morning. After all, the other party told her that she would be in trouble today. As for the coincidence he said. She couldn't believe it and felt that Aji was approaching her on purpose. Could it be because? Because of today's plot, I was worried about leaving Akeno alone. There's no way I'm going to stand idly by when I see a beautiful girl like her in danger. Akeno don't worry, I'll protect you, but what excuse should I use to stay with her after this? Dash. A slash N, if you want to read 8 advanced chapters with a faster update frequency than the web novel, you can read it on my Patreon whose link is below. HTTPS slash slash www.patreon.com slash doglicker. Replace A with A and search in your browser. By the way, don't forget to throw power stones and leave a review to motivate me, smiley face, comment. 27 comment. Vote. 0 left. Chapter 99, Seducing Akeno. Hearing his inner voice, Akeno winked, she smiled and was glad to hear Aji took the initiative to approach her because he was worried about her. Actually not long ago at school she and Rias had discussed that if she really had a plot today. Aji would definitely not stay silent and he would definitely help her just like he did with the other heroines. And that turned out to be true. While on the way home from school, Aji suddenly came and greeted her by chance. Akeno giggled to hear that the boy was now thinking of reasons to stay with her to ensure her safety. Feelings are worried to this extent by a man. It's nice. Aji Kun, where are you going? I'm on my way to the supermarket to buy dinner ingredients. Are you too? What he said was true, he was indeed planning to go to the supermarket to buy dinner ingredients before going home, but the reason he said this was actually to help the boy find an excuse. Unknown to Akeno, Eiji had been waiting for her to say something like that and said with a hint of surprise on his face. I'm also on my way to the supermarket. Precisely to replenish the foodstuffs at home that have started to run low. Era era, really? Then why don't we go there together? Sure, let's go together. The two walk side by side after saying that. Under the afternoon sky, the handsome boy and the beautiful girl walked on the side of the road while ignoring the stares of passers-by because their appearance was too attractive. Akeno walked while holding her bag with both hands, she looked at Aji who was not carrying a school bag and asked curiously. Aji Kun, where's your school bag? Aji looked at the black-haired girl walking beside him and said. I told Lala to take it home with her. Lala? Your fiancé? Yes. I remember you should have gotten acquainted with her. How could you not know? I even remember the first time Akeno got acquainted with Lala was at the aquarium where I was dealing with the protagonist Rito at the time. Akeno again giggled, she covered her mouth with one hand as she said. I know I was just joking. Who didn't know Lala was your fiancé at school? There are also other girls. Aji Kun, you're very popular. Was this girl flirting with him? She even walked closer beside him until their shoulders touched. Eiji gazed at the very beautiful and curvaceous figure of Akeno beside him who even while wearing a school uniform, the girl looked obscene as her curves were too sexy for a high school girl. As usual, 
she tied her long black hair into a ponytail down to her feet with two strands sticking out from the top and angled back, with an orange ribbon holding it in place. Her short school skirt showed off her soft half thighs and slender legs clad in black stockings. This kind of look is worthy of a heroine who ranks in the top 5 in high school DxD. Her breasts were also almost as big as Rhea's. No, Akeno actually has slightly bigger breasts than Rhea's and she also has a seductive personality. However, he knew her seductive personality was just a mask. A pitiful girl. If you don't want to, you don't have to force yourself to appear like a seductive Oni-san. After all, as someone who knows the original work, I know Akeno's past. Including things about her mother and her problems with her father that made her so fragile that she wanted to depend on someone. Akeno's sexy body trembled, her step slowed down slightly which made Eiji ask her. What's wrong Akeno? Are you okay? I I am fine, Eiji kun Eiji nodded, he pretended not to know. Akeno also pretended to be fine, but she pursed her lips. Eiji knows about her past. But considering Eiji's identity, she felt it made sense. It was only this time because she knew he knew about her past and knew she liked to wear a mask to hide her true self, she felt dazed and a little embarrassed when talking to him. As Eiji looked at her, she felt she was naked and had no secrets to hide from him. This feeling made her a little uncomfortable, but at the same time she also felt happy that Eiji knew her past. Didn't that mean Eiji understood about herself? In the past, when she did loot things with Eiji, she didn't have this feeling, but now. Staring at the side of Eiji's handsome face, remembering his power and also how reliable he was. Akeno felt like she had found a tree to protect her from the wind and rain. But she quickly shook off that feeling by shaking her head and smiling bitterly when remembering the blood of fallen angels flowing in her. Arriving at the supermarket. Eiji and Akeno started shopping while pushing their respective shopping trolleys. They still walked together, but not like before. This time Akeno was silent a lot and secretly glanced at him often. When asked what was wrong, the girl would answer that it was fine while turning his attention to what groceries he wanted to buy. Eiji smiled, not because the girl was helping him choose fresh vegetables and fruits, but because she had managed to make her see him as the person she had been looking for for a long time. Although initially Akeno did seem interested in him, even to the point of being fine doing loot things with him back then. But he knew she was doing it because she was carried away and didn't know how she herself felt about him. With what he did just now, he made her believe something in her heart. It was just that there was still a problem with the girl. What problem? Well the girl was disgusted with herself, she was disgusted with the blood of the fallen angels who were the same as those who had killed her mother and the same blood as her father. Actually besides the fallen angels involved in her mother's murder, there were also other people sent by her uncle from the Haim Jima clan. Also when that happened, Akeno was shown what the truth was when she was told about how her father and the fallen angels had a lot of grudges against them from many people in the enemy forces. Actually this conflict happened because her mother who was from the Haim Jima clan married one of the fallen angel leaders and gave birth to her. Both sides had issues that led to her mother's death. From that day on, Akeno did not have a good view of the fallen angels. She later regretted her murdered mother, hated her father for not being able to protect her mother and closed her heart to him. Because when the incident happened, her father did not come at all and did not know where he went when his wife and daughter were attacked. After witnessing her mother being killed by a group of people who were basically her father's enemies. In the original work, she refused to live with her father, and lived with her mother's relatives. It was fine at first because her cousin was quite nice to her, but many of her mother's other relatives wanted to kick her out because she had the blood of fallen angels flowing in her. Akeno was eventually kicked out of there and had to survive alone, she traveled to various places in Japan using her skills of purifying evil spirits that she learned from her mother. At one point when Akeno was 10 years old, her mother's relatives, her uncle to be exact, and people from the racist Haim Jima clan suddenly ambushed her to kill her. The Haim Jima clan is one of the clans that are part of the five principal clans. They are a powerful mystic clan associated with Shinto deities, have served Shinto deities for generations, and are famous for their ability to purify evil spirits. Besides evil spirits, the things that are enemies of the people of this clan are devils and fallen angels. Fortunately, Akeno met Rias and her father's bishop who saved her. At that time Rias offered her to become part of her peerage by becoming a reincarnated devil. Akeno accepted Rias' offer because she knew only Rias could save her at that time. With the help of her family, Rias managed to make a deal with the people of the Haim Jima clan for them to stop hunting Akeno. Regardless of the details of the deal, Akeno believed that it was the fallen angel's blood inside her that had made her suffer so far. If her mother hadn't given birth to her with half the blood of her mother who was from the Haim Jima clan, and her father who was a fallen angel, her mother would definitely not have been killed by a group of fallen angels. In fact, it was not her fault, 
but Akeno believed that it was because of her that her mother died, and she also blamed her father for it. If it wasn't for her being half-fallen angel, her mother's relatives and her uncle from the Heimjima clan wouldn't have hunted her down and tried to kill her either. Right now it wasn't that Akeno didn't like him, she just felt complicated about herself. Although Akeno didn't say it, Eiji could guess what the girl was thinking from her expression. After they finished shopping, and had just exited the supermarket, the sun had set by then, Eiji offered to help Akeno carry her groceries and drive her home. Eh? But Eiji kun don't you have to go home soon too? No, the sky is already dark, how could I let a beautiful girl go home alone? Okay, if you want, I don't mind being driven home by you, Eiji kun Although she could teleport to her own home, Akeno did not refuse her king's fiancé who wanted to take her home. When remembering Eiji was now Ria's fiancé, she actually felt a little hot at the thought of taking him home. Rias wouldn't be angry when she found out about this, right? It shouldn't be, after all not long ago that girl was trying to push her into becoming one of Eiji's women. As for her? She was honestly worried that Eiji was disgusted after finding out she was a devil and fallen angel hybrid, but she saw that this boy didn't seem to look at her with disgust, even after he found out about her past. Besides, they had done some perverted things before and she did see that Eiji did not feel disgusted by her. Looks like her worries all this time were foolish, right? At this moment, when she felt that tonight was going to be a hot and beautiful night, she froze at the sound of Eiji's inner voice reminding her of the plot she had forgotten. And she was surprised to know the details of the plot. Plot baby. In the plot that I know. When Akeno returned to her home tonight, there was her uncle ready to ambush her with the people he brought from the Heimjima clan. That old man has a brain problem and dared to secretly come to Kuah City just to kill his niece while ignoring the deal he made with the Gremory family. After all this time he still hasn't given up on killing Akeno just because of her bloodline. At that moment, when Akeno was in danger and about to die. That's when Akeno's father Barakil suddenly appeared out of nowhere to save his daughter who was in danger. Although Akeno hated her father, but after he saved her, she was moved and started hugging her father until she cried like a baby. The girl completely ignored how her father could know she was in danger back then and came just in time when she was completely overwhelmed against the people her uncle had brought. In fact, from the very beginning, Barakil knew that Akeno's uncle had secretly entered Kua City to kill his daughter. But instead of preventing it, he planned to use this opportunity to mend the long-strained father-daughter relationship. This kind of cunning. No wonder she was appointed as the new Grigori leader after Azazel died. And Akeno, you stupid girl, how could you be fooled so easily by your father whom you hate so much? You may not know, but when your father came late to save your mother and you in the past. In the original work, it is mentioned that Barakil was on a mission abroad at the time. But the mission was not a mission. It was more like a vacation where he was having fun with pretty girls at a club. He was having an orgy when you and your mom were attacked that day. Her uncle and the people who hate her from the Heimjima clan are planning to ambush her at her home when she gets home tonight. So the plot AG mentioned this morning is this plot. But it's not over yet because while she's overwhelmed by the people of the Heimjima clan who want to kill her. Her father whom she hated suddenly appeared to save her, and she would be moved by her actions completely unsuspecting of how her father could know she was under attack and save her at that critical moment. Eiji called her a stupid girl because that's what made her want to argue because that was her in the original work, okay. Although she knew if she couldn't hear Eiji's inner voice, she would probably be just as stupid as he was in the original work. Akeno widened her eyes, her heart trembled, her mind buzzed and her face turned pale knowing what things she would experience when she went home tonight. But what shocked and disgusted her the most was. Her father. So the reason why her father didn't come to rescue her and her mother back then was because he was having fun abroad with another woman? Recalling the memories of her mother dying in front of her eyes. Akeno's heart hurt so much that her eyes glazed over, her slender fists clenched, her fingers stabbing herself until her hand dripped blood. At this moment, her hatred for her father rose to a whole new level. Eiji who was holding Akeno's grocery bag immediately asked with concern evident on his face. Akeno, your face suddenly became pale. Are you sick? Hey your hands are bleeding too. Eiji. Akeno suddenly hugged him, pressing her large breasts against his chest which made him happy. The girl even called his name without Kun as if wanting to get closer to him and she let her vulnerable self fall into his arms. Ignoring the stares of the people who saw them hugging on the street. Eiji hugged Akeno and teleported to a quiet place nearby without being seen by anyone so that they could talk more comfortably. What's wrong Akeno? Do you have a problem? If there is, just tell me and I'll help you. Eiji gently said to Akeno which made the girl raise her ship, showing her beautiful face which currently looked like a heartbroken girl. Sigh. This is why this girl is pathetic. Does she realize her uncle is waiting for her in her house to kill her? No way. 
Ag, really? You're willing to help a woman like me? Huh? Ag pretended to be confused. Akeno, why are you suddenly underestimating yourself? But yes, I'm willing to help you. Even if I'm a devil and fallen angel hybrid? You don't feel disgusted or hate me. If I felt disgusted and hated you, I wouldn't bother being here. Ag smiled wryly. No, how could I feel disgusted and hate a girl as beautiful as Akeno? So because I'm pretty, you don't feel that way. Akeno smiled slightly, though her face was still saddened by her uncle and father's actions. Ag did not deny what Akeno said and nodded. Yes, but besides that. I also know you more than you know. You might not believe it. I believe. Akeno hugged Ag's body tighter, she believed what the boy said after what she heard from his inner voice. Even though she knew Ag wasn't really disgusted with her, she still wanted to make sure by asking him. Hearing the boy's answer, she was happy, she was relieved to hear Ag's answer who was even willing to help her. Akeno wanted to tell Ag the truth that she could hear his inner voice, but she couldn't because there was always a force preventing her from telling Ag about his inner voice. So to explain why she was like this to Ag, she had to lie a little and explain her past to the boy to make him believe her. Ag, who heard everything Akeno said for 10 minutes certainly knew what the girl was doing. Basically she told him how her mother was killed in front of her eyes as a child and how she hated her father so much. Then she also said things about her mother's relative, her uncle who currently seemed to be planning to hurt her after she got home. The girl said she had some magic that allowed her to know who the people were that secretly entered the area around her house. The last one was obviously a license she knew the girl knew from his inner voice, but with the restrictions Miss System had set up, lying was indeed one way in this situation that she could convince her. It was the same as the other heroines and Ag nodded. Using his magic, he teleported his groceries to his house which was actually only used as an excuse to follow Akeno and he kept Akeno's groceries in his inventory. The girl wasn't surprised by what was done, but she was curious what he would do next. She saw the boy smiling like a devil who wanted to seduce her into doing evil things. Seeing this, Akeno was dazed before being surprised to hear that what Ag said next was. I understand your situation. So do you want me to help you deal with your uncle and the people he brought from the Heimjima clan? That's easy. But Akeno. Ag pinched the girl's chin with one hand, making the girl's violet eyes look into his. What exactly do you want me to do with them? Drive them away or kill them? If you want, I can help you get revenge on the people who used to hurt you and killed your mother. T that. Before he said the latter, he saw that the girl seemed to just want him to help her expel her uncle and the people of the Heimjima clan that he brought along. But after he said revenge, especially about her mother, he saw the girl's gaze change. Seeing this, Ag knew things were going the way he wanted. Should I say as expected of you, host? You don't have to say it. By the way I wonder when you're going to tell Akeno that you can revive her mother? If you do, that girl will definitely beg and give you her body and heart right away. Dash. A slash N, if you want to redate advanced chapters with a faster update frequency than the web novel, you can read it on my Patreon whose link is below. HTTPS slash slash www.patreon.com slash doglicker. Replace A with A and search in your browser. By the way, don't forget to throw power stones and leave a review to motivate me, smiley face, comment. 25 comment. Vote. 0 left. Chapter 100, The Confidence Uau Heim Jima. What Miss System said made him sigh mentally. This woman didn't understand the drama he was directing. If he was his system, he should know that what he was saying right now was just to see what Akeno would choose. What the girl chose actually didn't matter to him because it was easy for him to deal with people from the Heimjima clan or whatever. So what if those people were from the five principal clans? If he wanted to, right now he could directly kill the people currently hiding around Akeno's house. With his current power, his senses could detect people within a radius of 100 kilometers if he focused his senses, and that could still be enhanced further with his magic. A few tens of meters from here, he knew where Akeno's house was located from the original work and he could see it. Those people, especially their group leader who was most likely Akeno's uncle. In terms of power, they were as strong as cannon fodder characters, Akeno should have no trouble fighting those people, but they were smart enough to set up a barrier around the shrine where Akeno's house was located that had the function of suppressing devils below the middle class. Even so, Ag was sure it was still not enough to defeat a heroine like Akeno and the reason why in the future he saw the girl overwhelmed against those people was simply because of the plot. As for reviving Akeno's mother that his system said? Well he hadn't forgotten about it of course. So Akeno, what's your answer? Ag asked the girl again. Akeno smiled wryly. I think it's too much to kill them. You know, right? Your uncle is planning to kill you with that many people. That. 
you know, right? Those people have also hurt your mother in the past, especially your uncle who has some involvement in it. Akeno bit her lip, in fact earlier she was almost tempted to take revenge on her uncle and the people of the Heimjima clan. There was also her father whom she now hated even more because he failed to protect her mother in the past. But she thought of the big picture. If she and Aji killed the people of the Heimjima clan, especially her uncle who had status in the clan. Wouldn't there be a conflict between the Heimjima clan and the family her king, Rias? Although she was sure that the girl would be fine supporting her since the ones taking the initiative to look for trouble right now were her uncle and the people of the Heimjima clan. Thinking that her personal feelings were creating a bigger problem, Akeno abandoned her intention to kill those people. She shook her head and looked at Aji nervously. No, Aji. I think just driving them away is enough. You. Are you disappointed with my choice? Aji smiled, he shook his head, released her chin and said. No, I'm just giving you a choice. Whatever your choice is, it won't lower my judgment on you, Akeno. Although I'm a little reluctant to let the people who have hurt you go so easily. Aji. Why do you care about me so much? Akeno was moved, her eyes slightly moist, and her seductive Onisan mask had long been replaced by her real face that looked fragile and wanted to find someone to depend on. What do you think? Aji looked at her watery gaze and asked. How would I know? Akeno felt her heart beating so fast that she dared not look at the boy in front of her. At this moment she saw the boy grabbing her hand that was previously pierced to the point of bleeding by her own nails. A soft green light shone on her hand and instantly the wound was gone. After all you are one of Rhea's peerage and Rhea's best friend. If something bad happens to you, I'm sure Rhea's, my fiancé will be sad. Seeing you in trouble, of course I will try to help you. As a bastard, how could Eiji dislike a girl as beautiful as Akeno who had entered his radar? But of course he had no intention of admitting this first from the other party because there was a saying that whoever took the initiative to admit first, he would lose. Just kidding, he did it only because he didn't want to rush things. Besides this was not the time to confess to a girl because he still had a few surprises to really conquer the girl's heart completely. Just because of that. Akeno felt disappointed, she thought Eiji would confess to her. It seemed like the reason Eiji had helped her so far was because she was one of the heroine in this world that required the boy to help her like he did other heroine. Aji did not answer, he changed the topic. Then let's go now. Before Akeno could say anything, a magic circle glowed under her and Aji's feet and instantly they teleported away. At a shrine where there is a traditional Japanese style house next to it. The house is actually Akeno's house and the girl actually lives next to the shrine. If she doesn't go to school and has no other activities, she is often the shrine maiden there. But putting that aside, in the darkness of the shrine that surrounded Akeno's house. There were a dozen people in exorcist outfits. Unlike Irina and Zenobia's tight and sexy exorcist outfits. That people were wearing white hakama with red accents and various exorcist weapons. They were actually people from the Heimjima clan who were planning to kill Akeno tonight. As people of the Heimjima clan, they were certainly not ordinary humans. They possessed supernatural powers, specifically as part of the five principal clans that mastered the power of the sacred beasts, the Heimjima clan possessed one known as the Vermilion Bird. Those who are part of the Heimjima clan have been blessed by the Shinto gods, allowing each member to use the fire phase, one of the five elements. The leader of the group, an old man with a cold expression looked at one of his subordinates. Are you sure Akeno lives in the shrine? Yes, according to the information we got, Akeno Heimjima does live in the shrine. Suosama. One of his subordinates who gathered information in Kuah City told him that. Suao Heimjima did not say anything else but his cold gaze continued to be fixed on the shrine entrance. Besides having the status of being the former head of the Heimjima clan, Suao was also actually Akeno's uncle who used to hunt Akeno down seven years ago because she became a fallen angel child. Unfortunately in the past, he was unable to kill Akeno to clear the stain on the Heimjima bloodline because of the deal he made with the devil of the Gremory clan. But at this moment, Suao found Akeno very disturbing and he decided to kill the girl even though he would be breaking the deal he made with the devil heir of the Gremory clan. A few hours ago he and his men had managed to secretly infiltrate Kua City without being noticed by the devil who commanded this territory. At least that's what he thought. It's just that after waiting for almost two hours. He still saw no sign of Akeno. Suao frowned. Shouldn't a girl be home by this time? Then remembering something, he snorted. What do I expect from a fallen angel child? Right now that girl must still be playing outside with dirty devils who are just as dirty as she is. Suao had a disgusted expression on his face, but after saying that he suddenly froze, as did all the subordinates hiding in the darkness. Gee who's being so racist here? Is that your uncle, Akeno? Yes. It's him. A familiar girl's voice rang in Suao's ears and when he turned his head, 
he saw a girl similar to Shuri standing side by side with a silver-haired boy. The two of them suddenly appeared in the center of the shrine and they seemed to already know the whereabouts of him and his men. Akeno. Is that you? You finally came. This time, I'm not letting you escape. You must die. Everyone, kill her and the boy next to her. Suao said that, but there was no movement at all. All of his men that he brought from the Heimjima clan could not move, and he himself could not move. It felt like there was a force preventing them from doing anything, even the blessing from the Shinto god that allowed them to manipulate the sacred beast flames could not be used at the moment. Only Suao could speak. What's going on? Eiji who had just teleported with Akeno waved his hand. With his magic, he made Uncle Akeno and all his men gather in front of the two of them and at the same time sealed their power. He used Anos YGNEAs and Zola spells to do that. Akeno looked at her uncle and the people he brought from the Heimjima clan complicatedly. Uncle. You broke our agreement. Does my cousin know about this? Suao who could still move looked at Akeno coldly. He was not stupid, he knew at this point that it looked like his plan had failed and it must be because of the silver-haired boy Akeno had brought. If it was just Akeno, he was sure he could deal with the girl easily, but the force holding him and his men at this moment. No, how could that woman let me do this if she knew about it? So Akeno, what are you going to do? You want to kill your uncle? As expected of a fallen angel child, you are just as evil as those creatures. Suao mocked. The woman he was referring to was Suzaku Heimjima. Besides being Akeno's cousin, she was the current Heimjima clan head and he knew she actually had a pretty good relationship with Akeno. So of course, his plan to kill Akeno this time was kept secret from her. Akeno frowned, she clenched her fists, but at this moment Eiji sneered. Old man, aren't you embarrassed to say that after planning to kill Akeno? Who are you? You're the one who did this, right? Let me and the others go right now. Suao roared. Eiji felt that these people were starting to resemble the people in those novels. In this situation, the protagonist would introduce himself to an insignificant character and start mocking each other before the face-slapping scene. Eiji was too lazy to talk to this person and preferred to get to the point. He looked at Akeno, and coincidentally the girl was also looking at him. You sure you don't want to kill him? Akeno's lips twitched. Eiji. Don't kill them, okay. After this. I plan to report my uncle's actions to Rias. With this, I'm sure my uncle and the people he brought will be punished by their clan for breaking the agreement we made in the past. Hearing this Suao was a little surprised, he did not expect Akeno to just let it go. Even so, instead of thanking her, he still looked at Akeno and Eiji with an unfriendly gaze. Akeno. You. Shut up. The moment Eiji said that, the old man immediately shut up because his body really could no longer speak. To do this, Eiji was actually still using the same spell, he didn't plan on arguing for so long with an insignificant character like Uncle Akeno who he himself didn't remember the name of. There were also the people the old man had brought, they were so weak that he could kill them with a wave of the hand. But alas, Akeno didn't want him to kill those people and preferred to let them be punished by their clan. Eiji knew that if these people returned to their clan, the one who would punish them would be Akeno's cousin whose name he remembered was Shizaku Heimjima. That woman was beautiful, she had black hair and red eyes that were no less beautiful than Akeno even though she was not a heroine. Host, control your thoughts, but if you want, why don't you visit cousin Akeno later? What Miss System said was a pretty good idea. But put that aside. Eiji stared at Uncle Akeno with a coldness that made the gaze of the other party staring at him instantly freeze in fear as if seeing something in his eyes. Did you hear that? If it weren't for Akeno's compassion, you and these weak people would have been no longer in this world. Do you believe that? Want me to prove it? Arrogant. Suao wanted to say the youngster in front of him was arrogant, but his body and mouth could not be moved, and even if he could, he knew what the silver-haired boy said was true. When staring into those blue eyes that had stars in them, although it was beautiful, he felt like he had the illusion that he was thrown into space and saw the darkness devouring him which made him horror. It felt very cold. Terrifying. As if he would die at any time as long as the boy wanted him to. Even the gods he had served all this time, he had never felt a difference of this magnitude that made people with high self-esteem like him inevitably submit. Not only him, all of his men also seemed to feel a sense of terror when looking into that boy's eyes. They all wanted to shake their heads as if to say no, you don't need to prove it. But they could not move an inch which made them even more frightened, and Suao felt a sense of humiliation, especially when he saw the boy looking at him with amusement. Why aren't you guys talking? Hey I asked you guys. Suao and all his men gritted their teeth. How can we talk? You made us unable to do so. Akeno stared at what Eiji was doing, and she couldn't help but think that this boy was more sadistic than her. 
if Ag had to describe the feelings Suao and his men were experiencing. They were like group chat members who were mute by the admin and the admin suddenly called them to answer even though they were on mute. This kind of feeling of humiliation, Suao, the former head of the Haim Jima clan was experiencing it for the first time. He was furious, but at the same time also afraid of Ag because he knew how terrifying the boy's power was just from his gaze. Since no one answered, I'll assume you believe what I said. Suao and his men breathed a sigh of relief, but Eiji suddenly raised his hand that glowed with red light at them. That sent their hearts into panic and fear. Eiji kept his word to Akeno and completely banished her uncle and the people he brought with him by teleporting them straight to the Haimjima clan. Of course, he didn't just make them leave without suffering. He knocked them unconscious and secretly changed something inside them using one of Ana's spells. For Akeno's uncle who hated that Akeno had the blood of a fallen angel in her. Now the old man would feel what it was like to be transformed into the creature he hated the most. The people he brings along is the same, Akeno's beautiful cousin will surely be shocked to see them. Eiji, are you sure you didn't do anything to them? I won't blame you, I'm just curious. Akeno asked this because she saw Eiji had a strange smile as he drove away his uncle and the people he brought. Eiji shrugged. I did do something to them, but don't worry. It won't get them killed. I used one of my spells called Gavia to change a person's source into another type of source. I basically turned the race of Uncle Akeno and the people he brought into fallen angels. Those people hated Akeno so much just because she was a fallen angel. Now I'm letting them feel what it's like to be the creature they hate. I hope Akeno doesn't mind this. Seeing her own uncle insult her, if it wasn't for Akeno not wanting me to kill that old man, I would've. Akeno was dumbfounded. The heroines in server 1 who heard this were just as surprised as Akeno. Knowing Eiji did all this for her, Akeno was so moved that she wanted to kiss the boy right now, but the voice of someone she hated interrupted her. Akeno. Out of the darkness, a rough-looking middle-aged man with black hair, a matching beard, and a muscular body appeared. Dash. A slash N, if you want to redate advanced chapters with a faster update frequency than the web novel, you can read it on my Patreon whose link is below. HTTPS slash slash www.patreon.com slash doglicker. Replace A with A and search in your browser. By the way, don't forget to throw power stones and leave a review to motivate me, smiley face.